the Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we can talk about. Yes, sir. Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured, fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. <laughs> Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Good afternoon, beautiful people. It is Wednesday, July 7th, 2021, years after zero, and today's show is going to be good. Yeah! yeah! Woo! I hope Shine was fantastic. He is on Sirius XM Channel 82, Mad Dog Sports Radio. Hi. hear us. I'm not sure if he was on today or not, but I know he's fantastic. I know Chris Mad Dog Russo um, will take over at Sirius XM Channel 82 Mad Dog Sports Radio um, in about two hours and 59 minutes on this beautiful Wednesday, July 7th. We're live on YouTube.com forward slash The Pat McAfee Show, and we have to talk about it. Listen, mm-hmm. all right? We had a little segment on this show this past football season. By the way, the shirt, yeah, Sun's Yeah, up. it's pretty sweet. Sun's Here we go. one out, and... Uh, <laughs> Big fight this weekend, huh? Big Come on, we go, baby. Come on, sugar. Hey, let's go. Woo! This this jersey is the first basketball jersey I've ever, I think, like worn or put on in most recent memory. Mm-hmm. How do the nipples do this? this oh, is, man. Oh, no, they're, you're, they're going to be bleeding by yeah. the end of the show. Yeah, this ain't making it the whole show. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I love Sugar Sean. Okay, I absolutely love Sugar Sean, but my nipples right now are just getting pounded. Yeah, oh, yeah. by oh, yeah. band aids on them. Huh? You got to put band aids on them. Yeah, so oh, put some of that tape on yeah. them. Uh huh. Go get them, man. I got larger nipples, too, I think, for a male. <laughs> oh, man. So this particular <laughs> thing is kind of killing me right now. Yeah. yeah. But it's beautiful, and I like supporting Sugar Sean, and also 1 0 in the finals of the NBA. Yeah, no, no. Hey, let's go, hey, Sean! Let's go, Sean! Let's go, Sean! Let's go, Sean! Let's go, Chris baby. Paul! Yeah! Hey, congrats to you, Chris! You know, and Mr. Ayton here has, what, 20 and 20, I think, yeah. all of a sudden, his first ever finals appearance. Devin Booker's showing up in low riders. I mean, how you yeah. doing? Guys dating a Jenner, I think, or a Kardashian. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. The Phoenix Suns, they, they're fucking doing it out there in the desert. This team stinks, I think. Who, the Bucks? That's weird. I mean, I think they stink. <laughs> they might. Oh, yeah. He honest was doubtful, questionable. Then he was dunking on people last <laughs> night. What? So they are, they're playing the game. I kind of like that a little bit. I like Drew Holiday, by the way. I got a chance to introduce him as a New Orleans Pelican. Line. But it feels like just Destiny's riding along with this side out here in the desert. And congrats to them. And that's going to carry right into Sugar Sean this weekend whenever he knocks somebody out this weekend. Hell yeah. He's going to continue his undefeated fight streak in the undercard of the Connor and Dustin Poirier fight. Can't wait for it. Also, grab some Sugar Sean merch. I believe in the UFC merch and stuff like that is a big deal to the fighters. Huge. I would assume so. $175 million deal just got signed between the UFC and Crypto.com. What? What? Yeah, I guess that just happened. What? And allegedly, reports, early reports were saying that fighters are going to see $0 of that money. No. no. Yeah. Who's getting it? That, you, the UFC. The company. The company. Okay. Not the fighters. I don't know, because if they force the fighters to wear Crypto.com, wouldn't you then be expected to pay them because they'd be doing the marketing at that time for that? Or is Crypto.com, because they said they're making uniforms for people. Right. Is that ref out there that has that, uh, is that wearing a Mm Crypto.com outfit uniform? Are the judges wearing Crypto.com uniforms? Is Dana White walking around with a sport coat in a Crypto.com uniform out there? I'm not 100% sure 100% sure what it meant, but I do know it's $175 million. Sugar Sean ain't seeing any of it. by Mercs. Yeah, yeah. I Mercs. Seriously. Might be on the cage. Yeah. Too, yeah. just well, circling I, I know around or something. That's what that was a, a big deal is guys used to have all the logos, you know, the sponsors on their trunks, and then the UFC signed that big deal with Reebok, and they're like, Yeah, you can't wear that shit anymore. You're wearing a, a re, the Reebok trunks, and I don't think they made very much money from that either. Well, see, the NFL, although there is a players association and a minimum salary and everything like that, contracts aren't guaranteed. People get cut and fucked all the time, but there's at least some money to be made uh, if you do have a success. I guess there is big money to be made in the fight game, but it takes a while and you got to get really, you got to do a lot to get there. Mm-hmm. I don't know the business sides of it. All I do know is this thing was $200. It's worth every single penny. Yeah, hell yeah. Every awesome. single penny. <laughs> it's going to help a man who has another right hand from Sugar Land, hopefully on Saturday. Shout out to Sugar Sean. But that's not the story of the day. Uh-huh. No, no. No, it's not. Okay. 
Sugar Sean might be the story every single day going forward. I get after he knocks somebody out again and does a dance probably in the cage. I mean, we'll talk about that. In the NBA finals, we'll we'll talk about it because we got to. I guess it is sports that are happening. And sure. it was I got a chance to catch the final uh, fourth quarter of that game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because what I was watching all the way up until then last night, which I thought we all thought was starting at five, we were lied to. Let's remember that. Just like the draft. That's yes. right. That's remember, right. just like the draft, when we went live, draft starts at uh Eight or seven. Seven o'clock. Yeah. Seven o'clock or whatever. We're like, okay, we're going live 6.30. We're going to do 30 minutes before this draft starts. We're going to be in a room, and then we're going to go. That draft did not start until 7.45. That's right. Mm-hmm. So we're talking an hour and 15 minutes and nothing with no rights or anything. And we potentially at that time had like 50, 60,000 people watching. And we're like, God damn it, Roger. Get your fucking ass out there <laughs> yeah. and let's start announcing some draft picks. Now. That's what it felt like yesterday in Montana. Yeah, hundred percent. They felt like that. Yeah, there was a there was a pre match conversation. Then whenever it started, for some reason, there was an entire another whole thing. That thing didn't start until 45, 50 minutes later. But once it got started, I absolutely fucking loved it. Oh, now, yeah. Tom Brady and Phil Mickelson, incredibly entertaining individuals. Okay, Tom, I assume that ninety percent of football fans have watched Tom over the last year and said, damn it, I have hated this guy for so long. He is the picture of what perfection is supposed to look. He's handsome. He's got a supermodel wife. He's won six Super Bowls now at this point. He came from the evil empire, was the face of the evil empire. He cheats. This guy cheats every single turn. And this guy Probably knocked my favorite team, my favorite player, out of the tournament numerous, numerous times. Every year when this handsome, cheating son of a bitch would show up, my dreams would get shattered, my week would get ruined. Then Tom does like the Howard Stern interview, and then Tom starts doing a little bit more, starts opening up on his social media, starts doing like some uh, commentary. Mm -hmm. He has a fucking TikTok at this point. He's doing these matches. Tom's impossible to hate. Yeah, he really is. got the guy. The NFL's got the guy. They got the guy. Hey, guys, our guy who is going to be considered the greatest of all time whenever, who knows how many Super Bowl rings he'll, he'll have when it's all said and done. He's hilarious. Mm-hmm. Has a sense. Not, okay, not. Maybe. He's funnier than some of these motherfuckers that are getting paid to be funny. I'll say that. Absolutely. I will say, me, it, me it, included, it's I It's hard to be relatable or funny in that position. He's an alien. Yeah, uh-huh. exactly. He's an absolute, He's funny. He seems to be, you know, very, very, very competitive. And you'll see that at every turn, even at the end, whenever they were trying to figure out what clubs to use, mm-hmm. whenever Aaron was the first to draw and Aaron saw the forward through the envelope. I don't know if anybody else saw this. Tom saw Aaron see through the envelope. Tom sees through the envelope, all right? Because this is immediately what I would do. So I was literally watching like, okay, is this what Tom's doing? Probably any competitive human. He cuts in front of, I don't know if you saw, Shambo yeah. looks at the envelope, grabs it, and then walks away. So nice. And I I go, I go, uh, that's exactly what I would have done. And my wife, Colts fan, said, I see, of course Tom has to fucking cheat. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, he's not cheating. Okay. Tom has seen the set of things in front of him and have beat it. However, that's what Tom does. By the way, Aaron would have done the same damn thing if Aaron would have seen Tom do that. Aaron would have done the same thing. Any competitive human would have done that. But when you talk about a guy who seems to be incredibly attractive, I mean, it was talked about a lot there by everybody thinks he's attractive. He fixed his butt chin. That doesn't happen to anybody. Well, he naturally, he, he fucking he, ate avocado grew, ice cream. That's what I mean. He, he grew, ate av- yeah, he grew yeah, out of it at he, 25 he, years he, old. He ate avocado ice cream and that chocolate and all that other mm-hmm. stuff. And he, it, it changed, but he's, he's handsome. Yeah. He seems incredibly charming. I don't know, he's never had to turn on, but it seems like it all, all turns. He's, he's fist like, bumping people. He's funny. This guy, he's... he's, he's, <laughs> he's yeah. Charming. 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 <laughs> he's funny. It's It has to be so annoying. It's just like Aaron Rodgers whenever he would come on this show. Now, we have to pivot off of Tom and Phil, although Phil telling us what he's going to do to oh, the exact yards mm-hmm. and the whole thing. And I mean, he definitely extends that match probably another two to three hours every time. But it's nice to hear him kind of break down what he's going to do. Right. Hearing DeChambeau and how he operates oh was God. also fascinating, I think, for a bit. <laughs> Utterly confusing, but Tom being awesome and likable was my biggest takeaway. Like, okay, this dude is legit. Like, it seems like this guy somehow has remained a human, which all of his teammates have said, by the way. All his teammates love being his teammate. Mm -hmm. Aaron fucking Rodgers, though. He might have had the greatest five-hour live television golf 
performance I've ever seen in my entire life. Mm -hmm. It was awesome. Vegas knew. He was going in. Packers fans hated him. Some Packers fans hated him. NFL fans, if they didn't listen to the show this fall and it didn't have his back throughout this entire thing, think he's a diva, pompous asshole mm -hmm. is how, I, how people were painting Aaron Rodgers. Yesterday, long hair flowing Ooh. with the kiss of the Hawaiian sun. I don't know if you see that, so oh, it yeah. lightens the hair oh, yeah. a little bit. Every time I come back oh, from Sandy. Hawaii, I go back to uh, whenever I was a kid with like full blonde hair because yep. the sun, you know, natural sun in there. Had the great hair. Okay, has been saying I haven't been golfing. Ah, five and a half hours. I can read a book. I can meditate. LA's tough or whatever. He's kind of sandbagging this thing. DeChambeau loses his caddy. He's had to do these awkward little press conferences where Tom Brady has brilliantly in beautiful fashion sent a right hook across the bow in the mm -hmm. Zoom call. I mean, the whole lead up to this thing was that Aaron stinks at golf. Uh, he's not in shape for golf. Nope. He's not in shape for football. He doesn't get. He's going to quit. He's going to leave. Everybody hates him. Then he gets there. Starts out a little bit rough. Mm -hmm. Okay. Starts out a little bit. Still very quiet, by the way. Hey, I'm not here to just kind of quiet little quips here. Then he makes that putt. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then I. Then the as the sun starts moving and he starts sweating a little bit, you start getting a shot. His calves. Look like he's been fucking doing squats and step ups and lifts and things like that every single day for the last three months while he yeah. was in Hawaii. He looked in incredible fucking shape. Still in football. Yep. Still <laughs> in. He looked because at Kentucky Derby, look, I don't, he might have just slim. came out of some diet or something. I don't know what Ooh. he was doing. He looked incredibly small. But when you're talking about how he looked, he looked yoked yeah then he makes that putt and he just started balling i mean he started yeah. playing better than his goddamn pro they were using his he was starting then to start getting real confident there were some sly comments coming in he dropped fucking shit naturally yeah. was, everybody's like oh, that's what i would do on a golf course as well he had some hilarious quit i mean he not only did he dominate in golf and he won like a World Series of Poker bracelet yeah. for cool. winning the match, which was cool that he couldn't get over his big fucking hand there at the beginning of that whole thing. He was hilarious, like, but didn't give away anything that happened and still did address the whole thing and saying, we'll see. When he was talking about being at the first game against the Saints for the Green Bay Packers, whenever the announcer, who's a Milwaukee guy, I guess, tried to ask him and lead him in there. Charles asked him, Larry asked him, mm -hmm. Tom asked him, and he played it off somehow in incredibly cool fashion, came out looking good on the other side, and I think everybody's on his side now, and I started thinking to myself, this handsome motherfucker could be in the PGA if he wanted yeah. to. Right? He has the mindset to go ahead and lock in on something. He can train, he can do that, and it seems like his natural ability, I mean, who knows how much he's been golfing, but let's just assume it's been a pretty good amount. If he was, he was balling out there. Oh, yeah. Absolutely balling. They get the win. DeChambeau hit a ball 500 yards. I mean, pretty much every bet that we thought we threw out yesterday, pretty much hit, including first hole birdie, first hole win for Aaron and DeChambeau. Mm -hmm. It was a beautiful night, beautiful day. It was a lot longer than I thought, but it is such a nice break of entertainment, those matches. I enjoy yes. them a lot. At Ty Schmidt, big Packers fan, were you alarmed about the we'll see? We don't know. And then at the end, when he told Tom, next week maybe we'll find out something, that was a little something that dropped mm -hmm. out there. What were your thoughts as a fan of Aaron and then obviously as a Packer? No, yeah, I mean, he he won the day One completely. With that. I mean, fucking crap. Charles Barkley had a great he did. Charles Barkley had a great day. Sure. He did. Charles Barkley had a great day. Aaron Rodgers, though, won that day. Phil, great day. Unbelievable day. Unbelievable. Aaron Rodgers won yesterday, and I, w I assume he thought there was a chance that was going to happen, and he went in there very comfortable, prepared, both, you know, for any... Any of the questions that they were going to lob out there and body wise, yeah, golf sure. wise. Yeah. He said he played there last week. They caught him on a hot mm -hmm. bike. I mean, he sandbagged a little bit going in there. He, did. Uh -huh. he looked cool. He won the day. But as a Packers owner, you are, Ty, your thoughts on how that whole thing panned out? Yeah, no, I wasn't worried at all. It was because, like you said, I mean, he, he didn't seem any different. He seemed like the guy who was on the show, all, you know, just kind of relaxed, comfortable. He was tr trading jabs with the guys. Like, he, he wasn't. Hey, shut up, Phil. Yeah, exactly. He wasn't being like timid or weird when they asked asked him the question like and he kind of set the precedent early like hey i get that you guys are gonna ask me this but like i'm, I'm not gonna say anything today like i'm locked in right now on the golf course and that's what i'm focused on so it wasn't like a oh shit he's not gonna be there it was it honestly it was just nice to be like okay i can just enjoy him locked in playing golf right now because it was very very fun to watch and he now i don't know how many friend groups have these anymore or how many friend groups in the you know, country have this particular guy in your friend group, but if you have the high hilarious guy in your group who's pretty quiet, 
I feel like that was Aaron yesterday. Yes. Aaron was the the kind of quiet high guy who was seeing everything. Yeah. And by the way, smarter than probably everybody everybody in the room. Not obviously Aaron yesterday, but I'm talking about when it comes to this particular friend that is in a lot of friend groups. Mm -hmm. He is normally very high. Normally, I'm not saying Aaron was high yesterday. I mean, potentially. He did, make, he did he was, make a reference to like Phil, like activating his cannabinoid receptor. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so so I, I'm not saying he was or he wasn't, but that's exactly the role. He, like I, I thought back to a couple of my incredibly high, hilarious, smart friends out there. And I just, at the beginning, I assume people were like, oh, Aaron stinks. This guy's boring. And then once you get five hours into it, it's like, oh, this guy has been, this guy's kind of been the drive behind this entire thing. Now, if he plays like shit, I'd like to see how that goes, uh -huh. right? which could have changed. But him getting through it and playing great, who cares? It was awesome. Because in the end, like they needed him for that to be oh, entertaining because yeah. DeChambeau was playing like shit. And he wasn't, you know, like really saying, I mean, he's he's not that interesting, I don't think, on, you know, like his uh, you know liked what? up segments. Like he Hey, just let's say this about DeChambeau. Let's get into Dude Shambro. Bryson. Okay, let's get into DeChambeau, Bryson DeChambeau. Aaron First interview about DeChambeau, Aaron goes, yeah, this guy's a maniac. The, yeah. thing, the things he likes to talk about and the things he likes to talk about, he's, he's a maniac, man. Like, that's just, by the way, perfectly stated as the high friend in the group. Like, this guy is an absolute maniac. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, what he's talking about, what he's choosing to talk about. Then Charles Barkley, right? Charles Barkley is like, hey, I, hey man, I got a chance to listen. To, this guy's cool. Like, a lot of mm -hmm. people say a lot of things. I think DeChambeau won... Even though he played like shit. He had a couple balls, 500 yards. Yeah. But I think we know exactly what DeChambeau is, right? Right. This is a, like we thought, a massively meathead nerd. Okay? Uh -huh. The way he thinks, the way he acts, everything about him. He's a golf nerd who's also a meathead who's eating 3,000 calories of food on the golf course. That's wild. <laughs> okay, that's a whole oh, yeah. day. That's yeah. a whole day for people. He eats that every time he's on a golf course because he said he burns five to 6,000 calories. So he's losing... I guess that's like 10 to 15 pounds every day on the course or whatever. He's got a whole science equation. Listening to him, how he explains putting and all his decision-making, insane. But I think I found myself liking DeChambeau a lot more than maybe going into it. So I think it was overall a win-win-win for everybody, including TNT, who got six hours of commercial time that they could use for that entire yeah, thing. I thought Bryson was a robot. And then he's you know throwing jabs at Charles Barkley about San Antonio woman on the air. I mean, it was a whole entire thing that kind of humanized him more just as See, much as it did the other guys. But he came time. out early and was terrible. I don't know. You oh, guys might man. have still been in the pod. I don't know if you guys saw it. Did you guys uh um, no, missed the first yeah, four? I, he I, brought out tape. Yes. Oh, really? First T box. No. <laughs> first T box. Okay. So I think Aaron and I potentially had similar reactions. Like, oh no, I'm with this Fuck guy. Already? <laughs> he brought tape out. He said, wait, wait. It was right before Tom teed off. And he said, I brought tape for you or whatever. And Tom said, Oh, is this for my pants? And uh, DeChambeau, I, I mean, pretty savage, but, but he brought a prop in first tee, so I didn't really like it. He goes, no, it's for your lips or whatever Ooh. he said. And then he, like, yeah. giggled and walked away. And I'm sure, I'm sure everyone's like, God <laughs> damn, this is not going to be all day, is it? Because somebody told DeChambeau to do that. Yeah. I don't I think do. that was DeChambeau. I think somebody told him to do that as, like, a thing. And I was like, this guy's going to stink. Like, this guy's going to lose the day. I was actually watching. I was like, all right. So, Aaron, I hope Aaron does well. I, hope, I want them to win. Obviously, can't wait to see more of Tom here, learn golf from Phil. But this guy does suck, doesn't he? That's immediately what I thought. Mm -hmm. Then, boy, that last six and a half hours of that thing, it really <laughs> did change completely. I, I became a DeChambeau fan, I think. See, I wouldn't go that far. I mean, he wasn't terrible. And like like you said, I we didn't see the first part, but knowing that, it, it's huge that he then chipped in because people yes. immediately forgot about like, oh, okay, this guy's an absolute buffoon. And, yeah, but, you doofus. know, he was carrying him early. Like, it was kind of the perfect setup. I still think it would have been better if, uh, I mean, Kepka would have been, you know, his yeah. partner or something. Or utilizing those two. I, I don't know. It Like, it... He was fine, but I Phil, wouldn't say so I Phil came was kind of like burying DeChambeau yeah, early, yeah. which was incredible. And by the way, the internet, I think, was very against DeChambeau early, not only for everything that's happened with Brooksy and his caddy and mm -hmm. then the Rappaport news that came out yeah. on this particular Ooh, show. Right. I mean, that guy was not running into a good PR session. Then First T comes out with the tape. It was like everybody on Earth was like, okay, he's talking shit, so now we can talk shit back to right. him. And Phil was... You know, I don't, I don't know if that's how Phil and everybody talks to Bryson because how nerdy he is and Bryson just uh, the self awareness he they're not talking shit to him, mm -hmm. but it appears as if they are definitely all talking shit to him and he has no idea. And then towards the end, I think Deschamps, I think the tide turned 
in DeChambeau's favor yesterday. Now, if Kepka and DeChambeau were playing against each other and Tom was with Kepka and DeChambeau, I mean, obviously we're going to get better golf. Mm -hmm. You know, it's going to be a lot more intense and everything like that. I, I think it's going to get dialed in. But Phil Mickelson, he acts as if. Did he create the match? Yeah. Did fine. Phil Mickelson create the match? Because they lost. Have, he's, he's the only one who's played in every single one of them. Yeah, because right? he has said we. Oh, he said a lot at the match, and then he talked about um, TaylorMade. No, Callaway. Who's his sponsor? Yeah, I think he's a Callaway, Callaway guy. Because Aaron's TaylorMade. Right. So Callaway. Then he said Callaway has such a been such a massive sponsor of us or this or he he referred to the match a couple times by listening to him that it sounded as if there was some ownership almost over it. And by the way. I think I'm completely okay with that because I think he made the decision once it was starting to get boring. And, and Diggs brought this up this morning, and I 100% I agree with him. By the way, congrats to Italy. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Hey, that was the penalties. All That's right. right. That was a penalty. That was a cheeky penalty to win that thing. When the when ball, ball hits the net, net like, like it did yesterday, yesterday it could be coming, coming home. home. Italy, England plays today at three, but Diggs was right. Like Phil, I think, kind of got a, a little bit of a read um, that it was getting boring. Mm -hmm. And then he started doing his golf fix. Hold on, Call partner. a shot. Yeah. Partner, Phil yeah. Mickelson, look at this, do this. Kind of, and by the way, I can only speak from personal experience, but I thought that was something that was missing in the punting and kicking game, which is why the hashtag for the brand videos kind of started and have still gone on because there's a lot of shit happening within a kick or a punt that people have no idea because the commentators don't ever talk about it. I think Phil and DeChambeau yesterday, Phil mostly driving it and through this entire match, him explaining that there is a lot of things happening here. And DeChambeau, when he got into the putting thing, where it's like, oh, I'm going 80% here, th th this, yeah. and aiming mm -hmm. this. Th like, it, it, those are the types of intricacies of golf that you never really get to hear about. And there's probably only a certain amount of people in the world that can really do it, digest it, and dissect it live on television at the same damn time. And I think that is one of the big upsides of the match. So if Phil is one of the founders or feels as if it's his thing, I think he's in the right for that. I love the match yesterday. Yeah, I it was awesome. And it was weird, too, because because I think like originally it was slotted for what like five to eight, and then it was supposed to go to TBS or something. But I mean, it was seven forty-five, and they were on the seventh hole. And mm -hmm. I think they just said, "All right, fuck it, we'll just stay on TNT." Like it was nice you didn't have to switch over because I think they did a pretty good job with like the commercial breaks too. Like it seemed like we got a lot of golf like on the back nine. I don't know how the front nine was. I will say I think I would enhance the coverage. Without if I question. was ever, sure. if I was ever asked to be a part of it, mm -hmm. I think I would be able to. And I wouldn't. Hey, by the way, I don't think, I don't think it's smack. Dead, like I think this is the interesting thing. Some people heard me call the Packers Lions game, but they didn't hear the entire game. They just heard the Prater touchdown. Right. So that Prater gets on the internet. The for the brand videos, by the way, those are all highlights. I'm going bonkers in that thing. A lot of the videos I make it out of this is when I'm going. I think me at golf. I, I think I could fit it. I think I could find, I think I could find a tone. Hundred percent. To go ahead and for, I mean, when you're talking seven and a half hours of coverage, you know, there has to be a little juice in there. Do you know? Oh like, yeah. I think I could add in there, but I thought Larry did good. I thought the host, Charles, mm -hmm. did good. Yep. I thought it was great. I enjoyed the hell out of it. It would be sweet though. I mean, you in a cart, just right next to those guys. Like, I think that with would the, be a yeah, with the whole yeah, thing. The headset on. Yeah. I mean, there Something is to think it, about. There is, better. And by the way, you could get a little. Yeah. I mean, there is a lot. Are we trying to get better here? All right, let's get to a break. Peter Schrager's on the other side. I don't know if it could get better, by the way. I enjoyed it. Yeah, it was awesome. No, Absolutely. But while watching it, I thought to myself, oh, I think this would be an interesting avenue for content if mm -hmm. I was to get in here. We're back in four minutes with Peter Schrager. Flying Coach, the podcast that he releases that gets no other promotion other than this show, <laughs> That's right. is actually a fucking incredible one alongside Sean McVay. And they had... Kyle Shanahan on. Yeah. Yeah, Shanahan, the guy that threw the football from one beach house across the street into another beach house oven. Yeah. yeah. In a bucket, actually. Mm -hmm. Dying. While sober, he was on the Flying Coach yeah. Show with Sean McVay and Pete Schrager. Said a lot of very interesting things, especially about Matthew Stafford and others. We'll talk to Schrager about that and everything else happening in the NFL world because guess what? Good Morning Football took off this week. Whoa! What? <laughs> off. The hell? What? Who does that? Are you kidding me? As my tan from the islands <laughs> yeah. drifts away, right. we'll be... 
I think it's a big conversation with you. A good oh, yeah. conversation with Schrager. At Boston Connors here. The boys are in the back. I appreciate you all. Let's have a Wednesday. We're back in four. They want to play for the Yankees one day. The people I'm playing against. They want to play for the fucking Yankees. Check out, like, in there. We, we put a little surprise in there for you. Let's get iced. It feels like. <laughs> yeah. I mean, let's start the day. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck are you <laughs> <laughs> it's great to be a member of the Washington Wild Things baseball team. We're number one in the league, right? Yeah, yeah let's fuck yeah. go. Fuck everybody. Yeah. Fuck everybody else. When I take BP, will there be anybody telling me how to fuck the hit? No. Feels like the wind's blowing this way. Yeah. Might have to attack that fence tonight, huh? Hey, you got it! Does the DJ play heaters like this all night? I started hitting two days tonight. Oh, you'll be fine. I think I figured it out. You'll probably only face 90 miles an hour tonight. You should be good. Is that me in the game there? This is a good at bat. This is a good at bat. Oh shit! Oh shit! Give me it! One one pitch. Let's go! Line drive. Oh, right Son of a bitch. That came down a lot faster than I thought though. Let's be honest. Field it's them. deep Don't and it is off the wall. Field it up. Excuse me! If you could all get off of my dick, we would be better off. I'll tell you what, would have been nice to take a nap earlier. Another throw Get back. first. You have to tell me when that's happening. You're making me look bad. Hey, Steven, fuck you. Hey, fuck you, Steven. Hey, nice pitch. One, four, nine. Does that feel good, Steven? Four. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. wow. He tosses up the ball. Wow. Just... Back to being a player now. Making plays. Touchdown. What inning is it? Second. Down to the second. Jesus. But it was finally my time to get in that box. Number one, the right fielder. The former punter from West Virginia, a former Indianapolis yeah. Colt, and a current Barstool Sports personality, Pat McAfee. The anticipation is real. Oh, oh fuck. Oh, right after that. Hit out. I'm in the hole? Son of a bitch. This is about to happen. And that will bring up Pat McAfee once again. First pitch from Reynaldo Lopez, swing and a miss by McAfee. Hey, 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 what was that? And the catcher goes, I had to give you one. Looked off speed. What was that? Then I look at the pitcher, and he's smiling. He's like laughing, like he's toying with me like I'm a child. It all comes down to this. My last at bat. Hey, I'm going to get on. You bring me home. This is your life on the line, fucker. Let me tell you something. If we, you're going to take an L, okay? You're going to take one. So I think that the close your eyes and swing method is perfect. <laughs> oh, this is hardball. Oh, Hell yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Jesus. Uh, you have no prayer. Oh boy. Oh, this is the duck and duck thing. Let's go! This is the Pat McAfee Show on Sirius XM Mad Dog Sports Radio. We thank you for taking the time to seek out this small regional show that streams internationally. Here's Pat and the boys. Welcome back. Welcome back. Joining us now is a man who I'm not sure if he's on vacation. He's probably working. That's all this guy does. Oh, That's yeah. Right. He's got his uh, ear to the ground, nose to the grindstone, boots on the floor. Yeah. He is where his feet are. Wherever they are at the time in which his feet are at a place. Ladies and gentlemen, joining us now, host of Flying Coach and Emmy-nominated Good Morning Football, which is off for what, like the next three weeks? I think so, yeah. You guys work at all? Ladies and gentlemen, Peter Strager. Yes! 
going on, Shregs? That doesn't look like New York. No, no. We rented a house out by the beach uh, in Long Island, and we're here for the week. But I'm back on the air next week. Don't worry, guys. I actually do respect the hell out of any group of guys and gals in media that aren't NBA finals related or golf related that are in the studio. So kudos yeah. to you guys. This is incredible. This is July 4th. This is the one week you're supposed to take off guys. Oh, see, so we did that last week. So we are kind of learning as we go here. This <laughs> will probably be the week next year. If I had to guess, <laughs> unless there's another match, which was fantastic. When I watched it. I, w I watched the whole thing. I loved too. it. And the scenery was so cool, but you were right. Pal. I was listening to you earlier. You want to hate Brady? He's just so cool. And then Rodgers is genuinely funny. It's like, how do you dislike either one of these guys? They're both cool guys you want to go golfing with. And then you throw in the Baker Mayfield in a silk robe, and you throw in Gronk, and you throw in Larry Fitz. Like, it was awesome. For offseason, this is great. And Charles Barkley. I mean, let's not make, let's not bury the lead here. Okay, <laughs> Barkley had a hell of a performance out there. And Phil Mickelson. But, you know, that the Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady playing catch. That's right down your guys' like, hey, Oh, my God. That's good that, morning we, football. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, Oh, yeah. Breakfast, lunch, ah, and dinner. That you guys. And talking technique. Like, oh, yeah. you used to throw it this way, but now you throw it this way. I mean, well, he's talking about it, shotgun technique. It was great. It was great. This is awesome. Yeah. But that's, this would normally be something that I would find incredibly corny, mm -hmm. right? Like, but this felt like it was natural. It felt like Tom and Aaron both took a moment where, like, oh, I'm going to play catch with fucking Aaron Rodgers. I mean, like, that is yeah, a, yeah. you know, like, it was one of those things where it looked like two kids, but then they are at a level at quarterbacking that not a lot of humans have ever got to. And everybody knows now that Peyton Manning and Tom Brady were friends. They actually took trips together. They studied film together. There's only a few people on earth, really, that can give tips to some people about some things. Like, I talked about this with Shane Leckler and other people. This is mm -hmm. at a much higher level. There's only a certain amount of people Aaron and Tom can really talk to who have been in the places they've been, at the level they've been, having to handle it. And they're from the same, what, Northern California area. Yep. I don't know if they're best friends or not, but that feels like a, a connection that is good just kind of see how that whole thing pans out. But them talking about his shotgun stance and how he uh. used to be left foot forward and moving there. And then them throwing, it's like they both watch film on each other. On the tee box, Tom Brady was like, oh, that's like after two incompletions and throwing yes. four touchdowns. Yeah. Yeah. It's like it was cool to see them kind of be, I don't want to say like fans, but like cool of each other. Because those two are, you know, like there are game, him with Peyton in there. Those are our guys. You know, it was really cool to see that. Was our, it's our generation. Those are the guys. And you can throw in some names here and there. The Breeze and the Rivers, they're in the conversation. But those are the guys I'm thinking about, really. I mean, it's Peyton, it's Tom, and it's Rogers. And, you know, a lot of times you see these guys together at an NFL Honors event or at a Pro Bowl. And you're like, oh, these guys are buddies. That, you know, it's funny, the the Mahomes, Rogers, like State Farm ad, I, I don't I mean, I don't think there's a lot of hanging out at that set. It's like we're getting paid a crap load of money. Let's, Let's go Jake. do it. Let's yeah, go film the commercial. Yeah, huh? Let's get out of town. This yeah. they wanted to be there. And you could tell such respect. We had Rogers on the show once. And obviously you guys have had Rogers a lot more than we have. But on Good Morning Football, we had him on and we we're like, you know, Tom said he wants to play to 45. What do you think? And he's like, that's a great barometer. Like, I respect Tom so much. Like, I can almost see the reverence. But. Rogers did get the best of them in the golf, and you can see Tom was actually genuinely pissed at points of this. Yeah, there was a couple shits there. Mm -hmm. yeah, Tom. Breaking them. yeah, there was a couple cool moments there for Tom, and and I think the sly swear words were my favorite ones that were dropped that kind of snuck past the goalie there a little bit. It was uh, <laughs> it was cool, but I would assume Aaron and Pat at some Patrick, sorry, at some point, like Peyton and Tom, even though they're closer in age, Peyton and Tom they got close, and hopefully here Aaron and Tom this will become because I think that'll help. Obviously, but like I think there are yeah. things that only a couple people on earth can talk to each other about, and that is one of them. And then I assume, like Aaron and Pat, it, like I think that is kind of something that that quarterback position. I don't know if it always has been this way, but it feels like there is now a good precedent of the community of quarterbacks. It's interesting. So uh, we had Troy Aikman on our podcast, Flying Coach, last week, and I said to Aikman, I said, sure. you know, who were your guys when you got in the league? And he's like, we had something called the Quarterbacks Club. You remember this video game when we were kids? Yeah, the they NFL fucked over club? everybody. Jim Kelly, Dan Marino. Oh, so here's what that was. I didn't know that until now. They had their own separate annex of oh, yeah. the players' union. So they would – you couldn't get any of the quarterbacks unless you paid the Quarterbacks Club to do video games. To, remember like Randall Cunningham on Tecmo was like QB12? And it was like yeah, yeah. Joe Montana never had his name on Madden. It was always like QB 19. This is the reason why it was like quarterbacks club stuff. So in the latest CBAs, they got rid of that. But you would have to pay the quarterbacks club. And it was only like 10 of them. 
Not even. And now when you're seeing guys like Russell Wilson and Rodgers and and how they're dealing with their contracts and stuff, and hey, I want to be paid. We might see a reemergence of the quarterbacks club where if you want all of this, you got to have all of us, and we kind of run the show. It's pretty cool. Shregs, I agree completely. And the reason why I said they fucked everybody over is because they ended up doing that with a couple of CBAs. Like, they were agreeing to things, and then that was definitely going to affect this. I think there's a way that that I've always said the quarterbacks, because as the – Salary cap goes up. That just means quarterback contracts are going up. That's what that means. Now, they can try to offset it with other language like, okay, veterans minimum guarantees are now this, which is $400,000 more than rookie guarantees. That actually ended up fucking the veterans because they could save $400,000 on yep. that special teams player and the quarterback's money all went up. So I have been a big advocate of like, put the quarterbacks off in their own thing when it comes to the salary cap. When it comes to marketing and everything, I... I don't know how you're going to get all those agents to uh, to dive into that together, but I, the the salary cap thing, I'm on there for sure. Shregs, let's talk about flying coach. Yeah. Thank, thank you for the shout out with Troy Aikman, by the way. We appreciate yeah. that. You're the My man. Dad. We really appreciate that. Gave you guys gave you guys another one today. They asked me about like which players now who I think would be good at broadcasting, and I'll say what I say in the same one last week. I'll say it again this week. What you guys are doing, and you as a former player, Pat. To be wearing a Sugar Suns tank top, holding a baseball bat, the Sugar Show 94, in your terms, with your boys, with the West Virginia jersey in the background, on completely your own terms is so respectable. And I think it's the future of this. If you want to be good in broadcasting, you got to be yourself and authentic. There was a time where, and Troy talks about it, he's like, you know, Troy Aikman was going in as the number one analyst for Fox, and his bosses were saying, you got to talk more about the offensive line play. And he said, why? And they said, because Madden does it, because Millen does it, because that's just how it's done. And he's like, but I'm a quarterback. I don't look at the game that way. And they kind of got around. Now Romo does his own thing. And now it's kind of breaking open with you guys and what you're doing that I look at you, I look at Nate Burleson, I look at Aqib Tlaib in the few games he's done. You don't have to get in this weird box. Brandon Marshall and Ocho. Tie. Mm-hmm. You can be yourselves and still be really entertaining and educate the viewer. And, I appreciate what you guys do, and I appreciate how it's you and your boys on your own terms. That's the coolest thing about it. Schrager, we appreciate that. We do. We love that. We thank you for that. Uh, whenever you talk about the people that are making decisions, though, at places like your place and other places, they don't necessarily agree with you, Shrek. No, that's that's fine. That's that's fine. That's a, I'll be working for you someday, Pat. <laughs> no, no, see, listen, actually, that's the thing. I don't know if I have the ability to do that because I don't know how long the future works. This is the NAI thing. This is the NIL thing. This is the name, image, likeness thing. I'm trying to figure out how we do that. But it ends with us not potentially pissing somebody off or fucking somebody over or somebody not like that is a tough. I'm not. I don't have that executive like. Yeah. No. And those guys are amazing at what they do. And I look at the Fox pregame show with such envy and, and like awe that it's been Howie, Terry, Jimmy, Kurt Menefee, and it was James Brown before him and Strahan for all those years. And I work with those guys and Glazer. They love each other. They love the bosses. They love the producers, and they get along so well. It's what you guys have in your little world, but it's within that corporate umbrella. And I think that's pretty cool. It's rare to find that, though. We're trying to do that with Good Morning Football, and I think we've hit a great level with that as well, with our own camaraderie. But what do you think it's about? Hey, that that. Show, hey, you guys are gonna last. You think long time because you all I hope so. You I all hope so. Hey, I really do. Hey, Shrakes, Shrakes, hold on, Shrakes, Shrakes, hold on. Flying coach, really good. Yeah, incredible. Mm-hmm. Re- Nate Burleson is really good at everything else that he does outside of Good Morning mm-hmm. Football. Kay Adams, she's on Entertainment Tonight and everything. Really good. People. Yep. People. Kyle Brandt, he's about to host a massive show for a network that he's currently in Australia for. That mm-hmm. feel in the energy you guys have and the vibe you have, I've thought about this a couple of times. Like, do you think, and I'm not going to talk, you know, do you think that show is going to be able to, with that group? I sure hope so, dude. I hope so, I too. Sure it's a good so. show. But it seems like what you're talking about, the corporate world, right? What happens is you get a good mix, but then everybody's really good. So they're like, okay, here we go. This person gets boom. This person gets boom. This person gets boom. And then they, they try to recreate that again. And oftentimes, it's very difficult to do. What you guys have are special. What I'm saying is I wonder, it's going to get tough for you guys to not – I think because of how good that show is and how many people watch, who watches and how good you guys are. I, I I'll tell you this from my perspective, and I've spoken to the other three hosts plenty of times about it. We built this thing together. Like there's such a loyalty to each other. We love doing it. And all those other opportunities 
stem from being on Good Morning Football three hours a day and the great chemistry we have. So I love working with Kay. I love working with Kyle. I love working with Nate. And I love our producers. I'm hoping and praying that the NFL Network is kind enough to let us keep doing it. But obviously, Nate Burleson doesn't need Good Morning Football right now. He's on the Sunday morning CBS show. He can host any show he wants. He does entertainment. But we really get along. We have a good time, and our show is different. And he doesn't have to wear a suit and tie and sell soap the whole time. Like we could talk, we could talk crap to each other. So hopefully, we can all stay together. I know that the four of us would like to. We'll see what happens. But Duh. you're right. I mean, that's that's what happens. And Pat Riley called it the disease of me when they started winning, and everyone said Magic wanted his, and James Worthy wanted his, and you got to avoid the disease of me. I, we haven't had that hit us yet. Ho- hopefully, that stays this way. There's no you know, individual diva on our show, which I think you can appreciate being on an ensemble group as well. Yeah, the D, uh, the disease of me is an interesting way to paint a picture from an executive standpoint of your people getting fucking broken off, not by you. But <laughs> I understand what you were saying. Uh, let's talk about... Let's talk about Flying Coach, though. Great show, because you might get broken off. The disease of me might get in for that, because it is a great show. <laughs> You're talking to people that everybody wants to talk to with a guy in Sean McVay that everybody wants to talk to. You have great chemistry there. The conversations are going. Ty has listened to every minute of every mm-hmm. single one. I've only got a chance to hear clips. The one today, though, with Kyle Shanahan, I listened to a two-minute clip where him and McVay were both in Cabo, while the <laughs> Matthew Stafford was also in Cabo. Uh, Cabo. Trade almost happened and Shanahan thought he was in the game, then he was out of the game, and McVay. Like, these types of stories that you guys are getting over there is unbelievable. I think more people should listen, Triggs. I appreciate it. We don't do a ton of promotion around it. This is really the only show I'm talking about it much, and then Good Morning Football, and uh, I'm surprised it doesn't get as much pickup because it's unfiltered 90 minutes of two coaches who don't do a ton of loose media. Like, Kyle Shanahan is, is available to the media, but he doesn't talk like this often, and he's comfortable with me. And he's comfortable with McVay. Hey, was he still drunk? Me. Was he still drunk from the uh, house to house uh, drunk? I don't know. About that. <laughs> uh, yeah. I know. Sober, sober, sober. Yeah. Maybe high. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> maybe high. Maybe he's smoking dope. Let's just say I don't uh, know. he was loose. He was feeling good yeah. when he did this. And yeah. he was in a comfortable state, which is part of the key of this. We don't do it in the season. It's just 10 episodes with all the different head coaches, but it's now in their downtime. But, you know, McVay almost instigating is like, so Kyle. What did you think about the Stafford trade? Not knowing, and I'll go into their relationship because it's really interesting. But he says, what do you know about the Stafford? What do you think of Stafford trade? And he says, what's crazy is in one hotel, Sean McVay, Matt Stafford, Drew Brees, Sean Payton, Andrew Whitworth, we're all staying at this one really fancy hotel in Cabo when this whole thing is going down. Hmm. Kyle Shanahan's two minutes away at a different location in Cabo while this is all going down. On the Saturday of that weekend, Kyle Shannon did not leave the house. He was on the phone with Tom Condon, Stafford's agent. He was on the phone with all sorts of different sources around the league. And he was said, my entire vacation has been spent watching Matt Stafford film, seeing if we want to get involved with this thing. And holy cow, I want to get involved with this thing. And the 49ers, I didn't realize were that interested in Stafford, where Shanahan sacrificing what seemed to be his vacation to be watching Stafford film. And he finds out from a source who says, Hey, you can go out with your wife, Mandy, tonight. Have a Saturday night. Put the film study away. Get off the phone. Nothing's going to happen tonight. Ten minutes into dinner, he gets a text. Deal is done. McVay closed the deal with Stafford. Ah! Hey, go, Easy deal. hey, go and, here, get drunk with your wife. Yeah, hey, go they, and enjoy. There's going to be but some it, news coming that you are not going to want to be sober with here. You are going to want to be preoccupied, potentially, uh, Shanahan, because uh, that two weeks you just spent that you could have spent on the beach with your family, (laughs) that you never get to see, watching film in envy. And I think his exact words from the clip I listened to is, he is somehow underrated. He said, in my eyes, I thought he was a guy. And then I watched the film, I'm like, this guy is underrated. Like Kyle Shanahan put over Matt Stafford in the interview with you a lot. And he, he feels the exact same way I do because I had to watch Lions games because we have a Lions fan here. So I started watching the games. He's fucking unbelievable. That He's unbelievable. Dude. McVay I, has to be so pumped about this thing. He is. And, you know, all the stuff that they talk about. And if you're a football geek, I implore you to listen to this. When I say geek, I mean it's like really in the weeds quarterback talk from two guys who live, breathe, eat quarterbacks. And what they talk about always is that. off schedule. So when things go, <laughs> what is it, live, breathe, eat, or eat, breathe, live? I don't know what it is, Pat, but it's one of those three combination things. But when a quarterback is off schedule, so – He says, Kyle says, you know, every quarterback when they're growing up typically is running around and making plays and is the best player in Pop Warner and the best player in high school and maybe the best player in college and they can win a Heisman being out of the pocket. But to stay in the pocket, 
that's what the greats do. And it's Montana, it's Brady, it's Manning. And he's like, I was amazed with what Stafford can do in the pocket off schedule, meaning things are going wrong. Everything around him is falling apart. But the arm angle, the vision, the anticipation, he was just raving about Stafford. And having spoken to McVay probably every day this offseason, I'm not exaggerating. He's just excited to, to work with this guy. It's nothing against Jared Goff. It's just that Stafford has one of these special talents, and for 11 Shrey, years, what happened with him? And maybe Goff? it hasn't. Maybe it hasn't equaled wins. What but happened with him? And Goff? might not have done the right things, and maybe he himself wasn't at the right place. Who knows? Maybe we'll see if it now works out. Shregs, what happened with uh, McVay and Goff? I think it's going to work out. By the way, I, I after watching Matthew Stafford mm-hmm. and knowing about the Calvin Johnson and Barry Sanders curse oh, yeah. in the Lions organization for making them pay back the money, and after seeing uh, Ted Lasso with the curse in the training room, that's what maybe the Lions need to do to get over that Calvin Johnson curse and making your best player of all time probably. Uh, pay you back money because you guys stink so bad Jeez. as an organization. I mean, yeah. that is just, that's a curse that could potentially follow. I think MCDC maybe will gnaw the curse out of the building, but getting Matthew Stafford to LA with McVay is going to be fantastic. I'm all about it. I'm a big Matthew Stafford fan. I like McVay's brain when it comes off. What happened with McVay and Goff? Has that ever been fully out there? Because there, there's always been the, um, I don't want to say kind of bullshit, but yeah, it, it's kind of been like the bull. Jared Goff, I got another love for Sean McVay. Thank you so much. Okay, yeah. cool. But, yeah. but Goff was benched in that playoff game he could very clearly play he was already paid a hundred million dollars make does he get into that and did shanahan get into any of that about jimmy g and the quarterback like and was there any conversations about like managing like yeah you- well let's start with the jimmy g thing from this podcast because i i don't nail it right ahead and like how could you draft a quarterback third overall when you already have garoppolo and mcveigh says i honestly till the second you took trey lance i thought you were taking kyle pitts and I'm like, get out of here. And he's like, no, I really did because I know the way Kyle is and he can roll with Jimmy and just the way he would do the mismatches. So one of the most you know, closest allies or closest friends over the years to, to Shanahan is McVay. And also one of the most you know intricate offensive minds was thinking Kyle Pitts was the pick right up until the selection. Um, but the Jimmy thing, I think it's become availability for Garoppolo, for yeah, Garoppolo not for talent. Sure. Because they win when he's on the field and he's healthy. It's availability. So when he went and got Trey Lance – Kyle explains that, you know, it could have very easily been Mac Jones, but when they did the study and he finally felt that it was time, like he made a decision on Trey Lance. And I kind of was pissed because I know Kyle real well. And I'm like, you know, we all have careers here. I'm out there saying, it's, you know, I think it's going to be Mac Jones. What, what, you know, I'm texting you and you're just not responding. And he's like, but that's the point. Like, so you predicted it wrong. What you were saying about Mac Jones is right. I think Mac Jones is going to be awesome. We just happened to take Trey Lance. I wasn't going to give it away, but all the analysis of what made Mac Jones a good player is not wrong. And we might make this pick wrong, and that'll be something we live with. But the Jimmy thing, I don't think it has anything to do against Garoppolo. I think it's he hasn't been healthy all the way. We want to make a move at quarterback. We want to open it up. And guess what? Everyone thought Mac Jones because of Kirk Cousins. Well, now he's got a mobile quarterback who might be able to throw the ball even further. And then Goff, is McVay dove into that, or is that just something like five years, ten he's, years? He's respectful, and I think it'll get out eventually. How he was, but like, I think he re- he regrets the way the the month afterwards, everyone like any comment he made that was positive about Stafford was looked at as a slight at Goff. He Got likes it. Jared, and I think he feels bad the way it all went down. That it looked like he was so exasperated with him that he had to get Stafford, and now he's in this honeymoon period. That's when the personal stuff gets in. They have no bad blood. Okay. If anyone, Goff might have bad blood towards McVay. We'll see how the rest of his career goes. Send him to Detroit. Went, but gosh, Yikes. Sean. He had a Sean's golf course a, at his house. Send yeah. him to Detroit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He had a good. Sean, Sean's got a good heart. I think he feels crummy with how the communication went and all that stuff. And the truth of the matter is, he views Stafford as a slight upgrade from Goff. And they're Business. simpatico, same kind of age, same kind of mind, the way it works. And he thinks the Rams might be better off. Business. It's the NFL. It's hard. It stinks. It's it very. Stinks. It's hard. That's yeah. what it is. Ahead, he didn't Ty. draft golf. Okay. Yeah. All right, Ty, you're up. Shregs, in terms of flying coach, is there plans for a season two? Because like you mentioned, it seems like it doesn't get promoted much and kind of flies under the radar, which you know I don't really understand. But um, also, like, has there been a bunch of stuff that's got left on the cutting room floor? Because you can tell all those guys are very close to each other. Like, have you had any coaches – 
call you back afterwards and be like, hey, that like 20 minutes or so, we're going to need yes. to get rid of that. Yes, yes. I won't that happens to coach, us. But I'll say this. That used there to happen was, to us. Yeah. That used to happen to us. We needed mm-hmm. a call. And, and I, give them the, I give them the ability to do that because we record it on a Monday. It goes up on a Wednesday. And I think it's fair. If they're going to give us 90 minutes of their time for free on vacation, I think it's fair if they regret saying something or they don't want it out there. And one of them that I thought was not even close to a – but it just shows you the reverence they have for this coach. Not even close to incendiary was – a coach was talking about a situation with Belichick where he couldn't believe that Belichick got away with something. It was not a manipulation of the rules, but it was a move that Belichick pulled and it was when they were coaching against each other and he was looking at the refs like, are you serious? Is it? And Belichick, by the time that they all, it all the play was going, it was on and it's moved right along. And he's like, afterwards called me and was like, you know what? I don't want any beef with Belichick. I don't want Belichick Smart. to think I was calling him out. And, and I was like, I get it. I totally get it. He's like, the last thing you need is to be on Belichick's bad side. But it's stuff like that. It's nothing like I trashed this player or, or I said something that I'm going to get fired for, you know? Yeah, there, there's always like the, uh, I don't want to start shit with, but well, yes. <laughs> whenever we were whenever we were early, we were recording out of the basement, we were releasing it later, we had a couple people on who got pretty loose, you know, and they were like, uh, and I actually text, I was like, hey, you know, this could be a, like, I like, they're like, yeah, could you please? I don't even remember like saying that. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's like a couple of times where that happens. That's why I like live, by the way, because I feel like there's no, I don't want to no feel pretense. bad. There's, I don't want to feel know bad. If you say it, you're saying it. Yeah, I don't want to feel bad for it happening, but you said, like, it's like, you know, that that whole thing, but the pre record. I'll go on, I'll go on here further. Like, also with this flying coach, we get really into football stuff, and I'm not as small, as much as involved with like the drama and like the headlines. Like, we don't, necessarily like we had LaFleur on we talked about Rogers for about 40 minutes but at no point was I like so coach Matt LaFleur like the questions he would get on the press availability with the local Green Bay media I didn't go there but if he wanted to go there himself that's fine but I wasn't like what is your take on Rogers latest statements you know it was more hey did you guys talk about the field goal did you talk about the field goal with LaFleur did a little bit, yeah. That's tough, though. Hey, that's one of those things. I had to ask Lane Johnson. I had to ask Lane Johnson just yesterday about Jalen Hurts and the Eagles situation. It's like, how Week do Week 17, I- and they and it's like a dance, right? It's like, uh, <laughs> Got to talk about it. Got to talk about it. How do I get this all good, Connor? Hey, Pete, massive fan. Great to see you. Tan looks fantastic. Uh, I will Thank say you. before my question, there are going to be a lot of people pissed that you put Phil Rivers with Breeze Brady and Rogers before <laughs> Big Ben. Uh, but, uh, you know, it'd be great to have you on every day, but when are you going to, uh, you know, send McVay our way Whoa! on the show? Whoa! One, one wow. time, maybe, yeah. you know? This guy. We could start that. We would have, he's not on Twitter. He's not on Instagram. He lives in his own little football bubble. And you think that he's at this Hollywood lifestyle where it's like him in the Hollywood Hills, like having lunch with Ryan Reynolds and Scarlett Johansson. Dog. It's yeah. not. <laughs> this guy is all about ball. So I'd have to get him out of his huddle. But you know what? We've got two more episodes left. For this whole run one of them i will say you will appreciate a lot My the guests that we are looking to book and i'm talking about you specifically connor i think you will appreciate oh. it a lot. Oh, oh shit, shit. oh shit. oh shit. what you know because we saw that pre-super bowl conversation between sean and bill every week you change your game sir it is fucking unbelievable to watch. <laughs> that's basically what sean said to bill sir it is Watching you is unbelievable, sir. That is I'm not. It, I'm not as much saying that guy. I'm talking about you were talking about a quarterback who might have been left on the table when we were discussing the greats of this generation. You just mentioned his name in front of Rivers, Benny. and it might be that guy who you guys have. Tomlin, Tomlin's hey, on. Let's hey, go. Here we go. <laughs> you guys. Hey. How'd you get not Tomlin? Yet. Not yet. We're working on it. We're we're chipping away. We're hoping. He never so does anything. Ever. He went and did he uh, not do media. He's the number one guest on our list. We we like we would love to have Belichick, but the thing with Be- Me too, Belichick, I'm not sure what we're getting content wise. I'm not familiar with him. I've got a little cl- better relationship with Tomlin, and Sean is tight with Tomlin. So if we can use this to convince Tomlin to do it, that would really help. So they ain't gonna listen to shit I say, but hey, <laughs> hey, I would love to hear Mike Tomlin speak open because I've heard hilarious things. And he's every amazing. time I he's every, amazing. Every time I've been around him, hilarious human. I've just like, heard stories, and he like is the best dude. Yeah, of, of all time. We got to wrap up here. We got a hard out. Shregs, we appreciate you. Enjoy vacation, man. Thank you. Keep it up, guys. Thanks for having me on. Ladies and gentlemen, Peter Shregs. Hey! Uh, we're back in six minutes on the other side of the break to talk about everything that he just said, mm-hmm. everything else going on in the world, and your phone calls. one 833 4 McAfee. We'll see you in six. Cheers. Yeah, dude. That's, what am I supposed to do here?
fuck, dude. Like, what are we supposed to do? People should not tell me this stuff. They know they should. Can't do it. Our sources have told us that Mac Jones ain't going three. What? Oh my God. I mean, it seems like Trey Lance is going at three. Draft odds changed dramatically. Odds have just changed, by the way. Before you went on air, Mac Jones was minus 270, I believe, and Trey Lance was plus 280. Uh, and now Trey Lance is plus 105. Uh, <laughs> the Mac Jones not going to the Niners news was just the tip of the iceberg with me and sources. Insert Jay Glazer at the first commercial break. Yeah, my Aaron, he, uh, he asked to get out. Aaron That's a fucking big thing. How the hell am I supposed to hold that in? From what we've been potentially told, there's some things cooking. I've heard something's <laughs> yeah. cooking right now, by the way. I don't know what's real and what isn't real. <laughs> Come on, Hold something big. Yeah. Huge, huge. 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 We got two hours and 19 minutes on it. Why? But three hours later, guess what happened? Aaron Rodgers is on the move. Hashtag J new, dude. Breaking news, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, Aaron yeah. Rodgers is so disgruntled with Green Bay Packers that he has told some within the organization that he does not want to return to the team. Ty. Ty. I mean, you alienate the fucking guy. No wonder he doesn't want to fucking come back. He's done. It's over. That's the end of it. Negligence from the top of the organization to the bottom. You had to do something. You had to do something. And they didn't do a goddamn thing. So I don't blame him. I didn't know that's how that whole thing was going to come out. Me neither. I didn't know that was going to be it. That's the Packers definitely releasing that information. A thousand percent. Oh, yeah. And that's Aaron telling them, by the way, I ain't fucking coming back. Aaron probably was like, I ain't fucking coming back. So Green Bay probably trying to save tail here. Say, Shefter, we need you to write an article about how things are going right now yeah. from our point of view. He has all the cards. Yeah, exactly. He has all the cards. Imagine if he goes to a place where he has just as many weapons as everybody else and has a full organization that's like all the way behind him. They'll fucking win. This is fucking insane. And then finally, it becomes time for our biggest event of the year. Hello and welcome to the second annual NFL Draft Spec. Spectacular! Yeah! Wow. Trey Lance, let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Woo! Ladies and gentlemen, I beat you, dude. You owe $20,000. Thanks for playing, AJ. Leo Jones is a Colt by the end of tonight. You can't control him, Dan. Dan's lying, Dan. Stop being a hater, Dan. I mean, obviously, it's great competition. You know, not just Pat, though. You know, Kelsey, Tyreek Hill. You know, Clyde, you know, all these guys. There's always things that are taken out of context, but there's always things that maybe aren't. You never know. JJ, you're the best. Hey, Mad Mel, dude. Yeah. Great to be back, AJ. Great to see you. Good to see you. you're still a sack of shit like you were last year. Don't L you listen, have to wear listen, a jock listen, strap Chris. Hey, I've never worn a jock strap, but I've sniffed plenty of them, so I know what's going on with these <laughs> players, okay? I don't give a fuck. Who cares? I just want to eat. Zito, did we get that food order? <laughs> Boots on the ground in Cleveland, Jason Glazer. Jason Glazer, your thoughts? Well, obviously, I knew this was going to happen. The only person who probably didn't know the cop was going to go here. No, you have in the studio. That's what live you go. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, no, wait a minute. Didn't. No, no, you, you didn't. didn't. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. And then let me talk, let me talk, mm -hmm. let me talk. And then, no, 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 you didn't. Yeah, no, you didn't. Yeah. What if this works? Yes, I did. No, you didn't. Yes, I no, did. Yes, I did. I had this. No, you didn't. I had this. I had this. I had this. Trust me. Can I talk for Christ's sake? Okay, fine. Fine, yeah. There you go. Thank you. As we're live on the air, I look down at my phone and says, hey, a dollar deal with SeatGeek just happened. SeatGeek is back. We have some breaking news that literally just got texted to my phone. And I think it's because nobody had a clue that 131,000 fucking people were potentially going to be watching this far into the thing. SeatGeek's back! Yeah, yeah. And if you use hashtag Draft Spectacular and hashtag SeatGeek is back, they will pick a winner and we'll get you two season tickets to your favorite NFL team. Holy, Holy shit. shit! I cannot believe the Draft Spectacular was as big as it was. There's 100,000. What are you doing, people? Let's go! Yeah! 100,000 people! We are so, so thankful. It fucking caused a firestorm with the amount of people that watched them. Articles written by these marketing nerds and their little community tech people saying, hey, this is the dawn of a new day. This is why CPE survived. You watch the thing, you're like, man, it's pretty big. You probably get in on this. We appreciate that, dude. Oh, you're going to get articles written about you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs>
The Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we can talk about. Yes, sir. Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope, nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Welcome back to that show. Hour two on this beautiful Wednesday, July 7th, 2021. We'll begin right now. It has just been announced that WWE SmackDown will be at or appear. I don't think I understand what's going on either, but I did see the announcement on SmackDown. The greatest sports entertainment show going Two hours of heat every Friday night, 8 o'clock Eastern on Fox. Not Fox Sports, not Fox News, uh-uh. not Fox Universal, oh. not Fox blah, blah, blah. We're talking bunny ears, satellite, not needing to have Fox. Yeah. Hell yeah. Come on. Going to Rolling Loud. Wow. Yeah, Rolling Loud down there in South Florida. Hey, I think Ricky Ross is performing Ooh, down really? there. Yeah, and from what I just read, I believe there will be uh will be in uh SmackDown will be in Cleveland and SmackDown will be at Rolling Loud. I don't know how that'll pan what? out. Can't wait to see how it plays. Hmm. But I am pumped up. Ariel Helwani, WWE and Rolling Loud announced a new partnership that'll bring SmackDown to Rolling Loud, Miami, <laughs> 2021 on July 23rd. First ever collab between WWE and major music festival. WWE superstars will compete in matches live from the same stage as Travis Scott, El Posty Malone, Ooh. and ASAP Rocky and others. Two and between collabo respect Ariel not a bad tweet there out of the man who has seven homes and gave mm-hmm. us a great interview yesterday mm-hmm. for parts moments were great right. everything else was terrible I don't know what that means I have no idea what that means, means but I'm pumped about it you're collabing with Posty probably <laughs> Am I? he'll probably call a match with you we toss in the mic Posty big WWE fan I think he has performed at a pay-per-view or two I think he has done uh, beer t- I think he's stone cold it a few times oh, I'm, I'm sure he I has. would assume Post Malone knows the biz ASAP Rock I think Ricky Ross though. if Huge. Rick Ross is uh, we need to we need listen Post hey great songs love you great songs it's a recipe. It's a Post Malone recipe. You change the game forever with your songs. Same song. Every song. Sounds good. Tastes good every Love time. Love it every time. <laughs> uh-huh. Love it every single time. Yep. Okay. ASAP Rocky, Travis Scott. Hey, huge. I understand. It's a big deal. Is Rick Ross performing at fucking Roll and Roll? He is there on Friday. Boom. Well, well, Ricky well. Ricky Ross Boom. smack that. See you there, Rick. Are you kidding me? I assume Ric Flair is going to be down there, right? Because I think Rick Ross oh, and Ric yeah. Flair potential have had previous. I mean, this could get awesome. Could you this, imagine if Post Malone's in the ring and he's like about to get pinned and all of a sudden Jerry Jones' music starts playing? Oh, he starts, he's, they're, they're, they're raining tickets. Yeah. They're raining yeah. tickets like Seat Geek. Throwing them he's out. got that chain on. Uh-huh. Rolling live. He's got, hey, he's rolling live. Yeah. He's, got a, he's got a gas. Mask. Jerry's got a Shakari Richardson gas yes, mask. Yes, golf cart. Boom. Driving him in as he's Boom. pulling everything out. Oh. What if it's against Boogs, though? Oh. Oh. Jerry oh. Jones super kick on Boogs. Now, no. Oh, oh, man. Boogs body slams him through the ring immediately if Jerry comes so let's out. So ju- let's just do some, let's just do a couple quick thoughts. Because <laughs> once again, this is much like at the Colts. Anything that was happening with the Colts or the football team, I'm very much left out of that conversation. <laughs> okay, mm-hmm. so they're not, people would never come to me for any breaking news with the Colts because they understood, like, no, ain't nobody telling me any fucking breaking news. Okay, that's not how it's going to go. With this WWE rolling, I know nothing about this. Literally, as the announcement popped up, I heard it. I just, I read about it quickly. It was during the break there. I heard Ricky Ross's performance. I've heard of Rolling Loud before. I believe I was supposed to go to one. I, I don't think I did, but the, maybe I did. I'm on 100%. Here's the. Oh, Friday, dang, Friday is dang, packed. Got Little baby. Yeah. Bag, Little yeah. baby, oh. is the baby down here too? What? Twenty-one Savage. The baby is not here. 
ski mask. The He's whizzed down there. Would like to smoke the baby some. Baby is there on Sunday with Posty. Oh, oh, so oh, the ba- oh, so Sunday. There it is. Hey, the baby's got that song right oh, now. That Ricky goes. Ross. Oh, Ricky Ross. Gucci Mane. Oh, we skip right over Tiger. He's not gonna like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Oh, T. Teddy <laughs> Payne's gonna be here. Uh, Teddy Payne's. Is that on Friday or on Sunday? Tay money. So. Uh, Eddie Money is. <laughs> oh, I will. I got two <laughs> tickets to paradise Sunday. Rolling loud. Can't wait. No. Um, Pack your bags. So I'm pumped for SmackDown to do this. I don't know what they. I would just quick thoughts here off the top of my head after hearing about it. Biggie's entrance music is Wale's song, so you would assume that that just is a very you have Wale. Yeah, naturally. Perf- probably perform Bring him out for at a music festival. And then the only other natural music, you know, thing to do out there. Mm. You get boogs on an electric guitar up there. Throw them a couple, you know, squash matches out there. Throw them a couple locals, you know what I mean? Just trying to get their, get whatever. Turn their strength. Make it happen. Oh, my God. Have Big E just throw somebody around 55 times, bench uh-huh. press him a few times, mm-hmm. then let Wale hit that thing on the way out. Then let Boogs come out and shred uh, the Shinsuke thing. Have Shinsuke come in there and just absolutely dominate somebody. Yeah. And then have that guitar give it. I mean, that is... I don't know if that's going to happen. I don't know how much freedom we have. I don't know what's going on. Either way. Let's Am I get... down there? Have to be. I, I don't even know. So. No, because oh, it's in two spots? It's in two spots. It's in Cleveland oh, as well. Shit. Oh, shit. Will they do the pay-per-view? Or well, it's like definitely uh, want to be in Miami over Cleveland. <laughs> <laughs> not wrong. <laughs> Rolling loud, though. I, I don't know how many. I wonder how many matches it'll be. What do you be. think? You're going to throw it on by I don't know. That's what I'm wondering. I have well, no let's idea. Let's go live to Miami. Oh, let's pop down to South Florida with Rolling Lod. <laughs> We're back here live at Rolling <laughs> Lod and Smack <laughs> Dodd. <laughs> Anyways, awesome. Congrats, WWE. Yeah, That's yeah. cool. Damn right. I'm excited to see what content comes out of this, what the moments are, everything like that. Uh, let's talk about the first hour of the show. Uh, joining us in this second hour and third hour, it's potentially coming home for these guys. Uh, Hammered down, boys, 4 p.m. East, or, uh, 4 p.m. or after this show, <laughs> 10 minutes after this show yep. ends, every single day at youtube.com forward slash Hammered Down, Tone Diggs, and at Bubba Gumpino. We'll start with the COVID cowboy, the Italian stallion. We'll start with the guy who had to rent somebody else's jersey and somebody that, you know, is a known better against the Italian it's soccer nice. team, literally yep. in yeah. the first game of this Euros. But no now you have literally blood and heart and passion and loyalty back to the Italian soccer team. Big win yesterday. You guys are in the finals of the fucking Euros. Here we go, Tony. Hey, this is the Europe's. This is the Europe's. Coming to Rome. That was a uh, that was a sweat. That's what we like to call a sweat yesterday. Yeah, you guys try to give that thing away. The Italians try to give it away. Which is not normal. The back line is normally like steel curtain. That's why I, I, that's why I combine so nicely. Yeah, yeah. Man. And that's why all you Italians live, by the way, in Pittsburgh. And uh-huh. the uh, the hammered down boost of of Italy and England to make it to the finals is not, halfway there. It is if this thing doesn't pay out, not my fault. To the thousands and thousands of people that Max bet that thing at fifty. No. What? I got a one fifty. I, nobody told me that. What? It was max bet 150? Are you shitting me? Hell so, you yeah. know, how I know it's normally 50, and I was like, well, let's fuck around and see if we could do 100 and yeah. let it go through. And then I thought it was 150. I don't know if that was for everybody. But. God damn no, it. I also snagged that. <laughs> did you oh, really? I didn't carry. Oh, I'm telling beat. everybody, guys. I did. I was very surprised. No, but we should be telling people. It's already too late. Yeah. We should have been telling people oh. earlier. Oh, yeah. Okay, just real quick. Love <laughs> what you did. Yeah. Okay, that's <laughs> first ever. <laughs> when Fandle is our biggest. Fandle's our biggest partner. Okay, they are obviously our exclusive sports book, but do not get it fucking twisted. We are trying to yeah. beat yeah. them. Oh, yeah. We are a natural gambling crew over here. Yeah. When you beat your bookie back in the day, it was a good day. 
everybody says, I didn't get to do it, obviously, because I was gaming. I didn't really get, I only got like a year of the bookie life and the potential offshore hellacious, uh, like that. You're trying to beat the, we're still doing that with Fandle, literally every single day, trying to beat them. They're, sometimes I wake up in the morning, and I bet on uh, Russian mm -hmm. ping pong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's just live, I just bet on, it's like a scratch off. I'm trying to win that, every single one. Right. I did not know there was a potential glitch in the max bet on a boost, because the max bet for every boost we have ever had has been $50. Mm -hmm. They have lost Millions and millions. millions off of one boost of ours over there, family. and it that felt good. By the way, that felt, that felt very, very good for that. I did not know you could sneak in 150 on this. One. My guess is your boosts move the needle. So 50 for your boost equals 150 for a hammer down boost. Oh, wow. Same it, amount of my liability. Are, are they kind of? No, I don't think so. I think we got a lot of people into this one, by the way. I, I, Good. I, I early oh, yeah. reports say that there is a potential massive losses over there. Let's and I go. guess I guess this is potentially why if this thing hits. So let's, this leads right into Gumpy. Hey, Gumpy, three o'clock semifinals. <laughs> You've been in semifinals matches before. We've been here before. You've yeah. done that whole thing before. To get to the finals, then to maybe get it to come home instead of Rome, how you feeling on day of? And if you are the reason, and that queen in the country of hers is the reason that this $150 boost that was on FanDuel Sportsbook that I only got $50 out of because I don't read good enough, obviously, or mm -hmm. close enough to the entire goddamn mm -hmm. thing. What? What happens today if England loses? Is there any chance that England loses, or is this a lock, this boost here, now that Italy got in? This is the biggest England match of my lifetime. Oh, wow. My God. You, go, you, go back, huh? you go back to 2018 <laughs> okay. when they lost in the semifinals to Croatia. Okay. You had France as a powerhouse waiting on the other side. That England team wasn't as good as this England team. This team? This is it. If not now, then when? It has to come home what's the shirt that's liverpool lads you'll never walk alone oh, but that's not england uh, no. unfortunately my uh england tarps wintergreen are in a uh storage locker that i do not have a key for oh uh, okay <laughs> yeah. Yeah. i don't even think you're like yeah. Yeah. i don't even think you can get uh, back i'm yeah. just gonna keep paying that storage yeah. locker tab yeah. and Probably i can smart. live with that and maybe maybe everything will get opened up in time for you to get that without having to go on uh, canadian storage wars yeah. oh. could you imagine a yeah there'll be a yeah, yep guy oh, yeah. on that guy give me the jam on jersey, jersey. Yeah. <laughs> this team though will win who are we playing denmark Oh, they stink. Well, dude. they have Hey, been, the Danes have been so they are bad. They're playing for Ericsson. Ericsson. Oh, Leaf. God, Christian he, Glass. His yeah. youngest guy. Uh -huh. Yeah. Red. Yeah. yeah. I heard about this. There's a fucking. These are Vikings, right? The Danes. Oh, yeah. Like actual Vikings. Yeah, they got the Jews. So, how'd that Dane work? Land. Hold on. So, let's go back. Okay. Mm -hmm. I actually know, a lot, know a lot about this. Okay. Okay. Good news. Because I'm happy to hear this. Because when I think about like human species. <laughs> Of course. <laughs> All, right. all right, so you go back, obviously, Adam and Eve. Uh-huh. Sure. Oh, wait. Oh, wow. Okay. We're going all the way back. Yeah, yeah, obviously. Okay. Yeah, obviously, it was, <laughs> obviously, it was Adam and Eve. Okay. Yeah. Okay, obviously, it was. Mm -hmm. All right, I don't know about the entanglement that happened, you know, whatever happened mm -hmm. with Adam and Eve. And our next guest will be able to tell us more. He's got massive cross tattooed right across. Oh, really? Yeah, 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 so great. Our, oh, next, our next guest will be able to tell us a little bit more. He's on the air, so he'll be able to hear this and potentially respond afterwards. But how did the Viking humans happen? Did they just, they're just in the coldest fucking weather, so their bodies all got bigger, their craniums got larger, their their bodies got bigger. They just became, because like Vikings are just like, they're terrible people, right? So everybody, they well, they a lot of they're kind of savage. Adam and Eve, the Vikings came from uh, Thor and Odin. They came from Fighting gods. Greece? Norse. Norse gods. Those are the yeah. Nordic gods. Oh, yeah. Scandinavia. And the Danes, at that time, there was Wessex, there was Scotland, there was the Danes, and the Danes would come and try to pillage and everything in Wessex and Scotland. Mm -hmm. um, and if they died with their weapon in their hand, they would go to Valhalla. Valhalla is? Basically... Warrior heaven. Warrior heaven. Yeah, it's where they celebrate in the halls of Valhalla. So, so you guys, <laughs> you guys have no, that was not an answer at all. You just wanted to unload all the information you what had. Was, what is, what do you why mean? are they bigger? <laughs> <laughs> why are they bigger? <laughs> than, why oh, are that's they just years and years yeah. across. Yeah. The yeah. Uh, there's a TV show that uh, essentially this is the story that they tell. This might be bullshit. Uh, joining, us now, yeah. joining us now, one of the biggest Viking show fans of all time. Go. Was actually at one point growing his... Go team, oh, okay. trying to get on the show. 
tweeting pictures of his facial hair to the producer of the show, Vikings, to get on the show. Also, obviously, has a massive cross on his body. Can talk to us about Adam and Eve, can talk to us about Vikings, and can talk to us about Super Bowl championships. Ladies and gentlemen, coach of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, AQ Shay. You remember that stupid run you had with that Viking hey, show? Why? Why didn't that ever happen? <laughs> I feel like I. Should, I feel like I. When that goatee was down to about here, it was unbelievable. I was. I was a walking billboard for that show. I don't understand it. He now listen, AQ. You do have a lot of tone digs in you when AQ is watching something he potentially chameleons into the oh, show. Good for instance, the reason why Tone Diggs is wearing a cowboy hat right now is because he watched that Kevin Costner mon- that thing. Mm-hmm. He became a country godfather overnight yeah. while watching that show. Then goes into his COVID cave. Beats COVID, becomes the best gambler he's ever been. Thank now you. he's the COVID cowboy. Going to be tough when he gets into a new series, though. We oh, have yeah. all had to kind of figure out how he's going to do this, but that's what AQ did with the Vikings. Yellowstone's coming back soon. It was just reinvigorated. What if you hate it, though? What if you hate it? What if you hate it? What happened to Vikings? They canceled that show. Were you the only one that watched that show? I think it's still on. on- <laughs> no. it's, one of, it's one of the things where it went off the network and, like, Hulu or somebody picked it up. It's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to climb back up, I okay. promise. Yeah. I mean, it's the best show ever made. Yep. See, that's well. literally how he was acting. <laughs> I'm serious. He was acting like that for like a year or two. It was a long time you were in that show. I was all in on that. This guy Ragnar was an absolute savage. <laughs> all right. Have you taken any of Ragnar into your coaching style? What are you? Are you like a uh, Bear Bryant? Are you a? Uh, are you with the whistle and the clipboard? Are you yelling at the boys that you used to literally stand right next to in the locker room? What type of coach are you, Coach Shipley? I don't know. We're still waiting to find that out. I mean, I haven't really had much on-field interaction except for rookies because our vets just said, hey, we're not coming to OTAs this year, boys. <laughs> so did a lot of did a lot of Zoom calls throughout the offseason and worked with the rookies. And I was just – at that point, you can't bury them. At that point, if you try and bury the, the rookies, then there, there might not be any coming back from that. Oh, so you are going to bury people. Wow. Yeah, that's, you are, aren't you? You're going to be a, hey, you're going to be an asshole. You, he's going to be a funny ass. That's what you're going to do. You're going to be funny asshole. Is that what the, your coaching style is going to be, you think? <laughs> I mean, I feel like that's my personality. I, I you just got to be yourself. One line jab. Got to be yourself. Jab, real sarcastic. Always take it over the edge. My wife says I'm an I'm a complete asshole all the time. Yeah. She, yeah I think so. You know, I come he home and I, I, I talk to her like I talk to people in the locker room. And she's like, I, why don't you get in more fights? And I'm like, I mean, I feel like you take care of it all whenever I come home. I don't understand it. Yeah. The interesting thing about it is I think that'll work, too, especially at offensive line. Because anytime you're a coach and you're fake, everybody sees right through it. We've all seen so many coaches. Were you ever scared that your friends that were teammates for so long – are immediately going to think you're a fugaze and a fraud now that you're a coach? you think there's going to be a little bit of a – how is the relationship with former friends, Super Bowl champion friends, that are now players that you are coaching? Is there any difference? I, that that three-day period during minicamp, I got more comments about being a fucking double agent. And, <laughs> uh, you know, one of, those, one of those things. They're like, oh, got it. Now you're a coach. Got it. Now, got it. Now you're. Hey, watch what you say to AQ. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like you got the so, feds around. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, that's a, that. That's probably the tough thing. You know, all the coaches are probably trying to tell me to like stop being friends with these guys, but it's so hard. I mean, you've been friends with these guys for ten years. I think if I stopped being friends with them, they'd look at me as more of a fraud than anything, right? Like. Can't just be like, hey, listen, I'm a coach now. Fuck you. Can't be friends with you. Well, it's going to affect the relationship because those guys are joking, saying, hey, we got to watch what we say to AQ, but it's real. There are some things that, like, you should not know for your own good, by the way, for a meeting that you potentially have to go into or a position you have to go into. It's a fine balance. I think you'll do a great job at it. You're liked by everybody. Should be easy. Let's talk about that team that you have, though. Hey, Tom Brady, you've played how many – First overall picks did you uh, have in between your, um, you know, your, uh, your... Uh... Taint? Is that the word you're looking for? Taint? Cheeks. Yeah, that's it. Yep. Yep. Uh, five, I think. I think it was five. Center in the NFL for five different number one overall picks. Okay. Philadelphia, Baltimore, uh, Pittsburgh, Indianapolis, Arizona, Tampa. Did I miss anywhere? No, I think he had them all. Okay, so this way he's played everywhere. He's been a center everywhere. What what was it about Tom? Was there anything about Tom 
when he showed up and you got because you showed up late, I think preseason, maybe training camp and a training camp. I forget when you signed with him. What was it like watching him? Because we're getting a chance to kind of know him now, watching either the match or his interview with Howard Stern or social media. Seems like he's somehow still a relatable fucking human. Is that real? And how has he been able to do it? Is he just a cool guy or what is it you think? Yeah, he's a great dude. I mean, he's, he's just, at the end of the day, you know, he's he, he's all about football. There's no question about that. Like, he's he's all in on football. He wants to win. He's the probably, I mean, it's not even probably. I mean, he's by far the, the fiercest competitor that I've ever been around. Oh, really? um, Yeah, it's not even a question. I mean, he, he wants to win at all costs all the time, right? So, yeah. Um, from that side of things, you see it, but yeah, he's very relatable. He's, he's one of the guys on the field. He, he jokes around, he messes with guys. He's, he's constantly trying to do like little pranks or like mess with guys on the field. But when it's time to work and it's time to be business, he's all business. As, as you see, I mean, you, you hear his interviews. I mean, he wants to win. There's no question about it. And he, it's, it's funny, man. There's so many different things. Like I keep going back to the last dance thing, but he's constantly trying to find a chip, somebody that's chirping, somebody that's saying something that can kind of drive him a little bit more. Isn't it that last dance watching Michael Jordan? And I think to make it to the NFL, you have to be incredibly competitive, by the way. You are an incredibly competitive person. I, in my own ways, are a a very competitive person. I mean, I've had the ability, I think, to kind of turn it on and turn it off because when you're a punter, you know, you're probably, there's not a lot. I mean, what are we doing? You know what I mean? Am I going to go outlift somebody in that? Probably not. And so I, I have to learn how to dial back and be like, okay, if I lose here, this is all right. But there's a lot of people in the NFL that if they lose, they're not, they're, there is misery that immediately follows losing. Like it is a life or death situation for a lot of competitive people. When you say Tom is the fiercest competitor you've ever seen, it may Makes sense because of how great he has always been and how great his team has always been because when you see that right it automatically makes you follow suit that's i think the culture thing that everybody's looking for you've been on all these teams we just talked about that you've been on some in some places i assume there hasn't been a great culture you've been on teams that have had an incredible culture that culture thing do you think it is just one guy that can flip an entire place like that or do you think it's an entire group what do you think it is that makes the culture in in locker rooms you know, I think it's it's the different group of guys being able to all get get along well. I think that's that's key. I mean, that 2012 team we had in Indianapolis, we weren't the most talented team by any means. We ended up winning 11 games and going to the playoffs off sheer the fact that the guys wanted to do it for the guy next to him, right? Like everybody liked each other in that group. You're playing cornhole. You're hanging out inside, outside. You're going out on Sundays after the game. Like it's it is what it was, right? Like it was a it was a guy a group of guys that all kind of bonded together from a bunch of different areas of the world for whatever reason right it's and, cool and it all way. just it's it was cool. cool and it all just clipped right yeah. and you know there, there's those types of cultures but then there's also those cultures again where you see a team that the year before tom got there for the most part 85 to 90 percent of that team's the exact same team from a year before and now you get a, new, a guy in there that's a winner that that brings guys along with them that that you know maybe a guy that would have i don't know gone in five minutes early is now staying five minutes later I don't, I don't know what that is but there 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 is that culture where it's one guy that brings everybody else a style or play just a, just a tad higher and and that might be the, the the difference in what it is i think we've been very lucky by the way because i mean we're two white trash dudes from pittsburgh right i mean that's what we are but we're we're from pittsburgh and we're big football fans like massive you have to be an nfl fan basically if you're in pittsburgh you're a big football fan and you know you're a journeyman you've had a journeyman career you got drafted but you had a journeyman career i was very lucky to ride the coattails of a couple great things and then whenever you get a chance to like sit back and look at it from like a hey i'm gonna go executive here a high level Ooh. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's talk about this at a high level is what these uh executive people say it just means zoomed out on the goddamn picture okay yeah. that's what they're talking about it but whenever you get a chance to look at it from the high level yeah yeah i think this way actually this would be zoomed in yeah you got yeah it. whatever you yeah. Yeah. yeah outside the end. yeah what i'm saying don't fucking ruin the metaphor right there please okay <laughs> God. we don't need we don't need the goddamn all right we don't need that happening but when you get a chance to kind of look back and i've got a chance to do a lot of this now that um you know, retired doing this, and you're now coaching, so you're probably going to be trying to figure out how to reach somebody, or maybe if somebody's not in, how you get in there. The thought of why a team works is so fascinating. It makes no sense, but whenever you th- you have a Tom Brady come into your locker room, I saw it with Peyton when I got drafted in there. Andrew was the type of guy. Guys, like you said, the five minutes later, five minutes earlier thing, like, 
there's no rehab sessions getting missed. So guys are getting hopefully healthier quicker. There's no cold tubs. There's no extra film study. There's no extra routes. There's like all those things. If you can get a Tom Brady into your building, you get a Tom Brady in your building because everybody else is going to say, well, it's not going to be my fault. Like we got a guy that's going to take us. It can't be my fault because if it is, I'm going to be run the fuck out of here. So it's just, I think it's a, you got to get, that's why I thought the Tom Brady market should have been much bigger. Personally, I thought it should have been much, much bigger. And I have a lot of questions on a lot of people that weren't interested in getting Tom Brady in their building, actually. It's so funny you bring that up, right? Because, you know, especially last year during the COVID thing, we're getting COVID swabbed all the time, right? This guy. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can fucking hear yeah. yeah. you. You look like a fool. Just but, a new you know, we can I mean, yeah, go, go, go. It's back, please. So you're getting COVID. Hey, we're back. Are we back? Yeah, all we're right. back. Yeah. Okay, we're live. All right, we're live. All right, good, good. So with the COVID thing, the, the whole thing was, I didn't want to be the guy that gave Tom Brady COVID. It wasn't it wasn't about anybody else except for that guy, right? Like so from a from an accountability standpoint, you 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 help you hold that guy to a higher standard and he and rightfully so, right? I mean, he's the guy that literally took us to that next level. So, there were so many people that didn't want to let Tom down on whether it was a COVID test, whether it was a was it whether it was a route, whether it was whatever it may be from a football standpoint, operational standpoint, you don't want to let him down. And, how, and and by not letting him down, you don't want to let the team down. How many years did you play in the league? Twelve. How come all of us older guys have the same exact mindset than everybody else? All of us, and I only played eight years, so it's not old guys, but I feel like I've been through some wins and some losses, and eight years is nowhere near as long as a lot of people, including the man I'm talking to right now. But, man, you get me a vet who's proven, I'll fucking do whatever. You know what I mean? Like, I will do it. I don't understand the mindset of everybody. Like, I guess because contracts and wages, but Greenberg down there in Tampa, he's maybe changing the game completely forever on salary caps on the way that whole thing can be worked. I mean, that veteran team you guys have down there that you're now a coach of and, and were a part of last year and everything like that. By the way, big games out of AQ, by the way. Yeah. Hey, hey, big Come play. On. Big play. A lot of people thought maybe the round mound white guy from Moon Township couldn't play anymore. More. Didn't have a training camp, didn't have any Zoom calls. Got dropped into a, an offense he's been in for 10 years. But then everybody says, is this guy too old, huh? COVID going to get him? No, he's oh. got a kid now. This guy stink. No, no, no. <laughs> Came out and played great football, got unlucky. But now that you're still there and still a part of that team, AQ, you have so many vets that are proven. You guys should go undefeated. What do you if the, if you don't go undefeated, it's potentially your fucking yeah. game. Wow. Your whistle, your little clipboard, it's potentially your fault. You ever think about that? Are you watching film right now? What are we even doing? Yeah, I mean, I think that's, I think that's where those, uh, that little office over there. I think that's the, where the blame will be pointed. It'll be pointed yeah. right at me, and I'm okay with that. No, okay. no, 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 no. We, no, no. we are stern, but fair. fair. That's right. Fair. Shout out Gary but Goldman. Fair. Yeah, we're All very right. fair. Yeah, yeah. If it's your we got, we, we got a group. We get we some guy reaching on the offensive line. Yeah, we get some young guy reaching. Oh my God! What is this guy doing? That's what we're gonna do. But Cir circle him, circle him on the on the, on the uh, what is it, Dumbo Trump? Guess yeah. who's his coach? <laughs> if I did that, but no, like legit, the expectations anytime you have Tom Brady are going to be very high. But I sure. think now with that team, that roster, you're talking about like maybe one of the greatest teams of all fucking time assembled. Like you got to be pretty excited to not fuck that up, huh? Yeah, I mean it's a great team. I mean this is a. Uh... I mean, it's it's without question on paper the most talented team you're you're ever around. But as you know, I mean, it's I've been on some other really talented teams. I was on that team that they called the Dream Team, quote unquote, back in 2010, I think it was in Philadelphia. They went and got Namdi Asma. They got oh, young, like, Colin Jenkins. They got all those guys. And I think we went eight and eight or something like that, or maybe missed the playoffs. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't a very good record team. So again, at the end of the day, and I'm sure that, that that's the first thing BA is going to preach is listen. This is this year's team. Last year's team got all those banners up there, right? You know, but this is this year's team, and we got to go to work, and we got to do it because at the end of the day, I mean, you played, and you, you've been around all the cliche things that coaches try and do. The to, real, to, though. To, to drive you and do this, but at the end of the day, when you sit in a group and your head coach stands up there and he puts up all those percentages, whatever, 75 to 80 percent of all NFL games come down to one score, it's, it's fucking true, and the difference is, is – three points or seven points every week no matter if you're the best team or the worst team it is what it is right so you got you got to find ways to 
to get those to get those W's every week. And whether or not you're the greatest team on paper, you still got to show up every Sunday and prove it. Describing each coach's method of describing all those different cliches is awesome. You know what I mean? Like all those, like the care, or the play don't care who makes it. You know, like that's one that goes hand in hand with like the hey, the whole game is basically just jabbing. There's only going to be one or two plays in this entire game that are just going to boom, that are going to land. Who's going to make that play when that play is available? That is the NFL, basically. Even that team, were you there for the 2-14? and 14? No, you weren't. No, obviously it was a year before you got there. We were in like nine games. I think we eight, – eight or nine games, it was only uh, six points or less or seven points or less or something Jeez. like that. And we were not a good team, but we could have won – literally four to five more games, maybe even snuck into a playoff. I mean, that is what the NFL is. It's tough every single day. Uh, AQ, we appreciate you joining us at Boston. Connor has a question for you. Yeah, Coach, uh, with being on a team that's bringing back all 22 guys, what do you tell the rookies? Like, do you realistically tell them, hey, there's probably only 15 to 20 spots? Or, you know, what's that message to them? This is the one thing that I said, to, you know, because being a former player now, some of the coaches are coming to me and just asking some advice on some certain things. And, I, and, you know, I've been in rooms where it's constantly, like, pointing out the numbers game. I think all that does is ruin guys. It ruins confidence. I think it ruins – Culture. You know, yeah, I think it just ruins things. And then you're sitting there. And now, now, mind you, it's hard enough as it is to make an NFL roster, whether you're on the – you know, a returning starter, whether you're a returning player, whether you're a rookie, it's hard enough to make an NFL roster. And every single person knows that. Yeah. This guy, you know what I mean? <laughs> it, it is what it is. And every single person knows that it's, it's, it's a, it's, it's the only job in the world where you hire 90 to fire 40. That's, that's, that's the reality. Every everybody, year. every year, yeah. every year. Right. And so to sit there and point out the numbers, I think everybody's well aware of that. So all you do is, Tell these guys to, to put their best shit on tape day in and day out for the 30 days or whatever it is in training camp. When it's time to go out in a preseason game and shine, go do it. Make a flash. Make a statement. And, you know, if you're a rookie draft pick or if you're a rookie guy that's to be counted on, there's no pressure. You just got to go out and get better and learn from the guys ahead of you and go out and put good shit on film, whether it be practice, whether it be preseason games or whether it be whatever. And just kind of trust the process. That, that's really all you can do. But if you sit there and say, oh, shit, you know, there's seven returning guys that are coming back on the offensive line room, and you start playing the numbers game, you're fucked before it even starts. And every play that is made in practice by a guy that you know is potentially taking your spot is, like, devastating to you. But now, granted, you could answer and be like, oh, I have to be better than that person. But in that direct moment, you've already created some angst between people in a room that are going to have to be there for 20-some days. Now, some people do like that angst and say, like, hey, there's only one spot open or whatever, and that is a great way to drive people, and it probably has worked in a lot of cases. But, man, the the thought of knowing exactly who's potentially going to take your job is one that could be either very motivating or potentially turn guys away, which, I mean – Many would say fuck them if they don't want to go for yeah. it. But mm-hmm. there's probably a lot of great potential potentially somewhere that you just need to figure out how to find. And some of those people never really get there because they defeat themselves. I think it's a good idea by you, Coach. I I, I think the best thing, and you can't say this because you're a Buccaneers coach to the players, but if any rookie player ends up watching this or college guy that ends up watching this that is going in there, those preseason games okay, that you're playing in, those are for 32 NFL teams. That is a combine. Okay, that is a all-star game. That is what that is right there. Now, to do well for the other 31 teams, you have to do well for the one team you are on right there. But every play, even if you're not involved or getting the ball, your effort's being checked by everybody in the entire league. If you're a defensive player in a position where special teams are happening, there are guys watching end of the fourth quarter whenever you have had to play 70 snaps to see what your effort is just in one particular play to see if you could potentially be a special team guy for a team that you have never conversated with before in your life that could potentially give you a dream job that maybe you could go in there. So those preseason games, I think there are four was too many. I think two, it's an all-star game. That should be viewed as a fucking all-star game for everybody. And I think instead it's always, I don't know, I, I think that's the reality of the business when you're young. You're like, no, I want to, I don't think you really see that big picture, you know, AQ? Well, it's funny you say, you know, I can't say that as a coach, but it's funny the the good position coaches that I've been around take a lot of damn pride 
and the guys that get swooped up by other teams too because that is a direct reflection of their coaching, right? They're like, hey, listen, if I can get seven guys on this fucking squad and then three more picked up, that's ten of my guys that are on rosters, whether it be here Uh, or 31 other teams. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, for coaches, that's a uh, and by, that's like when any time a player got cut from New England, they did not make it through the waiver wire. Nope. If, if Bill Belichick thought they were good enough to get in that building, they're good enough to get in here. Aren't they? <laughs> well, we have to pay their salary for the next five games, and we pick them up. Fuck it, Bill thought they were good enough to go. That is just like the type of thing. Like, hey, AQ, you become one of those coaches, right? Okay. Oh, hey. Thank you. Hey, that, uh, hey, has he been with? Uh, I mean, has he been with Ship? He been with AQ now? Ship, we like. Have he been out? Yeah. Yes. All right, bring him in. Bring him in. Bring him in. Bring it's him in. funny, man. You're a, di- you're a direct reflection of your players. That's what every all the good coaches have said, right? So that's your resume now or your players, period. It used to be your resume was your tape. Well, shit, I don't have tape anymore, so it's the tape that my guys are putting out there. Hey, go get that job. Come on, yeah, we, hey, yeah. hey, Come we, on need, we need an NFL head coach friend like Schrager has. Yeah, yeah. Yes. All right, so why don't you go? We didn't know it was going to be you. I mean, to be honest, we didn't. We didn't think it was going to be you. We no had way. no. We, nobody thought it was going. Uh-huh. Nobody thought it was going to be you. But now that the pieces are kind of starting to line up, and I'm starting to hear you talk and, and and really think about how you you were in the locker room with the other guys. You might be the fucking guy that we. This might be our head coaching guy. And he, hey, hey, Q, let's hey, go. Hey, hey, hey. Hey. Come on, coach. Long way from there, boys. Imagine Long him with, way imagine from him there. with an MCDC <laughs> intro. Well, oh. what? No, no, yeah. Uh, I, 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 I mean, I, I was only totally hope was given to dive into it. I thought you were going to say MC. Like he did. That was unbelievable. Have you ever met him? No, but I, I want to be his best friend. Yeah. <laughs> we're, talking, we're talking about eating fucking legs. Let's do it. <laughs> let's get a win. Hey, let's get a dub for Detroit, huh? Go ahead, Dix. Yeah. AQ, first and foremost, I love you and you look great. But with that being said, you said you don't have tape anymore. You should have tape, but you haven't showed up for your goddamn job here in over a yeah, month. You've sure given me. up on that's hockey talk, which comes out oh, of this office. Bullshit. Has getting a Super Bowl ring changed you and we're too small for you now? Wow. Are you not relatable anymore? Wow. wow. First, let me let me start off by saying I 100% deserved that. 100%. We agree. Good accountability. Yeah. But boy, Cabo was real nice. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. Oh. Right. <laughs> hey, it did look great. I talked to you while you were down there. It looked fantastic. Now, hockey talk was right in the middle of uh, you know Stanley Cup. Yeah, yeah. sure. Fine. Which is the biggest, the only time I think really that that's yeah. hockey talk would potentially be downloaded by somebody who maybe isn't a hockey fan, which there isn't a lot of them. Mm-hmm. And, and you're the co-host <laughs> of the show, and you decided to say, you know, ah, the way your schedule is now, I'm a coach. I can't. Stanley Cup's kind of tough for me. That's, are you still watching hockey, or you just don't watch anymore? You're done with it because uh, you were a good host, I thought, for that right. show. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, oh, what, the, what the fuck was that? Man? <laughs> wow. What is that all about? I thought you guys had a good run. Hey, you quit. You quit. I mean, yeah. Stability is availability, coach, and you just haven't shown up to work in a couple weeks. Hey, can't join the club in the tub, oh. pal, especially when that tub's in Mexico, okay? All right. Hey, let me, let me start off by saying I was available last week. It, cert- it seemed like a certain office took a fucking vacation week. All right. That was planned. Hey, go watch yeah, some get film. Get out of here, Go Chief. watch some film. Uh, we can't thank you enough, AQ. You're the best. We're happy for you. Good luck, Coach. And we have talked ad nauseum on this show with AJ and others that have played about how none of us would ever in a million years sign up to coach in the NFL because the fucking hours are mm-hmm. insane. No way. The fact that you have done it, especially with BA, who says family first. Hey, if you miss... Any family events for anything football, don't you? What are you doing? If you miss any family events for any football events, he will fire you on the spot. BA, that is BA's rules. We all know that. But I am happy that you're getting in there with a great group of coaches. I think you're getting a chance to learn from, like, literally Mount Rushmore-like figures in football. We're all very pumped for you, man. I'm excited to see how it works out. Oh no! I mean, Jesus! Oh, what a this time! Is, this, appreciate it, guys. Oh. Appreciate it, guys. Oh, your screen froze there. I didn't know what your. It screen... always. It all. I don't understand what's going on with the internet. It's unbelievable. Well, it's it might... got to be you guys. No. Be, yeah, no, right. No, no, no. Well, it turns out the last couple of days it actually has been us. Oh, yeah. We're trying have, to figure it out. I have checked myself right now. It's not us this time. It's you. We knew it. Clon. It's you. Go back. To, go back to watching <laughs> film, ladies and gentlemen. AQ ship with hey. What a dude, man. That's all you can really say about yeah. him. Yeah. Coach. Who knew the Q stood for quitter? I didn't know he was he quit hockey. <laughs> Allen, quitter, Shipley. Didn't uh-huh. want to do it, but I had to. 
I mean, you did it. We have to have accountability. Yeah. That's one of those things where we have to do, we have to address it. We got to talk about it. If you didn't bring it up, I would have on the way out. Mm-hmm. It would have been in passing. It wouldn't have been as combative. Yeah. yeah. He well, just, I told him I loved him and he looked good. Yeah, but he, by the way, very nice of you. Mm-hmm. That ain't worth a velvet painting <laughs> of a whale and a dolphin getting it on. But um, those who got that, that was a good one. Oh, yeah, well. But the uh, the combative nature was needed for what he did. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm happy you did that. I didn't show up to work. What do you and, mean? Ty, what's going on, dude? What's Ty, up, Ty? how are you? What do you mean? What's I mean, up, I'm dude? trying to squeeze it now. Don't you dare. I look dope. Don't you dare. 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 Again. I couldn't even see it. No, I was, I was waiting. I was waiting patiently to no. ask Coach a question. I, I had to look up to see where yeah. you were. I'm up there in the clouds. I you want to call him back for your question? Oh, let's get to a break. <laughs> have we been to a break yet? Oh, yeah, no. we have. No, no, we have. Oh, we have. No, Zito. <laughs> Jesus. Talk about me. <laughs> yep, we have not. Yeah, all right, let's get to a break here. 42 minutes in hour two. Big thanks to AQ. Thank you, AQ. Thank you. Hey, we're trying to real tie back down to earth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Someone get him. Now comes the time that I've been thinking about for my entire life. It's time to meet Vince McMahon. Vince was not there. Vince wasn't there. I know this is a big deal. Vince was not there last Friday. Everything could be differently here in the next week or so. This will be my first Friday with Vince McMahon. And all anybody was saying is, I can't wait to hear what he becomes Uh whenever Vince is in his ear, when Vince is in his ear or whatever. I think we now have to pretend that night one never even happened. Vince McMahon is somebody who, if he was to say something to me, no matter how he says it, this is a self-made billionaire that turned something from a local situation to a worldwide phenomenon. I'm a massive documentary fan. I enjoy the hell out of people that revolutionize the world. Getting a chance to have that moment with Vince McMahon is one of the main reasons why I was like, I have to do this. Shit can change real quick when he is there. I can't wait to meet him on Friday. How do we think that's going to be awesome? Does he know I exist? And how much does he know of me, do you think? He has no idea who you are. Yeah, that's good. All right, so I got to change the first impression here. Here we go. The anticipation was building. I was nervous. Would I be starstruck? Would I choke on my words? Would he hate me and fire me? It finally came time to meet Mr. McMahon. I think Vince is going to love you. I think he's going to love you from week one. I have not been told that type of story from other people. I think you're a lot like him. He's got a sense of humor. He's a heel in nature. I think that's going to help. I've been watching documentaries. Firm handshake. So, uh... That was awesome, obviously. He didn't fire me, okay. You know, he said he's excited to see it. It went really well, I think. It went well, huh? Uh, yeah, really well. In fact, when Vince puts someone over and makes fun of me, that means it went really well. Which happened immediately, by the way. Immediately, Michael Cole was made fun of. I was uh, complimented. Feels like we're on a good, a good start here. I say, I know I'm not supposed to say this, you don't like compliments, but uh, you're a legend, dude. So, like, working with you is... A reason why I said absolutely yes. And he laughed and then he made fun of Cole. <laughs> so I think it was a good go. You went in for the handshake, just like you said you would. And he met you there. Yeah. Was, was it a firm grip? Yeah, oh yeah. It was a... <laughs> I was prepared. And know? then he was taken a little by surprise when you went back in for a second time yeah. for this handshake. I was a fist bump at the end. Yeah. I gave him a fist bump at the end. He gave me... I might be best friends with Vince McMahon soon. How about it, huh? I aced the test? I said, I know you don't like compliments, uh, but I have to get this out of the way now. Thank you for the years of dedication for entertainment you've given me. Let's have a good time. Greatest television show in the history of television tonight. He said, sounds good to me. Maybe we'll be best friends. Now it's time for the show. Hey, let's get to the show, shall we? Hey, listen, tonight, you in the red, you in the blue. I hate you both, and fuck you too. Before I leave here, I'm knocking all you out. Cheers. Oh, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. You too. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. 
Fuck you. Bang, and I'm out. Give me that. This is the Pat McAfee Show on Sirius XM Mad Dog Sports Radio. We thank you for taking the time to seek out this small regional show that streams internationally. Here's Pat and the boys. Whoa. Oh, oh yeah. yeah! It's a little treat, huh? Good to be back. It's great to be back. Nobody could have thought that was coming at a 146. Never. On a Wednesday, July 7th. This is normally a Friday. Oh, my lady. I say I got to go. There's a place I go. Oh, my lady. Getting called. Get a phone call. Yeah, I just got a call from JD. That's different. Hell yeah. Late night special man. I, what JD if he's is he mic? pitching for us in, in the match? American legend yeah. JD? Live right now. What's up? How are you? Jeez, probably you never let that on FaceTime somebody on meet the mics. Well, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Listen, especially after the whole Julio thing. And, <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. True. JD's it, what if JD just came out and just buried the match <laughs> for not oh, yeah. having us? Cheney's quite the roll of dice. Yeah, well, so what, I don't know who he's going to come out. Is or maybe he's, just, maybe he's like, hey, let's go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get me on the you show. Know, AJ, AJ would go. be pretty bummed he missed it. but uh, let's, let's go back in time here a little bit, and let's, let's get back on track. <laughs> Hell, yeah. Hell yeah. Today's show has been Peter Schrager breaking a bunch of news on this show that is <laughs> – Definitely came out on his show. Yeah, uh-huh. but you won't find it anywhere else. Nope. Yeah. Thank you, Shreg. Which I they don't do promotion. Like, I am so thankful for Shreg's coming on and telling us that that Kyle Shanahan bit about Matthew Stafford. And by the way, it's an hour and a half show, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And there is a lot in there. That's yeah. a good show. Very good show. Very good show. Very good life. listen. Very good football listen. Yeah. And for us, it gives us news and things to talk about, yeah, which yeah. I enjoy yeah. immensely. Shanahan. Imagine he gets Matthew Stafford. Then what's that mean? Sean McVay is going to probably make the move that Shanahan makes. Does he, McVay, potentially go and get Russell Wilson? Because we know that the Chicago Bears, right, they made, what, three Mm first-rounders and something like that for Russell Wilson? And the Seattle Seahawks took the call, took the meeting, took the trade. It was declined. With what McVay was able to do with the Rams for Matthew Stafford, do you think if he was desperate, if Shanahan gets Stafford, does he? Does that change everything in this entire ball game? I wonder. I just, Carson Wentz as well. Like what happens yeah. there? How does this play out? Because it seems like Kyle Shanahan was what ten minutes away from trying to get into that game as well. Oh, yeah. it, it's crazy how one move like that could change a lot of things. For instance. Schrager also listed Phil Rivers in a list of people. We picked Phil Rivers over Tom Brady, allegedly publicly. Ian Rapport Schrager has talked about. So it's like all these little things that could have happened, should have happened, maybe were going to happen, could have changed, altered the course of so many things. You think about like Rodgers too. Like if the, yeah. if the Rams become a possibility, like does McVay like you know really turn up the pressure? On Him the and Lafleur have a very very good relationship. Like. I mean, it is crazy how one thing like that can change just the outcome of so many things. And what's that? That's two minutes of that 90-minute show, and ain't nobody going to talk about nope, it anymore. Nah. Rams nope. could have pulled the trigger on Watson before anything came out, too, Ooh. right? Could you? Um, wait, what's going on? Have we learned anything? That's no, going on? we had that, that Instagram video that came out a few weeks ago. That's all we've seen. I, Once again, if he is guilty, that is a lot, a lot of things. If he is guilty, we hope punished forever if it gets however the justice system handles it that whole thing but in a football sake that's not going to be done right for a long time i don't time. think he's going to play this year no, no way, way. He's, yeah. he's not he's not playing this there's year. no Can't. way they're all of a sudden i mean they've been kind of like dragging like it and i think very like firm on like hey we're not doing this unless you do these things he said he's not going to do it like no no i think it was the other way wasn't it yeah, the defense, right? He was saying, "Hey, unless like these, uh, the one in, uh, the people actually like come out and yeah, but get to like voice. tell their side yeah. and yeah." But the way it sounded, 
Deshaun's agent, didn't he say that he did not want uh, NDAs or something like that, or like they were able to come out and speak? Yeah, that, yeah. That's yeah, he why he wanted them to be. Able he wanted to. them to be able to speak. Which, yeah. by the way, you would think that it would have been the other way around. Mm-hmm. So that that's why whenever that was happening, I assumed like, okay, there has to be something that was going to happen, but it hasn't happened. Nothing has happened with that really, Nothing. right? No, that's going to be a long time. I mean, there's it's different states and everything like mm-hmm. that, right? I don't know how that one. But For you're him right to put out that video though. You'd think he would. I yeah, but if he's doing all yeah. this shit, I mean, he, you know what I mean? Yeah. Who knows? But and he if was, he's not, by the way, I mean, they're, like I try my absolute best to be like, yeah. hey, if this, then this. Because I've had a friend, very close friend, on the Colts have a situation like this that was a false allegation that did completely change everything ever that he will do because that, that is not as loud as obviously as the allegation is whenever the actual trial and judge and jury come out. That is not as loud as the first one, so it changes the trajectory of a lot of things. With Deshaun, if he did it, get the fuck out of the NFL. Oh, right? come on. Don't want, if he didn't do it, I don't know how the whole – it's going to be – it's going to be very interesting there. And that we're right in the middle of like Deshaun Watson was best football player potentially going there. Like, hey, Patrick Mahomes, Deshaun Watson, here mm-hmm. we go. Nobody knows how this thing ends up. If he ends up in jail, we are happy. That means justice was served and he did it. If not, I don't know. It's going to have to be at least a year or two. I, yeah. I don't know the courts well, but I had to pay a ticket for something and the court was back like, hey, you got two months from now you have your thing and mm-hmm. then that'll lead to another one ten months from now. It's like, I assume with this, it's going to be long and I don't think he's going to be playing. So I saw something while we were away last week that there was an important date, important date because it was like the deadline for the COVID opt out for this year. And if like Rogers were to opt out for the COVID reasons, he would not lose any money this season. He but would actually he, get paid three hundred fifty thousand. Yeah, but if he doesn't, but if he doesn't go to camp, he loses money. Blah blah. Just because the CBA. Similar situation with Deshaun Watson, right? Like if he thought he wasn't going to play this year. He probably should have just opted out so he doesn't lose his contract money. And he actually gets uh, – no, because he's on the commissioner's uh, exactly. list, exactly. Yeah. which I don't know if you get paid probably or your, your payment's in suspension or you don't count. I don't know. I don't know how that all works, but that did come out. Hey, yeah. that was the conversation. Well, think if you were a team that traded before Jets. all that came out. Like, the Dolphins were supposedly close as well. Like, there Jets, was a lot of Eagles. Teams. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Remember, there was a, yeah. that was oh, a yeah. fool. Yeah. And then uh, what was the name of the lawyer? Buzz Busby. Tony Busby. Busby came. That was a whole, and it was like, wait a minute. And at first, he because, popped up on Instagram. At first, the mm-hmm. full conversation was Deshaun Watson just had the most incredible year, and nobody knows it because the Houston Texans were a bad team. Mm-hmm. He wants out. Okay. And a lot of people, by the way, it was similar to the Aaron Rodgers situation where it's like, okay, he needs to get on a good team. This guy is a baller, and he kind of gets lost. I think he led the NFL in a couple of things. And then all, out of, it was, it feels like it came out of nowhere. It was like, uh, one, is alleging this and it was like, oh, this way. And then as it's continued to grow, it's like, man, I don't know how that whole thing. Hopefully, obviously, justice served. We hope uh, both ways, whatever happens. But that seems like there's going to be a lot to sort out before he gets back onto an actual football yeah, field. And it came out right after he said, like, hey, I don't want to play for the Texans anymore. Like, I want to get traded. And then everything drops. And it was yeah, like, and conspiracy oh, fodder started. Oh, yeah. I mean, course. very, very quickly after that. And then the allegations continued to grow. It was like, whoa, 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 whoa. This is getting. Huge. This is very serious. When we haven't heard any new information about it, it, it feels like in months now. It's kind of like things have just stayed, like it doesn't seem like it's progressing forward at all. Yeah, in in Buzz, old oh, Buzz was loud. Oh, Buzz. Very, We're getting yeah. updates from a lot, right? Yeah, big time. Let's get to a phone call here before we, no, nope, can't. Try it. I have to check out old Buzz's uh, Instagram, see what's going on. Check That's it out. what I appreciate about you, Gump. <laughs> we'll reference something, and all of a sudden you'll go... Sniff it on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're like Tony Toucan Sam or whatever his name is with Fruit yeah. Loops. Yeah, yeah. Toucan, Toucan Sam. Sam. Toucan Sam. He always had a nose for Fruit Loops. Yeah, he right. really did. You know what I mean? You're like a uh, a blood on out there. Hell mm-hmm. yeah. You always have a. You have this ability to scour the internet to find things. Did you throw Tony in there because of the tiger? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking the tricks rabbit. I thought that's who that was. Oh, yeah. he was addicted. To, he yeah. always. He was out. shooting that shit straight in the vein. Yeah. Hopped yeah. up on goofballs. All right. Yeah. I mean, they were available for them right there. Those oh, cereal yeah. mascots, man. Oh, yeah, they're addicted. They're great. Yeah, they, they were. into them. <laughs> but Toucan Sam had a nose for something. He could find whatever Fruit Loops he needed. Oh, yeah. Gumpy can find whatever. For instance, Nigel yesterday told us Federer was going to lose today. We all made money off it. It just happened. Hour three on the other side. Hopefully more of that. Hopefully more of that. <laughs> Bro.
Roman, a men's health brand that can dance very well and make you the best you possible. Are you suffering from male pattern baldness? John, we got something for that. Herpes. See ya. Premature ejaculation, John. No more coming too quick. Allergies as well. And that's not all. We have clinically tested supplements for everything, including erectile <laughs> dysfunction. Come on! Bye-bye! <laughs> GetRoman.com forward slash Pat. Be the best you possible. <laughs> I love Hawaii, man. Every time I go there, now granted, you make a Pro Bowl, you think you're going to Hawaii. Instead, <laughs> we went to the desert in Arizona. And then the next time I made a, a Pro Bowl, it was in Orlando. I was like, I'm out. I mean, come on. <laughs> Were you the first group that they stopped doing in Hawaii? Uh, yeah, I think it was like first or second group, of course. Of course. <laughs> Worked my entire life to get to <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's an honor. <laughs> it, it wasn't, though. I, no. I completely understand why guys don't go. It's like uh, Tom Brady sitting out for another Pro Bowl. He's like, yeah, he doesn't want to drive three hours into the desert right now. to go practice. <laughs> he go wherever he wants. Yeah, and then the games, they need to make it just a, a bunch of competitions. They need to make it a bunch of contests, mm -hmm. like the 40, everything like that, the bench. Bring back the bench for the offensive linemen. Get an eating contest in there. Mm -hmm. Get the kickers to do a kicking contest. Get the punters to do a punting contest. Have that quarterback challenge that I watched on NFL Network just a couple months ago. Have that happen again for the long ball. You get Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes in there. You get Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers throwing maybe on an accuracy mm -hmm. challenge. I like the little games that they set up for the quarterbacks. By the way, I would have went to the one in Orlando. I actually said I would go if they would have let me compete in the quarterback uh, little carnival thing they had. And they told me no. And I was like, well, I'm not going. <laughs> Who makes that decision, the NFL? Yeah, I got an actual letter that said no. And I was like, well, I retire and I'm not coming. <laughs> we regret to inform you that you are not allowed to participate in the I, quarterback. I think I would do well in that thing, by the way. I think I would do very well in it. Everything is like right in my range. Like the deep ball, I think, is like 40 yards. For me, that's a f literal, that's my actual flick of the wrist. Like, you know how you watch those dude perfect videos? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it takes them, I don't know, who, who knows how many Thousands. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to judge them. A lot of other people do. <laughs> people say it takes them 4,000 attempts. But if you, if you throw the ball as far as you can and it lands, then you just put a trash can there. You're like, all right, I'm just going to throw this as hard as I can again. And then it's, it's like science is basically making you yeah. hit that. Great way to do it. In that particular quarterback carnival that they do, everything is right in my like wheelhouse, like I was built for it. And I told Conte, the Colts PR guy, I had a dislocated kneecap at the time, I was supposed to get surgery. He was like, are you gonna play in the Pro Bowl? Cause I had like a $250,000 bonus on the Pro Bowl or not. I was like, I made the Pro Bowl, I should get my bonus. And he was like, well, technically in your contract, it says you have to play in the Pro Bowl. I'm like, am I allowed to do that quarterback challenge? They're like, no, I'm like, no, I'm not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Jim Mercy still paid me, by the way. What a guy. As he should. Good dude. Yeah, as he should, by the way. No, no, I don't think he should. Because the contract technically said, like, people say billionaires stay billionaires because they're stingy with their money. He could have not paid me. He chose to pay me. Mm -hmm. Good guy. That's why I think the Detroit Lions just huh. hated Calvin Johnson. Joining us now. Hey, business is picked up. Yeah. Okay. Not often in the middle of Indianapolis, Indiana, do you get a chance to get somebody that is maybe a conversation piece from everybody across the country in studio. Ladies and gentlemen, joining us right now, all pro, pro bowler, new quarterback for the Indianapolis Colts, Carson Wentz. Yeah! Thank you, sir. What a ovation. One of the first national interviews Carson Wentz did after getting traded to the Colts in March was the Pat McAfee show. I really, It really showed how happy Wentz was to start over in another city with another franchise. Now, the show is one of my favorites to watch before coming to work, and when you have the opportunity to ask about the experience, that's exactly what I did yesterday. The happy emotions really showed through in the answer. It was a lot of fun. Pat, Pat's a great guy, and um, it was fun to just go on there and, and have some fun with him and, and those guys. And uh, Really, that, that show, but my whole time in Indy, it's been, it's been great. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of fun, a lot of good people. Uh, a lot of people that really are supportive uh, of me and my family, and so we're excited for it. Wentz heads back to Indy at the end of July for training camp, and you'll see him one more time tomorrow for his charity softball game at Newman Outdoor Field.
The Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we can talk about. Yes, sir. Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured, fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope, nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Welcome back to that show. Hour three on this beautiful Wednesday, July 7th, when we'll find out whether or not England will advance and potentially bring it home. Wow. We'll begin right now. That game begins in about 57 minutes and eight seconds. Here we go. Gumpy, are the nerves high? Is England ready? Is England excited? The lads are ready. Nigel Seeley, guest on our show yesterday, who is a soccer handicapper over in Europe, who has become a friend of the show. He and Gumpy are probably the two best soccer bettors on planet Earth. To be 100% serious for a second, this is not biased. You motherfuckers seem to know your shit. Nigel was our guest yesterday. He's already drunk. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, Nigel's yeah. already drunk. Oh yeah, he said if if they win and then they he has tickets to the finals as well if they win the Euros. He said he's going to be gone for a week. He's already <laughs> talked to his wife. He's scared that there's a chance, uh, you know, things could end troubling with the the wife and everything. Sure. How this oh, could yeah. go? Loves England. Loves the team. Die hard. Haven't won anything, Pat. He said since 1966. <laughs> now they got two world champions in boxing. And potentially the English soccer team being worth a fuck for the first time in a long time. That could change the day with one big L. Yeah. Oh. This this drunken lit affair for Nigel and, and sober Gumpy could turn into a miserable hangover uh, for time. Nigel oh, over there oh, in England. Oh, mm. That'll happen in 56 minutes. And soccer is interesting when it goes to penalties. Let's assume it will because nobody scores any goals and it ends up having to go to something interesting to end it. I'm excited for it. Yesterday's game with the penalties. Last night's game yes. with the penalties in the Copa America, which continues to be the most electrifying soccer tournament that's happening right now. Every single night, it feels like. Now we got Argentina and Brazil. We got Leo Messi and his goalie, Martinez, who talks shit to people that are kicking balls at him from the penalty spot, taking on Neymar and the boys of Brazil. Oh. That game. Yeah. Now, if England, this goalie, Last night, Man, by the way. Legend. Yeah. I tried to watch the NBA Finals, okay? Felt like Phoenix was in control just about that entire time. Very happy for Chris Paul. But I went to that match, and I got done with the match. And then I saw somebody tweet about this game. I'm like, oh, my God, I completely forgot. Messi's on right now. I go over. Whistle was blowing at the 94th minute or mm -hmm. whatever. We're going right to penalties. I'm like, this is why this is the best tournament in the world going right now. And oh my God, did I just watch soccer in the best fashion of all time. Oh, I watched something sure. else until the penalties started. Then I got a chance to see the real skill. Okay, I got a chance to see the real who's the ballers, who's competitive, who's athletic, who's not out there. That Argentina team. The shooters, very good. They went oh, top yeah. shelf. Two of the first three balls. Yep. They're blasting the ball. The goalie actually, look at me, pussy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> to the guy. You're kid, nervous, yeah. aren't you? To the guy. Oh, I got to see you. Look at me. Look, you're scared. He's saying this in an empty stadium. They got it on. I knew he was speaking, but obviously I didn't speak the language. So I didn't know what it was. I thought he was potentially like maybe praying. I didn't know about this guy. I, I didn't know what was going on. Was he just, you know, talking to himself? Because I've been around people that talk to themselves whenever they're doing whatever. I watched that. That Martinez goalie is my favorite soccer player to ever oh, play soccer. Messi's playing against Neymar. This dude, they, they translated it. I got the captions on the internet this morning. What he was saying to the other team's players was savage and reckless. I wish... That somebody had been doing this a long time ago. Has anybody been doing this? Is this anybody other style, or is it not the beautiful game's way to do this? I love this dude. There's always like shit houseery when guy takes a penalty, the goalie will go up and try and like rub the penalty spot. You saw it with Italy yesterday. The two captains met, and the Italy guy was just hugging Spain's captain, but laughing and kind of trolling him. Oh, yeah, because it seems like that's when they get a chance yeah. to be a little bit. Uh, hey, we've been shit. flopping around like little bitches for the last nine, <laughs> yeah. four minutes, but right now, ha ha, peacock time. How yeah. you doing? Uh -huh. But that Martinez, man, he was, he was at Arsenal forever. Good team, right? Arsenal. Good Arsenal, team. yeah. They gave him out on loan six times in a 10-year career. What does that mean? So when you give a player out on loan, I remember this. For people that don't understand the yeah. soccer world, Tim Howard, for instance, 
When he went over to England, he played on Manchester United, I think it was the first team he played for, or some other team. He got loaned out to a bunch of teams because yep. he was not considered to be good enough. That's what that means, right? They have your possession, they have your rights, but they don't want you on a team, so they loan you out. It's like getting cut, basically. So the other team pays your wages, but they don't sell you to that team. So it's like you're getting cut, though, basically. it's like Basically, but then you go back to that team at the end of the year. So he would go back, get loaned out to another team, and go on and go on. Arsenal bought a goalie for 60 million pounds sold this guy for 20 million now this guy is a way better goalie than the guy they bought for 40 million more so after this guy wins the uh copa yeah donner i don't know that brazil squad they got oh, firepower yeah. they're good hey they got lightning all across the pitch yeah and uh, can run all their feet the goalie might be able to fucking score mm -hmm. and dice people if they want down there that copa i understand that the euros the europe's probably you know you guys ne market that better you know, and it's kind of talked about, especially mm -hmm. when you pay a tax to a, a sure. country for your entire life. This Copa thing has been unbelievable. If we get Italy, England, I think I'll be very invested. But these games tonight with that goalie doing what he did, I have absolutely loved them. And then today, it's probably going to go 0-0. Zero, zero. What? This thing probably yeah. going to go 0-0 yeah. zero, zero today. Yeah, 120 fair, minutes. Yeah, 120 Harry minutes. Harry Kane to score a goal, boosted to plus 250. Oh. What's the max on that? Is the max on that 50? Or yeah. you think Harry Kane's going to score? It's Harry Kane. Is, is the lock for you? Is the lock? Glory for Harry Kane. Football's coming home. It's coming home. Harry Kane to score? My face ID didn't work here. Lock it I was going to put that bet in. Really? Oh, Why not? I forgot we're live. Let's, um, <laughs> the jersey? But hopefully, I completely forgot we're live. Hopefully, Argentina <laughs> win. It'd be nice to see Messi finally win something with Argentina. Hey, he seems a little bit more carefree, huh? Yeah. $674 million <laughs> yeah, just, in the bank. Yeah. Got, he is yeah. not on team right now, right? He's technically tied to Barcelona still. Well, I thought you just finished the. Yeah, he's I thought he's free agent. Yeah. It's like, uh, Restricted, you know what I mean? Soccer's so fucking yeah. stupid. They're, they're paying people, they're loaning people, coming back, doing people, doing this, people, doing that, people. All I know is it's maybe coming home or it's going to Rome, hopefully. And if not, if it's Denmark, Italy, <laughs> and then Denmark dances on you in oh. the final, that'd be a tough day yeah. for the Italian. Let's go, Dane. I spend the 23 and me. Okay, so I am 0.01% Italian. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So I would feel a little heartbreak there, but you spit that .01 percent out into Not that it. tube. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. When did you start? When did you think of this? By the way, you said this yesterday. It was. It was pretty <laughs> just cool. yesterday. I thought of it. Oh, Double I thought this down. was potentially something you'd been thinking about for a while. <laughs> I, thought I was just sitting <laughs> stewing. Sink. I thought maybe you and Frank sitting right. Hey, you fucking Italian. There ain't no way. No, you were on our side there for a little bit, so it was good. But I now, was. now that you've gone back to the middle, can't have it. No, no, I'm not back. I'll be Italian forever. Okay, yeah. 23 and me yeah, told me. Yeah, have to be. All right, 23 and me told me that, and. I got a chance to hear the founder of 23andMe do an interview, by the way. Oh, yeah? She was... I'm surprised she hasn't been put into a position to potentially run the cut. Very, oh. very impressive. Hmm. Very impressive conversation. I forget... Not a crook. Her man. name. I have no idea because the... I mean, the things that are said about 23andMe on the oh, internet yeah. all the yeah. way around. And oh, true. What's Yicky? What's that? And what's Yicky? I saw her do an interview. I don't know where it popped Angie? up. It popped up somewhere. I think it was on... Uh, I think got in my timeline somehow. From the political uh, Twitter? Or no? I assume it came from the political world. Yeah. But, you know, I do follow a guy who's in the political world who's potentially about to go into a war. No hey, way. Listen, hey, listen. Oh. He signed up for that. Hey, I, good luck. I, yeah. I, hey, hey, we're with you guys. We're with you guys. We're with you guys. But I think there was, but I don't know if it was from him or so, somehow it made its way in. I was... I saw Founder, and I was like, oh, I've heard a lot about this, and I did this. I would like to know, mm -hmm. potentially. Very impressive. It was a very impressive conversation. But um, I'm on the Italian side, dude. I've always been on your guys' yeah, side. Forever and always. Nick, you know I've always been on the Italian side. Always, huh? <laughs> always, dude. Listen, yeah, when you grow up in Pittsburgh, you're, you're forced to deal with Italians every single day of your life. And in my Ooh, particular I'm life, forced. in my particular life, 90% of yeah. the humans in your yeah. life are going to be... Forced is an interesting word choice. To deal man. with is an interesting... Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, didn't mean, yeah. I didn't mean deal with. I, I, I meant <laughs> got a chance to experience. Had the you pleasure are... to grow up with. Yeah, presence yeah, okay. is a presence. Hi, yeah. Oh, you shout out You defended Zambelli yesterday. What'd you say? You defended Zambelli yesterday. Exactly, thank you. Right that's, away. That's, you that's a big, right on me. That's a big Italian family. That's the biggest one there. Look probably. at me. That's not the biggest one. By really? No, 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 no. Do not do Ooh. that. No, no. We will not get into that whole game. There's a lot of people that will probably get pissed off at you, but I will let you know I'll be Italian. I'll be Italian until I die. So it's 23 right. and me. I'll be oh, on your yeah. guys' side. I didn't know. And I said some things. 
You know, whenever I was younger and I didn't, before I spit in that tube, I said some things potentially because, you know, I feel like I have a vast knowledge of your guys' uh, R now, but at the time, your guys' culture. And I thought there were some potentially flaws in, the, in, yeah, in sure. what was going on. Maybe. And I just brought them to light every once in a while. You know what I mean? I just brought them to light. <laughs> there was some interesting situation. When you were the only non-Italian person at a place and you accidentally just pop off and say something you thought you were maybe in-house with your oh. friend Italians, mm -hmm. it becomes very uncomfortable, very quickly. Brutal. There, there was one particular moment, and Nick is thinking of it right now at Kennywood, you know, and uh, oh, I, I, I almost got escorted out of there. It was Italian day. Yeah, yeah. Let's just not go there. You tried to ruin Italian days at Kennywood. That's, that's <laughs> mean, of, all How? Day, of all the days. I was trying to get pizza. <laughs> what would you do? Is that not what I wanted to do, Nick? <laughs> All I wanted to do was get pizza. That was a compliment at the end. Everybody heard the beginning. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you wanted to get pizza. It was where you wanted to get <laughs> yeah, pizza. Yeah, yeah, right. was the problem. Let's get some phone calls. Where was it? It was at a pizza place. It was at a pizza place. <laughs> Listen, pizza. I, would, I would never, ever say what Nick says that I said that particular day and also Angelo says that oh, I said that day. Sure. Especially, you know, I would never in a million years say what they said. But I guess what I, because I talk fast, you know? Mm -hmm. And the Italians are a lot talking about hands talking. Oh, yeah. yeah. You would think they'd be able to keep up, but apparently they couldn't or whatever. Easy. I think they kind of just assumed I said something. And he got really uncomfortable. Yeah, I think I recall the what story. Was I, 14, 15, how old was I? I was young, 16 maybe? Old enough, you knew it was wrong. No! <laughs> <laughs> no, we. Uh, we have to leave. Yeah, was it a uh, full, like, music stop? Every, everyone, <laughs> what the fuck did that? I thought it was pretty good too. I, I had a pretty. It was because it was perfect time. Like yeah. the, everything that happened, I really felt good about People it. People you know? stopped eating. Like forks <laughs> dropped. Yeah. It was uh, full head turns. Yeah, it was. Uh, and you were waiting uh, for a pop. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've been in a lot of Italian. Like I've been in a lot of very Italian yeah. places. Okay, I've been in a very a lot of Italian places where I am the only. I, I guess this particular set of Italians did not know my games. They did not sure. know my potential personality. Okay. And it was quite a scene, but I want to let you know, I would have kicked me out of there too now that I spit in that thing. Yeah, and Connor, he got a pop. It was a couple blood vessels in people's foreheads. <laughs> they, they couldn't. Best couldn't kind of pop at Italian there Day, a, though. There was, a, there was a hand to the table. What'd you say? <laughs> what the? No, no, what are you talking about? And then, <laughs> then Angelo and Nick, right there in a situation where they have to defend me. Yeah, yeah, of course. Because they brought the. Yeah. Yeah. Who brought that fucking Irish kid here? Who brought One of those? the fucking Mick in here? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get to... Uh, <laughs> Do they still talk about it at that pizza place? I would assume... Not the pizza place, no, but I would assume that the families... Yeah. yeah. Because, I mean, us Italians, we do like to tell stories over and That's over right. again. That's right. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, us yeah. Italians. Around the dinner table. We do a lot of that. I mean, there's a lot of gatherings. Uh -huh. Yeah. And when there's a lot of <laughs> gatherings with us Italians, there's a lot of recycled stories. Sure. Mm -hmm. I'd assume that particular story has changed into somebody in the family beating the fuck out of me. Yeah, Kenny Wood getting kicked uh -huh. out. Like, I assume the way that thing has evolved. Yeah. Uh, ever uh, now you know, can't leave while they're eating their gravy, you know, mm -hmm. while they're eating their gravy at their particular Sunday dinners or whatever. Oh, if I, I ever have like kids, wait, do you hear the version they get? Oh, hey, let me tell you about your uncle Pat. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would like everybody to know I am Italian. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. so are you English and Danish too? Is there, any, <laughs> was there anything in there as well? <laughs> let's go to uh, let's go to Colin. I mean, it was there probably was, probably no, it was just a big ass circle. Mm -hmm. It was mostly like a circle, it was. Mo I, I think I got one of the earlier ones, you know? Oh. There was no way that, I mean, they're just, they were putting circles over continents at one point. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? And it was like, uh -huh. mostly here. Heat maps. Oh, so you're saying they might have just been like, man, ah, fuck it, make them Italian? Or... <laughs> I don't know how they do it. I honestly don't, like, how do they, how are they able to, genealogy is what it's called. Mm -hmm. yeah. They didn't track Genome your spit sequencing. where it's been. Gene, what's that? Genome Gene. sequencing. So they match my spit with other spits yeah. from other places. I think so. And they say, hey, it seems like a lot of people that are from this particular part of the world, their spit has this type of mm -hmm. stuff. Look at this guy's Irish. Yeah. I don't know. I think you ate like some good marinara sauce that day. <laughs> I don't think, you know, I don't yeah. really know. Ann, what was her name? Would not be Which thankful for you saying that about 23 and <laughs> me. Let's get some phone calls. Mitch in Detroit, what's going on, buddy? Hey, Pat and the boys, how's it going? A lot better than it was that day at the uh, Kennywood on Italian <laughs> Day. But what do you want to talk about, Mitch? Um, first thing, I gotta ask you guys, uh, what's your thoughts on the size of Aaron's calves at the match last night? Almost bigger than Stills. And then, who do you think is taking home 
Or do you think it's going to go on with the Stanley Cup tonight? Do you think the Bolts are going to win? Is going back to Canada? Uh, go, 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 uh, We actually have a flag that we are gifted from the building that the Tampa Bay Lightning play in because they also run the SmackDown building. Same building, oh, nice. people. Mm. We are gifted a Tampa Bay Lightning flag and T-shirt. Yeah. Wow. Ooh. Yeah, from the building, actually, to potentially display in the studio. Very nice of them. Yeah. Go Boats. Go Foxy boat. took that flag. Oh, oh, no. Oh, oh, no. Oh, no. Out of his bag. Oh, no. Okay, he put it in his bag. Actually, as the as the guy, gentleman, was handing handing this stuff to me, he's like, hey, go Bolts or whatever. I'm like, yeah, go Boats. Like, here we go. He's a fan of the show. He watches the show or whatever. I hand the Foxy. I'm like, here we go. Let's go ahead and do this thing. The guy even says, oh, maybe in a studio because he's a big fan. Yeah. I'm like, in the studio. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Go Bolts. Yeah. We absolutely go do this. Go Foxy puts it in his bag. Okay. okay gets, we, get, we leave the arena, go back to the house. Foxy takes that flag. He goes outside to the pool that hasn't been cleaned in two months, throws it in a pool, and just what? leaves it there. What the hell? What's See, wrong we, with we were in Tampa, so in my head, I was going to go in the Tampa studio so we could celebrate Don there with all the Tampa residents. One day, he was saying. One day, maybe. Maybe we'll be able to fit it in there one day. Oh, just toss it I'm surprised he fit in his bag with all the cookies he took. Well, see, that is a good part of going to those <laughs> WWE events. They have, Man, cookie yeah. Yeah. They have yeah, a yeah. catering <laughs> cookie table. That has been quite a delight. Yeah, I got Catering nothing to say general. about him taking cookies. Those yeah, brownies, oh, too. the brownies. Oh, shit. Oh, so Are you kidding me? Not in your mouth. I do feel bad whenever we take, like, three, four bags. Nah, you shouldn't. Yeah. Fuck no, it. No, you shouldn't. Especially it's me. Who cares? Well, that's why I think I feel bad, though. Is <laughs> None like, of the wrestlers are eating that stuff, are they? No. Fox, so has got to bulk up. So that's the interesting thing. I've been trying to learn about people's diets, because these rest. There's some... Dolph Ziggler has just been <laughs> his whole his entire life, right? Um, Robert Roode is just like completely, like everybody, just how do you do it? Shredded. Are these filters? And they get tested, by the way. Everybody thinks old school WWE when you hear the stories of, you know, back in the day with Hulk Hogan and, Vin and Vince were in that massive court case, obviously, mm -hmm. over it. And then... What? Yeah. What? What? Benoit. Happens, oh, yeah, my God. and then it becomes this entire thing. So everybody just assumes, I think, because you see some massive individuals over there. I, whenever I was in the ring doing my thing, I got tested two times during my first one, and then two times on. I think they are legitimately. So I'm trying to figure out, hey, what are you doing that I'm not doing? Mm -hmm. You know, like what what is what is the game here? Because they are getting just like NFL guys get tested randomly for. Uh, performance enhancing drugs and maybe they have the ability to stay ahead of it but I think at this point the testing is also so advanced so I think at the beginning days of like maybe uh, performance enhancing drugs science and release the scientists that were creating the performance enhancing drugs were so far ahead of the testing right because like the cops for something are coming much later than the rebels right like that is mm. that is kind of a, is always going to be something so I think the testing was trying to catch up a lot to the scientists screwball or whatever is yeah. that what it's called yep. screwball kind of uh, put that in, into an entire documentary about how this one place... Uh, Balco. Biogenesis, yeah. Balco. Biogenesis, mm -hmm. Balco. That scientist was basically able to beat every test. Like, was able to, Icarus, the thing that sent the Russian, the Olympic athletes from Russia, they had a scientist that was just beating the International Olympic Committee's testing or whatever. So the scientists creating performance-enhancing drugs have always been better than the people who are trying to test and capture. You've got to remember, what was that? The, the antler spray there with Ray Lewis. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. That was not getting tested for. Everybody got mad at Ray for it. It's like, I assume everybody else in the NFL at the time was like, hey, Ray, how do I get that deer antler spray then they added it to the testing so it's like i think there's always been this cat and mouse game between the two but at this point it feels like we're deep enough in that the testing people there's enough money they've almost been able to catch up there might be some shit but what are these dudes doing that i'm not in my big question the only thing that there is is there's the peptids or peptides like that's the only thing that i don't know if they've figured out yet like <laughs> steroids obviously they they know your testosterone levels are too high. But those peptids, I think that's the one thing that the... Is this that thing that the one meathead was talking about that you sent me the video of? The no, AJ. Didn't AJ know who the guy was? He was like a doctor of some sort. He yeah. uh, was He's this yoked up guy, but yeah. he's a doctor as well. He was sitting at his computer, and I think he started diving into... Because it wasn't like HGH or something. It was like some other... They have weird names like CJC, 1295, stuff Yes, like, like that. that type of stuff. Yeah. And I, So I guess there's always going to be people trying to yeah. outrun the testers, but at this point, it feels like 
blood and pe- like testing is getting a lot of stuff. Somebody will be able to do it. Not everybody's able to get their hands on all that shit though. So I ask all these questions. I think cheat days happen for people. Like, yeah, I, no way. Like a weekly cheat day happens. Yeah. Like I think that happens. What? For me, when I was losing all that weight, like Friday night after SmackDown, and by the way, I'm getting back into it. Thanks Let's for go. asking. A vacation week I got after. Oh, oh yeah. I mean, I'm talking mm-hmm. Ezekiel Elliott with the bull. Yeah. Oh, you know what yeah. I mean? You gotta I'm, treat I'm, yourself. I'm, I'm, uh, yeah, I got after it. But unlike keto with this one, Keto, I would have I would have gained 35 pounds just in one week from oh, eating yeah. however mm-hmm. I would. This time, I only gained, I think, like 10 to 15 back. When I'm getting back in there, I was having a cheat day, like, after SmackDown, basically until about Saturday at, like, 8 p.m., and then I would just stop for the rest of the week. And it, I was still losing weight. I wasn't getting yoked up. And then I'd ask some of these guys, and they're like, uh, Saturday is a day that I really... I really just get after, and then I just have to dial it back for the rest of the week. So I think you can. Oh, yeah. Because you, you if you it. if you don't do a cheat day, you'll just deplete yourself and you will run out of gas. Yeah, mentally, physically, yeah. emotionally, everything like that. Yeah. Those cookies though were lifesavers mm, on that yeah. goddamn plane so after good. SmackDown. I I don't really eat really like that all week, and then as soon as SmackDown ends, I'm like, all right, I got like, mm-hmm. I got about uh, 22 hours here to really get after this thing, and those cookies are delicious. Yeah, it see, is- I always just assumed that the cookies and the brownies were the leftovers of what Kevin Owens doesn't eat before oh, his no. <laughs> Come on, dude. I figured that. Kevin <laughs> Owens is just getting it bitch. every show. You son of a bitch. How dare you? What's him? wrong with what you? Mean? Who I buried him yesterday? Yes. Hey, what the hell did KO do to you, no, huh? sincere. Hey, he's one of my favorite talents. Doesn't sound room, like right? it. So don't you dare come at him. Don't sound like it. Putting his body on the line for the last two months. He has been just fucking yeah, yeah. trying to kill himself. I can't even talk half the time because Aziz is, you know, <laughs> shoving his thumb down his throat. <laughs> <laughs> I love Kevin Owens, by the way. He it's is best. hysterical as a human, but he has been doing some reckless stuff, it seems like. Yeah. He is insane. On Friday, you just kind of turn. He came from 16 feet through two tables the other night onto a floor. Now, there is a pad on the floor, so let's not act like it wasn't that. But right underneath that, we're talking, that is yeah. cement under there. What about, yeah. about the side of the apron? Oh, like, this is back. Just back. Getting, uh. Anyways, what you said was not yeah. fucking worth it. You go to hell. Oh, you yeah. go to hell. No, I, He's oh, in so the Money in the Bank the... next next Sunday. He's going to win it. Oh, Guess yeah. what? He's going to go attack Roman. He said it already. It was right. a sincere question. I wasn't trying to make shit of it. No, right? you were. Oh, yeah, sure. Oh, sure. Oh, sure. Let's, let's, get to, uh, let's hope Roman's focused. Let's get to Kyle and Illinois. He is focused. Yeah, well, Let's hope everybody is. Where's he been? Come on. Let's go to Kyle in Illinois. Hello. Kyle, what's going on, man? Did it is yours. Oh, uh, not too much, Pat. I'm uh, looking to have you help me understand a situation that's come to light the last few weeks. I'd love to do so, that for uh, you, Kyle. What's your problem? Where are your keys, so I just, Zeus? Uh, oh, I just took dude. a fat bong rip, and I was trying to so run 100 hard. meters. And I got halfway through there, and... I was winded. Yeah. So uh, yeah. why why is the Olympics trying to get rid of this lady that's one of the fastest ladies in the world? The for smoking a little number dope. one. Yeah, she is the and I and she didn't she wasn't. Thanks for the question, Colin. Congrats on the the bong rip there, pal. By the way, I hope you uh you know clean that bong because you can cook, you can get sick from this. So. Yeah, no, that's right. Yeah, true. But oh yeah, I don't know, a lot of people tweeted me that. I, the other day when Foxy decided to put Mitt's bong in the back of a video that <laughs> yeah. I was in. Fox. Yeah, so no, I started getting Fox. tagged to that thing. How like, are you going to clean it if it's I always glued it. to his lips? Well, that's the thing. <laughs> and I don't think anybody has taken that into account in the yeah. past of science. Like, what happens? How do you clean it if it's always attached to a human? You know right. What I mean? mm-hmm. it's, if somebody figures it out, we would like to know. Yeah. If you can somehow Bluetooth cleanse into the bottom of the bong, because we're not going to be able to make it past Mitt's head. No. Yeah. And then also his hand just going in and out with the, the right. male piece. True. Yeah. So if you can figure out a way to Bluetooth in there to clean that thing, we will happily do so. And we, we understand that he needs to clean that thing, but also a lot more. I mean, yeah. that's yeah. just the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> so that's not like where we're, we're starting and ending. No. But with that being said, Shakari Richardson not being a part of the, uh, the relay now? What? Is the, that like a... Yeah, Joe Pompliano. Hey, Joe knows. Breaking, Shakari Richardson has been left off the U.S. 4x1 relay team. She will officially miss the Tokyo Olympics. She's 21 years old. Let's hope that she has at least two more Olympics, maybe even three to dominate. And this will just be a minor little obstacle in an incredible run of running faster than every other woman on earth. 
Why didn't she make the relay team? Is it because the suspension still? The, the Olympics, by the way, might not even happen. Tokyo just yeah, upgraded yeah. to another state True. of emergency for COVID reasons. We're two weeks before the goddamn Olympics are supposed to be over there. I think this comes uh, shortly after. There's a couple weeks ago, there was another COVID emergency. They have heightened that now. So who knows how this whole thing pans out? Why wasn't she on the four by one team, though? Is that like a team that's already been built and it's on chemistry or what is she it? She was originally supposed to be on that because it was 30 days after the positive test or whatever so it's going to be outside of the suspension window they run the individuals first and they do i guess the team events later in the olympics but acho uh contacted the ioc and convinced them <laughs> to not let her get on the that team either <laughs> i did God see that uh, is she throwing javelin <laughs> she's not throwing javelin acho let her take a damn baton what? Now, she wouldn't be running in a straight line there. She would no. be turning right Oh, in. yeah. So maybe it was Ocho's tweet that led to them not picking her to be yeah. on the 4 by one which kind of fucked up Ocho now that we Come think on. about this whole yeah, thing. Right. This guy makes a great point, Eliminator. <laughs> it's Ocho, dude. Yeah. Hey, listen, Ocho is awesome, okay? Love Ocho. He just so happens to be, Big in my guy. eyes, on the wrong side entirely on this particular thing and then he hammered home and hammered home and hammered home and it automatically made me you know question everything else about him as well and i won't I, i'm not for long because i love Ocho, but there was some things where i saw his tweets and another one and another one you were not what i thought you were <laughs> nope I also did some research. Stink? Does this guy stink? I mean, well, it's a real thought that somebody... I never have had that. Yeah. I want to let you know, I have ne legitimately have never have had that, especially with his rise to super... But all these tweets about... And what if now we learn that the U.S. Olympic track team coach who makes a decision or whoever does bought an Ocho book. Yeah. yeah. What's Ocho saying? It is that... Diggs brings up a great point. He was an asshole whenever he did it, but it is. True. I don't is this, was she left off the team because of that type of reason? Not because of Ocho's tweet, maybe. Because what Ocho's tweet did reach a lot of people. Oh, yeah, and potentially, I assumed it was because of the, her failing the drug test. Do you think so? Like, hey, you don't deserve to represent the United States on a track team? I think so. Is that what it is, I wonder? She was on the team, too, right? She was like yeah. the anchor, so why the fuck would they? Did she have another failed test that we don't know about? Is that potentially something that's not being released or hasn't been released or... Like, because if they're not, then it's like, come on. I feel like you're on the wrong side of this yeah, as well. We they, like, hey, even though the IOC won't change the rule forever, the U.S. Olympics team can acknowledge that the fastest woman on earth, who's probably going to be a star for them for a lot of years, yeah. oh, made a mistake, accountable, won't do it again, can't do it again, by the way, because I assume her testing now will get heightened mm -hmm. throughout her entire career. So all these Olympics going forward, I assume since she failed a test, she's in another tier of testing. I might be wrong. I've never been an Olympian. Probably never will be. Uh, it's like ping pong. Nah, I can't, I'm way past handball. Have you seen some videos? There? Seen I would them. I would get run out of the gym. On the <laughs> no way. No I chance. still think the country of the NFL would win handball if they focused on it for 20, uh, 12 straight months. Eat, sleep, breathe, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. But I think... This would have been a good story, you know, especially to tell during yeah. the Olympics. Made a mistake, didn't fail again, which means she didn't smoke immediately after. She realized, acknowledged, and kept moving. We wanted her to be a part of our team. She is now part of something bigger than herself, which is great. She's 21 years old. Let's go ahead and keep this thing going. If they left her off because yeah. of that whole thing, I think that's a little bit of contradictory. It is. They said it would harm the team if they took her after she had the violation and not the other girls. Well, also, her suspension ended July 28th. The first race is July 30th. For the relay or for the... For the main race. The for the individual? After that, yes. So she would have been able to race. Yes. They chose not to take her. They chose the yeah. next six. So everybody that was coming after me about the IOC... You know, not changing the rule, and she knew it, and she took accountability. It's the United States it's Olympics. It's the USA. Yeah. Oh, uh, her suspension wipes her results of the trial. That's why she wouldn't be able to do that. Oh, so she wouldn't have been a... Uh, uh, trying to see that part. Uh, but then she would still be able to do the relay. But yeah, the relay is fine. They just chose not to take her. Come on! God damn it. You gotta be better. That's a good story, though. And That's America, by the yeah. way. Mm -hmm. Making a mistake and bouncing back. Being mm -hmm. able to be resilient. Get over hard times. Get past it. Learn from your mistakes. Become a better person. Isn't that like the type of story that the Olympics love to tell? Yeah, promote. Isn't that like the, the stories that they 
they tell isn't that like what oh. Mike Tarico's standing on that stage in some random fucking city mm -hmm, yeah. he's got two seats he's walking very calmly smoothly cool tossing to a video package it's telling his story then they're interviewing and so isn't that the whole thing I thought I thought that was the whole thing is this not what we're doing not if it involves weed Overcoming the death of her mother to win gold for Team USA. Hit right to, to be the moment where she realized that her actions have a reaction yeah. and kind of bit like Olympics delayed a year. Staying staying Let's get with to a break. I, I can't Team with this USA. United States. I wanna let the United States Olympics team know that I ain't ever joining your team. Nah. Uh uh. I will not play hey, in what, the Olympics. What's Team Italy up to, huh? Yeah, I got enough. Exactly. Yeah. I'm joking. I, 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 uh, I really like the Olympic teams. Me too. Why are we doing this? Well, I, don't, I might not watch the Olympics now. Fuck it. Nope. Just going to stay home and smoke weed. That's what I'm going to do. But I want to let you know the Olympics are much better when you do smoke weed. No, I'm no, watch I like it. watching yeah, the Olympics. Much, much better. Yeah, yeah. Much, much better whenever you're smoking weed. You think I'm not watching Scoots throw the ball around? Sky McGuff. Yeah. Yeah. Scoots for goofs. <laughs> Best closer in the corner. Please. Plays for the Tokyo Wind Sailors. Yeah. Okay. He's a big old goofball. No, he's not. That's his family. But oh. He throws gas, dude. He's going to win for America. But all the sports I absolutely love watching. I love the United States Olympics teams. I do. And I understand that they feel like they got to teach a lesson or whatever and all that. But They don't. I mean, the head of the USA Olympics, they employed some doctors and shit. Oh, uh, yeah. And they had a lot of coaches and shit. Is this Foxy's fault? So it's like, who's... Isn't Larry Nasser in the U.S. Olympic Hall of Fame? Whoa, 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 whoa. Is he whoa, really? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Is that real? See, we were... See, we were... See, that's... Is that real? This is kind of what you've been doing. Is he, what do you mean? Well, no. Kevin Owens is now this. Him, by the way. It's not just... There's other... Oh, yeah, plenty more. That's what I'm saying. Wrestling, I think, has some. Um, yeah. ah. There's a lot of potential... Fox catcher. Oh, Fox catcher. But now... She carries Smite up. Was in, Can't run the relay, fast woman on earth. We don't want you on our team. She was in Oregon at the time. Hey, hey, it's legal. It's where they're all running, by the way, up there in Oregon. Nike's just paying them all money. Guess where a lot of money's going, right? No, no I'm joking. Because <laughs> they're testing so hard. But I feel like we missed. I feel like we missed Mark here, Team USA. Big time. Let you carry. I'll smoke. still cheer for you. Yeah, I have to. But I don't like it. No. Mm -mm. But USA, baby. Let you carry. Take the baton. And that anchor, please. You let her grab. <laughs> And let her run not only in a straight line, Hacho, but like around the corner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Celebrate as she's crossing the finish line for gold. <sighs> yeah. Now we gotta wait four more years. Three. Three more years. She can't smoke weed ever again. No. Nope. She's gonna get tested every day of her life. Change the rule. Just right. don't change the rule. Just eliminate it from the drug testing. Yeah. For instance. Dana White in the UFC just got rid of it. Mm -hmm. Diaz showed up. Diaz? 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 Diaz showed up at the press conference with his own weed. Smoked his own weed. Dana's laughing in the picture where the weed is being. Yeah. And then somebody had to tell him, you know, that is not allowed. Like, well, <laughs> oh, take it off the thing. I like that they're doing that. Take a, I think the NBA took it off the testing. Yep. NFL next CBA will take it off the testing. The Olympics could just eliminate it from the test. It's easy. CVS and Walgreens have the ability to give you a test that doesn't have marijuana tested for it somehow. Yeah, nope. The IOC should be able to do it. They won't. We know that. But we're allowed to bitch about it too. That's we right. got phone calls for the last 20 minutes or so of this beautiful Wednesday, July 7th, on the other side of this four minute break. 1 8334 McAfee. We'll see you then. Hello and welcome to Office Championship Wrestling live in Indianapolis. Indiana. Tonight, we have a straight to hell match in which the devil will battle against our office wrestler, Dylan Boston. You might be wondering how we got here. Let's find out right now. And now, we have to make a deal with the devil. Yeah, no big deal. Classic trial by combat situation. We got our champion, Dylan Bostic. All he's got to do, win the match, one, two, three, and we're home safe. The only man that would take the job to protect us from the devil himself, Dylan Bostic. Like you mentioned, Pat, there's probably about five or six other guys we'd rather have in this position, but we'll take Bostic, I guess. Not only are all of our souls on the line, the Office Championship Wrestling Championship, presented by Natural Light, is also on the line. No, Jesus, the devil's no, trying to put Bostic right to hell. hell! I 
I do not want to Good go Good God, no! Don't do Good it! Good God, no! Come on, Bostick, man! Oh, no. Oh, my. I'll see you in hell, Pat. The goddamn Easter Bunny's out here! What the hell's he doing here? The Easter Bunny is obviously here to help Dylan Bostick. Wait a minute. No! Oh, no! The Easter Bunny's been on the devil's side this whole time! Jesus Christ! Jesus Christ! Jesus what the hell's Christ. Jesus Christ doing here? The power of Christ is compelling Dylan Bostick! Look at this, Pat! Jesus Christ is bringing Bostick back to life! Jesus is going insane! And now Bostick's kicking wholesale ass in the ring! Jesus Christ has come to help Dylan Bostick defeat the devil and defeat the Easter Bunny! What's gonna happen here? Good God Almighty, it looks like he's going up in the scissor lift! Jesus is lifting the scissor lift! Jesus is now telling Bostick to come down from Don't do the it, heaven. Bostick! Don't no. do it! Oh, oh my, my God! God. Oh. Bostick's dead! He's dead! You can't tell from home, but that scissor lift is about eight stories up, Pat! Eighty feet in the air! Oh, wait! He's tuning up the band! The devil! Super kick! Into the casket! Into the, the devil casket. goes down! Jesus. The devil goes down! He shuts the casket! Shut the hell! The devil goes straight back to hell where he belongs! With the assist from Jesus Christ of Nazareth! Dylan Bostick saves the PMI office's souls and wins the OCW Championship right here on our first OCW. Good afternoon, AJ Hawk. Coming to you live from my backyard. Don't worry about the weeds. Alright? Should probably power wash this as well. Pressure wash, you get it. Probably does need a little TLC now that I'm looking at it, but that's not what we're here for, okay? What we're here for is to give you some pointers on how you can fucking not embarrass yourself this week at Tahoe, okay? When you're hitting this ball, come out of the pocket, okay? Okay, get out of the pocket, inside out. Let's get a dub out there, huh, AJ? Inside out, out of the pocket, in the hip, hey, in the hip base, huh? In the hips, and... I mean, that's a golf shot, AJ. That's what you're looking for out there at Tahoe. Stack them some bitches up. This is the Pat McAfee Show on Sirius XM Mad Dog Sports Radio. We thank you for taking the time to seek out this small regional show that streams internationally. Here's Pat and the boys. Welcome back to that show. We're gearing up for <laughs> England and Denmark. Hell yeah. About to pop off in about 20 minutes. I believe the Hammered Down boys will be having a watch along Ooh. at youtube.com forward slash Hammered Down. Yes, sir. Okay, so I should just bet flat out on England to make this thing interesting. What's the odds? I don't know. Where are we at? They're minus 135 to win in 90. If you bet them just to qualify, there is no value, my friend. Okay, so I so you like this bet? Yeah. Okay, Gumpy. Yep. Oh. Here we go. I'm going to bet uh, $4,000 <laughs> on England. Okay? If I win, you get half of it. Diggs, you get the other half. No, no, no. I don't want to be involved in this one. All right, so you get the whole thing. So okay. this would be a, a nah, I gotta get at least. Yeah, you gotta get a little you piece get, of yeah, You get some. Right? You get 3,500 bucks. I'll put four we'll grand down it, on England. We'll split it, split it. No, no, you could get. No, we'll split it. Well, what's 500 of uh, four grand? Quick math, eight out of 100 is uh, seven, eight percent. Six, eight percent, what's a finding so fee? Two and two. So we'll split it. 15 percent. That's, 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 that's what we'll do. That's what we'll do. Okay, so 4,000 down. All right, there we go. Yeah. All right, all of a sudden the game's a lot more interesting. Here we go, uh, boys. Yeah. It's coming home. Yeah, it's coming home. <laughs> because also, by the way, if England advances, that plus 200 boost that was $150, there's going to be a lot of money taken out of FanDuel. Oh, yeah. Boom. And it's on a sport that none of us, get, except for Gumpy, give a single damn about. No, I'm a Copa American. Hey, 
<laughs> Me too. <laughs> and concave. Uh -huh. That's right. Hey, if concave and Copa are putting a game together, I'd like to watch it. I'm in front that's of right. the screen. Hey, that's where I'm at. Why don't Copa and concave kind of come together and do they this? They should thing? make one. It's the World Cup, my friend. That's where we get it all. Now, can we get, can we not get yeah. the Western Hemisphere versus the I don't Eastern? think oh. the Concacaf Ooh, the wants bowl? to go up against the Copa America. No, just no, take our, no, our champions. Just us. Oh, just the best two teams in a playoff? Yeah. Champions, yeah. then the champions, and then the champions of Euros, and is there is there any other ones? There uh, are, but... Asia? There's bring Asia? in Australia. Just have them be the fourth team. Is that how the Super League was? No, yeah, and no, we get no, Capital no, One no. behind this. Oh, yeah, yeah, we call it the Hemisphere. <laughs> the Hemisphere match. The Copa. World Dom we call it the World Bowl. Yeah. yeah. Bigger than a cup. Let's go. <laughs> Clearly. Yeah. yeah. We get the World Bowl. Uh -huh. I don't want the cup soup. I want the fucking bowl of soup. That's yeah. right. It's two to three sizes bigger. We make the World Bowl yeah. whenever we do this. Good we get idea. the Concafa champs against the Copa champs, against the Europe's champs, or champs, against Australia just by themselves. Boom. Asia doing their thing. And then even if, if Anarcho wants to send a fucking representative, yeah. Oh, yeah. let's get after Good it there. Luck. Now we're having, now we're talking, right? Now this is the game. Gold Cup this Sunday kicks off. What's the gold cup? Concacaf. Oh, we're oh yeah, we're yeah. Right. we talked. We already about won this. though. I'm tick I'm sick and tired I mean, of all these What the hell's the point of that? Well, uh, we At won the, the concave. Yeah, the gold we won. cup is a legendary cup. Ah, uh, concave. Okay. Yes. The only team to ever win it, United States. Boom. That's right. Uh, what's up? Is that right? The new one they won. There's yeah. only been one tournament. Yeah. Boom. Boom. Only team. Boom. Boom. Undefeated. What's up? Undefeated in concave cups. We own the concave. Hey, the concave cup. Guess what? Runs through the fucking United mm -hmm. States. Hey, 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 and guess what? This guy who's had a number change and probably a team change, and he's now he's champ a couple times again. This guy in the boys, rain on the boys. That Concafa Cup ain't leaving for some no, time. No, no, no. no Those no. Concafa teams who are representatives of North America and Central America. Sure. Gump. <laughs> Gumby. I mean, we, we dove into the CONCACAF before. Don't forget, it is, there's, the Caribbean tri too. there's Trinidad the Caribbean and Tobago, Islands, yeah. I mm -hmm. believe. Yeah. Canada, Central Mexico. America, Caribbean Islands, North America. We're the champions. The cup runs through think, our territory. I, I yeah. think about the CONCACAF. Central is in the Copa right now. No. There, you know how many seas there are in CONCACAF? There has to be Central America. Because yeah. Colombia yeah. is in Central America, right? No, it's in South America. I think, is it? I think Colombia is South America. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is. Pretty sure. South America is its own continent. Yeah, yeah, it's in South America. Central America is the in between. Yes. North it's Central. Panama. North the, America, Central America. Oh, hey, the split. hey, that Caribbean. Panama, those canals over there, watch Ooh, it. You turn right. a boat sideways in that son of a bitch. Oh, man. Hey, it's going to take a while to get out. What were we, sorry, what were you saying, Humpy? North America, Central America, and the Caribbean. Concafa. There it is. We are the champions mm -hmm. of. It cool. is an honor to represent all parties yeah. in the Concafa. Yeah. But what we're saying is, who's next? You know? Yeah. Give us the Copa Cup. Mm -hmm. Yeah, give us Argentina. Give, give us, or, or Brazil, whoever or Brazil. wins. Yeah. They ain't going to be able to keep up with the rough and tough Americans. No, no chance. No, 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 no way. Hey, hey they're going to go beat up. Uh -huh. Martinez, listen, I fear Martinez and Messi. So if Argentina gets past this Brazil squad with Neymar, I'll, feel, I'll fear him as well. America will take care of this. And then we want the Europe's. Okay, we want yeah. all the Europe. Yes. Bring them over. Bring them all over. If England doesn't bring it home, bring them over for a little bit of a... Yeah. Yeah. They can come get some, too, if they want. I wouldn't underestimate Haiti on Saturday night in the Gold Cup. Really? Man. Haiti coming out of nowhere, huh? <laughs> I mean, oh, Haiti. yeah, that's a good play. Their president was Not just to assassinated. Mention. Their president <laughs> just got assassinated yesterday. What? Yeah, yeah, in his home. In his... Yeah, planned attack, organized, pew, pew. Jason Bourne. Yeah, Haiti will not lose this weekend. Yeah, I, they that's do play bad. the U.S. Saturday night. That's oh bad. Not, no, that's bad for us. They don't stand of a chance. course, of <laughs> course, a no, it's of true. course, we're the heel. Of yeah. course, sorry. Hey. hey, hate to be it. We're we're the concave for champs. Yeah, when you're the big bad wolf, you're the big bad wolf. <laughs> Too bad though. It would have been nice for them to get one for him. <laughs> yeah. Well, sorry. If they liked it or not, we don't know. I have no idea. But I guess president. Let's just assume. Yeah. Half people hate him. Yeah. Uh -huh. well, it said he. It, the, his compound was taken by armed militants or something. So. From where? Do we know where? We have no idea. I, I didn't really look into it too deep. I, it was crazy. All right, listen, let's go. This is not ours. It doesn't hard to break him. into a Haitian compound. Dude. But anyway, so <laughs> Haiti, Ask Will Smith. 
Hey, listen. It's true. I watched oh, yeah. a couple movies and a documentary about breaking into somebody's compound. There is a lot of surveillance that has to happen and take place in uh, diagrams and blueprints. Oh, yeah. Oh, that Bin Laden? Uh, yeah, and then what happens, your helicopter just crashes, crashes. in the guy's yard. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Gotta be real stealth. Uh -huh. Come in. Wakey, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. wakey. He knows what he is. Anyways, uh, that's not our world, but good luck to... Uh, the country of Haiti for everything, yep. honestly. Yep. You're going to get Thank absolutely you, smacked around on Saturday, but good luck after that. We hate that. Yeah. We hate that it has to be it. now with us, but we got to do it. It's Sorry. our team. We're the concave for champs. And when you're champs, you got to show up every single night. That's why you're the champs. That's why you're on the marquee. That's why you're holding the world bowl at the end of this whole thing. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> Cup as big as a tub. Uh, let's, get, let's do some catch up here before the hammer down. Watch along for this. England, Denmark, Euro semi-final in which Gumpy has not slept a wink for in 28 hours. Nope. Excitement level at an all-time high. Cannot wait to watch you guys ride the wave of the soccer game, which is yeah. Oh, uh, of it's out of bounds soccer. again. Oh. Oh. Ah. The best part of soccer. watching it is Missing we get to hear mom. you guys do that, and we're sitting here waiting for something. Yeah, we we'll started cooking you a little bit. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's hard, not to, yeah, it's hard yeah. not to give you. And then you actually responded yesterday with, well, uh, was, that, was that a real one? Yeah, uh, I can't do this. <laughs> <laughs> At one point, we were watching the Packers game. Yeah, we were celebrating for AJ. Yeah. Yeah. AJ, they're running, uh, oh, man. They're running uh, Cobb's favorite games, I think, on NFL Network because yeah. everybody's off this week. We talked to Shregs earlier today, and we got some follow-up to all of this uh, for what we did today. But we're watching that game. AJ Hawk fucking flew around. He did. We do not give him enough. When you're saying very disparaging things yeah. to him, yeah. and like right, just loudly. By the way, uh -huh. very loud. And other others are doing the same thing. Yeah. I think we have very much forgotten what what AJ Hawk is. When we talk about him tackling a fan and being like oh, a little slapdick or whatever, he was doing that to grown yeah. ass men that were playing. We saw a game yesterday. He jumped over a dude's jumped over a dude. Deflected a ball, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Got a P.I. Fire. Okay? Bad call, by the way. Review was not there. Still not there. Somehow, because, not because of Alberto Riveron, because the standard that they made Alberto Riveron uphold the pass interference reviews that could have changed the game completely and made the game better. But they bobbled the execution, so it'll never happen probably. But anyways, back then it was still a problem. Fourth quarter. Yeah. On, on time down. Up eight. Yeah. Up eight against the Saints. Mm. Drew Brees throws, I think, to Jimmy Graham in the end zone. AJ jumps up over Jimmy Graham. He's like six foot eight or something again. Like up over his shoulder, I think, bats the ball down. They call pass interference. So now we got an untimed down on the one, down eight. Basically, to last play of the game. game. Last game, last play of the game, and potentially got to make a two point after that, but it's last play of the game. Next play, AJ sprints like uh, old buddy. Uh, no, not really sprint. It was like a two. It was like a two. Like kind of step lead up. Troy Paul oh. Mall is over the offensive line. Yeah. Did not hit anybody. Nope. No. Okay, did not take up any like, he Whiffed. took up a blocker. So mm -hmm. he ate he ate somebody. But this dude who was like 245, 250 was just sailing over. He was a specimen out there. Oh yeah. And then you talk about him playing through like the knees, the calf, the groin, the blown, everything. Like, only missing one game or whatever. Imagine if he was still in a little him boxing. He might have been Oof. He's one of the most explosive motherfuckers I've ever seen, and his hands are massive, and they're already beat up, and he doesn't get Iron knocked jaw. off. He doesn't get knocked yeah. out. Yeah. AJ, if, if we get into this whole, like, you know, influencer boxing thing, <laughs> and AJ has, we should be trying to get AJ into it. I think he potentially missed a calling. Fast. We're 4-4, four, four, this motherfucker. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was running around 4-4, four, four, this guy, mm -hmm. AJ Hawk. The same guy that sits here every single day smoking a cigar, saying absolutely toxic things. Yeah. Terrible. He was a fucking savage, and it's nice to watch those throwback games a little bit. So we were celebrating a little bit of that while you guys were watching the game. There was a little, ooh, yeah. shit. for AJ making a play, and then you go, oh, hey, is that a goal? <laughs> it's soccer, it wasn't. Just know that going oh, forward. Out of bounds. There's nothing happened. No. Somebody was out, there was a penalty. There was a little thing yeah. they had to do this thing. England put up four last game. Let's get to the phone. So let's wrap up the day here. Oh, against the Danes. Phil Mickelson has responded to us. Oh, really? Here we go, Phil. So, so we talked about the match earlier at length because it was awesome. It was nine and a half hours long. It was in the middle of a time where there's not a lot. I mean, the NBA finals were on. Got a chance to check that out. But it was just, it was a cool piece of content that you don't normally get. And it's involving massive humans in our life. Tom yeah. Brady, GOAT. Aaron Rodgers, MVP. Phil Mickelson, a man who has 
in the last, I'd say, ten, five years, five yeah. years probably, has bought into being Phil Mickelson completely and has become a fan favorite after for a long time being the person that people felt like they had to hate because they loved Tiger and Tiger brought an entire new dimension game and Phil just had to kind of be there at the same exact time, unlucky or whatever. But it was, it's awesome content. And Phil breaks down golf and all that shit. I've never spoke to this guy though, ever in my life. I've watched from afar, I've followed his content, the hellacious seeds, the bombs, the coffee, the things he puts into mm -hmm. the coffee, the, the anti-shakes or anti-crash coffees, uh, the, the shit he's putting into the coffee, I forget what type of stuff it is, but to keep you young, he's 51. It was like, you know, I've never met him, but I've been a fan from afar. I guess he heard Chardonnay, he heard what we talked about. Whoa. And uh, Phil Mickelson first response said, you're right, Tom is awesome in every way. I learn and am inspired every time I have a chance to be around him. Okay, hey, that's some deep shit yeah. right there. He said that a little bit yesterday too when he was talking about Tom. It was during the golf game though, so there was a little bit of shit talk I think in the middle of it maybe. He didn't really get to the full thing. I responded and I said, hey, Mr. Mickelson, Okay, we'd be honored to have a conversation with you about life, coffee, hellacious seeds, bombs, flops, et cetera, et cetera. You know, mm -hmm. there was a couple other things I was trying to tag in there that maybe would have captivated a little bit more so he knows that I know, I feel like I know enough about Phil to have yeah. a good conversation mm -hmm. with Phil, uh, as do we. Open invite for whenever's good. Hat tip to Derek Jeter from the kid. Yes. All right, obviously awesome. He has responded, same. Wow. Oh, here we Friend go. Of the show. Friend of the show. Friend of the show. Friend of the show, Phil Come Mickelson. On, Come Phil. on, Lefty's coming on. Here we go, Lefty. Hey, Lefty's coming on. That's pretty, that should be pretty cool, huh? Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? When Lefty's <laughs> fucking out there, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. He has that big open stance. Uh -huh. so yeah. he, he opens that thing up a little bit. And the way he just kind of breaks it down, that rotation at the age of 50 plus oh. turn it in just an absolute boom. We're gonna ask him how he does it. Can't wait. <laughs> We're gonna ask him how he does it. Right to his face, I'm gonna ask him a lot of questions. I can't wait for it. What a guy, what yeah, a legend. That'd be sweet. Hey, he's been through some shit too, on, off, off yeah. the course. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's been there, done that with literally everything in life, I think, at this point. Yeah, what's, I mean, what's it like for him with Tiger? Like going, like from oh, yeah, when he started, you know? Oh yeah, that's, well, and also going from heel to baby face. Yeah. You know? That's a big character change, you know? Phil Mickelson, did he realize it? Did he feel it, you know what I mean? And now that he is like, the ultimate Uncle Phil, it feels yeah, like. Yeah. Now, rest in peace, by the way, the legend OG yeah. Uncle Phil. Yeah. Oh, true. But Uncle Phil now in like the golf world, it feels like. He's teaching the game to the masses. He's relatable. He's cool. And he's winning still. I mean, it's got to be a good time to be that son of a bitch. Can't wait to talk to him. Also being like the, the person most synonymous with like left-handed golfers. I feel like he has to put on for like everyone who plays golf left-handed. Are know, you a lefty? Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're a lefty. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I forgot that we had two weird guys on a golf course in here. I did it because of Phil. I was like, you know what, Phil Mickelson's a lefty. I'm going to be a lefty. Uh, uh, you know what I mean? That makes sense after seeing your, your swing that you potentially did yeah. just decide which arm was the strongest. Exactly. And I just went with <laughs> that it. That makes a lot of sense. Phil is my guy. It makes a lot. I appreciate it. Yeah. I think he'll respect and appreciate it too. Yeah. But if he saw the way your swing was, he might say, because he is now, like I feel like, a representative of the game yeah. and for the sport, I think he would say, you're supposed to be a righty, I think. Well, the only way to fix that, hey, Phil, come on out. Come let's on do a round. Let's, yeah. do, let's play around. You know, you can fix it for me. It'll be great. Shout out, Phil, for winning that giveaway. Oh, yeah. Yeah, shout, shout out. out. Yeah. Oh, there you, you did it, Phil. Make, make it 18, Phil. <laughs> make, make it 18. Nine holes. I, uh, that's awesome. Imagine if he comes on the show. That'd be really yeah, cool. Yeah, it'd be sweet. And uh, hopefully that happens. But. That was the one thing about the match yesterday. You see how long it takes for them to set up cameras for a PGA Tour event on an actual event because stuff to get some shots last night. Yes. Oof. So they were running around with those cameras like they were down at Baja Mar. Yeah. Oh. There, I don't think there's a worse assignment. Now, it is beautiful because that was like a Bob Ross mm -hmm. painting. You know, it looked gorgeous. absolutely gorgeous out there. I would, I would assume the shots and the cameras, that's a lot of fun finding the goat and the bear and everything. It's, it was good production. But the camera people have to sprint around the course to catch up, if it's, especially if it's just one group. So you have to carry that camera, set it up on a tripod, and do your entire thing. Uh, I do not envy that job at all. With the elevation, too, they're hitting from, like, blind spots. So you have to basically just, like, guess and hope that the ball is going to come down wherever you were aiming. It would have been impossible to do. <laughs> yeah, see with the a drone. bad shots where you couldn't see anything. Yeah. But I think you had literally a crew of, like, five or six people sprinting hole yeah. to hole. And there's no other way to really do it unless you get a massive truck and mm -hmm. the whole thing. 
A lot of massive respect to the match. Can't wait to chat with you, Phil. Cannot wait to see you all manana after Chris Mad Dog Russo hey. show comes on in six minutes. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. This thing died. I can't hear anything. Uh, you I nailed even, it. Yeah, good to go. Did it? Yeah. Oh, I yeah. didn't even know if there's music on it. One no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, you got it. You we nailed did it. it. All right, good news. Yeah, we're good. Good news. Here we are. We had the batteries. They got to fix batteries. Fix batteries. Get that done. You got the bunny batteries, too. Those things are supposed to last forever. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Boof. Is that false advertising? Boof. Nick can. I think it does. I mean, I, I, this thing's running pretty high for like six straight hours. Yeah. Like, oh, so I thought it was like a two and a half life. I feel like no, every no, time. No, because I'll go like show and then I'll forget when I do it and then I'll pop in and then mm -hmm. all of a sudden I know where. There's a lot of like, when did this die? Yeah, but let's make them like 24 hours battery life. Like, wh what happened to that? I want to let you know that the moment. The batteries die, die. become yeah, pretty confusing, and I say, I buy some American batteries. batteries. That song's nine minutes, ten minutes. How long is that thing? Yeah. Really, really good one, 843 though. or something. Yeah. Full version of that song. Mm -hmm. Does anybody ever listen to the full version? Oh, yeah. Don oh. McLean, you kidding me? Hell, yeah. I use uh, Pandora, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's just like, it just... Send songs around. Keeps you just, going. You get introduced to new songs. You can thumbs up to kind of craft your liking. And I've I put a lot of hours and years into some of these stations. Okay, I, when people all left Pandora, I was like the Energizer Bunny, banging the drum for Pandora for a long time with everyone. Nick, please, please, Nick. Yeah, sadly, you you hung on there, and you I think you single handedly kept the company alive. I, I'm not sure, but hey, past the aux cord, fam. You yeah, know, there uh -huh. was a lot of that going on. And I would go bang right into my Pandora playlist that I had already crafted with my thumbs up and thumbs down. It would get going. And then every once in a while, though, out of nowhere, the algorithm will have a little bit of a glitch in a shit song. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. So then you don't even know this song, by the way, because you're not you're not selecting these songs for these playlists, which I think you can do now and there. But it did become quite a scene sometimes where there's two to three bad songs. And then when I asked for the aux chord again, you know, oh, no, no way. No, 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 no. That Pandora no, no, no. shit. Hey, not that. Hey. I thumbs up and thumbs down my way out of that thing. That ain't going to happen again. What are you using? Pandora. Oh, the fool. Yeah. The dramatics of me doing it. <laughs> Never again. By the way, it's back. Pandora's all the way back. It's better than ever. Okay? I want to really? know. They, I might have kept it alive. Yeah. But everybody else is loving it as well. And I'm not saying this strictly because we do have a licensing agreement with Sirius and Sirius owns Pandora. <laughs> wow. I'm saying this because I actually use Pandora. When you get a song that's like nine minutes long that pops in there, boy, and you're a little bit of away from your phone, oh. like maybe in your shower or something like that, and it, the speaker's maybe a little bit away, you can't get to it, and you get held hostage by one of those long-ass oh, songs. Oh, yeah. They don't do them anymore, but that, that song, it's a good song, but there's other songs from back in the day that come on there like nine minutes long. It's like, yo, get fucking mm -hmm. with it. Hey, right? Meatloaf. Pandora. Yeah. Meatloaf used to crush. Oh, mean? yeah. Well, he would also make, you know, eight to nine minute songs. I was listening to one yesterday. He loves a lot, too, though. Yeah, yeah. it's me loves. It's me He's love, been dude. to the edge, dude. Of yeah. course. And back. Never really ate meatloaf, though. I wasn't a meatloaf guy. Hey, good with ketchup. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah great. We had, it's a good, I bet you meatloaf is very popular in Pittsburgh. Especially with 57, yeah. That's what I'm saying. I didn't like the loaves. Oh, yeah. Just, unless it's bread, but, you know. You didn't like the bread that came with the meatloaf? No, no. Unless it is a loaf of bread, I didn't want anything with insert name loaf. You coming know, across like my plate. Banana loaf? Banana around. bread. That's what it's called. Is meatloaf just a big uh, meatball? Kind of. I mean, it's yeah. all just meat. Yeah it's, the, yeah, it's just how you cook it. You know, no. it's how you cook Square it, how you season meatball. it, how you put it. It is a, it's like a cake of meat mm -hmm. almost. Yeah. Exactly. And then you you can get, you make levels you with it though. Throw some onions and in there. It's yeah. delicious. It's really dude. good. Green I'm peppers. Okay. I'm okay. Yeah, that makes sense because, you know, I come from a meat eating city. Yeah, me you know too. What I mean, where they give us cakes of meat. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, me too. We come out of the steel mill and we fucking go right to the meat. You yeah. Know? And we put some ketchup on that thing and say, hey, it doesn't matter what's under this because it's going to taste like 57 anyways. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be delicious. Yeah. And that's what a meatloaf is. And it's, it's more than just what your palate's feeling, pal, or what you're tasting. It's more of a story about everything about you. Cool. You can have all the meatloafs. Fork over the meatball, salmon, and grilled chicken. I'll take those home all day. <laughs> How's that working out for you? Fantastic. Got salmon for lunch. Loved <laughs> he, it. He did. He did. Delicious. This is day two. Day two. 17,999 days to go. <laughs> See you guys there.
What is it for somebody who's potentially watching and doesn't know what you're talking about? <laughs> I will only eat grilled chicken, salmon, and meatballs for all of my breakfast, lunch, and dinner for the next 18,000 days. Now, 17,999. That's 49 years. For yeah. those that are just quick math right there. See there, you guys on the other side. There is next to no chance this thing makes to seven days or nine days. Okay. Yeah. Let alone 17,999 more Only days. one way to find out. I'll see you at day 10. Game just kicked off. Oh, shit. Oh, England is buzzing. Wow. That's a card. Get the card out early. Hey, get, get the cord out early. Wow. <laughs> I love that. You can't just drag him from behind. Hey, I got a tweet from somebody while we were on break. Uh -huh. Very upset that our Canadian representative doesn't necessarily love Canada. But I will say this. I feel like you got a good Canadian accent. Like, I think, yeah. I think people appreciate sure. the Canadian accent. Right? The thing about me is I'm loyal to the people who are loyal to me. Oh, it's not about uh, country uh, to uh, me. Oh, wow. The nation turned their Here backs on you. England has been loyal to you. <laughs> they have. Uh, yeah, but yeah, you've been loyal been to them. Stealing. And they've been loyal to you. They've stunk since 66. Exactly. Is Erickson playing? Is that Leaf right there? <laughs> no, nah, huh? I believe he's not been cleared. Okay, let's talk Leafy? about the tattoos. Okay. On all these players. Yeah, yeah. Oh. World Cup happens every four years. Mm -hmm. The last time it happened, Diggs, who is a chameleon for whatever he's watching. Correct. The World Cup captivates everybody's life like March Madness. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. It's in the morning. It's in the afternoon. It's, in, it's all the time. You're all watching. Day. Somehow you're buying into soccer because maybe America will play and maybe America will win one day. Mm -hmm. Oh, coach looks like he's not fucking around today. Or uh, Gareth no. Southgate. Southgate's mastermind. You started your sleeve the last World Cup, Diggs. Yeah. After watching the Euros and the Copa and the Concafa, do you want to get back in that? Or do you think too many people, they all look the exact same? Yeah. yeah, they do. There's too many of them, I think. And this is, it sounds like somebody who doesn't have tattoos, but I have a lot of respect for tattoos. My wife has a sleeve. She's tatted. But it feels like all the soccer guys look the exact same almost. Is that, and you just want to kind of. If by the exact same, you mean really fucking sweet. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is yeah. a very fucking yeah, so, sweet. Yeah, I got this portion done. I need. The back portion done. I have started the ball rolling. I've put some feelers out, some stuff. The like tattoo artist. Similar to uh, your opinion and Aaron's opinion on golf, like who's got the time? Yeah. This is not a quick process. Yeah, it's like seven, eight hours, right? If you want to get even like a pretty good portion size. Correct. And a lot of them don't work on the weekend. So, you yeah. know, trying to figure that out. We can do it during a show, right? Bring them Ooh. in. Oh, yeah. yeah we'll so put big. you in another room, though. Yeah. That's a lot. It, the buzzing is Needles loud. loud. Yeah. Oh. I look out there though. I, get, oh. There was like a three hour period yesterday where I had a three quarter sleeve because of how sweet it is watching these they guys. They all have, it feels like every single soccer player. Oh. Has, I wonder if they just have clubs, tattoo artists that just sit that down. Oh, like a barbershop? Yeah. Like, in the locker room? I wonder if that's a thing. Like, That'd hey, get cool. your hair cut, get a sleeve. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> get out on the Come pitch. on, lads. <laughs> yeah. That's what it feels like. Oh, buddy with a massive step oh. over. He, I like the socks all the way up. Oh, yeah, you got to. Above the knees. I used to do the rolled down. Oh, you rolled down? Yeah, I was rolled down with tiny little shin guards. So they're yeah. way down there. Oh. High shorts, by the way. Like shaved that. legs. Very shaved legs. Show them off. Spray tan. Good tan, yes. I had good tan days, yeah. Right? In the short, yeah, it was. Half a battle. I was, I was probably quite a punchable opponent, <laughs> if I had to guess. You're spending a lot of time with people, though, when you're on the field. Yeah. If you're marked up against somebody, you, you're spending a you lot of time. You play a team, like, over oh, years, wow. too. You know, it, you build some pretty good rivalries in yeah. soccer. You, you accidentally smack somebody in the ball as your freshman year. Yeah. You're going to remember. Yeah. No one forget you. You're remember your sophomore year. Right. Yeah, that's going to happen. I mean, to be clear, though, that guy deserved it. And that is why I started yeah. shaving my legs. He's people pulling started pulling Ripping the hair on my legs. Yeah. They started pulling the hair on my legs. I was like, well, I'm not going to do that anymore. Then I went and played with a bunch of dudes in like uh, New Jersey and New York, and they all had the uh, Gotti knows oh, best yeah. blowouts, <laughs> DJ Pauly D blowouts, yep. and they all had shaved their entire bodies and the whole thing. Mm. I came back to uh, I came back to Plum, and I was like, "Yep, shaving my legs. I'm spray tanning, and this blowout is going to be awesome." <laughs> and that's it was a fantastic run, but the pulling of the hair on the legs is a that, Hurts very much. Oh, yeah. It's it a, is such a little nuisance. Oh, yeah. I think it was a German guy. It's like in football. They pinch you when they tackle you. Mm -hmm. You ever get that? They would fucking... No, pinch, I have not. Thank God. I, I, I've been in the bottom of one pile. We uh, we kicked off. I think it was against the Cowboys. Kickoff hits somebody's chest or somehow the ball ends up on the ground. It comes running out. Oh. But I am definitely close enough 
that on film I have to be in there. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But I wasn't <laughs> I wasn't far enough to give like a little peek see, and this was before the drag off rules yeah. or mm -hmm. whatever. This was back whenever oh. people were getting in there. I I fucking nose dive in <laughs> and I work my arm to the ball. I had the ball. Holy shit. Two people over. I had it. And it was at that exact moment. I thought, what am I do what do I do now? So I like tried to pull it. And I got one person that <laughs> right in my for like it was right in my forearm, and I was like, "Oh, why I am not?" And nope. I tried, and then it just got like bent back. So I didn't get any pinch or anything, but I got one guy that like clearly punched my forearm. But I, I have been at the bottom of a pile in the NFL with my hand on a ball though, and it was, it was a wild because because I thought yeah. I'm just doing this for film, you know? Like all right, yeah. I got, all right, I'm here. I might as well act as if, and I like just what does everybody do? They start looking for it, and I like. Oh, shit, I might recover this thing. Oh, my God. That's imagine. Yeah. Could you imagine if I fucking pop it out? This thing? <laughs> <laughs> I did not, though. I almost got my arm broke. I almost got my arm That'll broke. That'll happen. It will happen. I recovered a fumble. It's in that, um, it's in that, somebody put together like a 13 minute fucking clip oh, of yeah, all my I've stuff. That one. And that's the nicest person of all time, whoever <laughs> did that, because I forgot about a lot of that stuff. And then I'll watch it. I'm like, oh, yeah, I did. I did. A good play. Then the ref asked me for the fumble I recovered on a kickoff. I think it was against the Ravens. I'm not sure. I think it was against the Ravens. And uh, I said, no way, dude. I said, I'm taking the ball with me. I did that. And they got a picture of me with the ball doing that. Oh. And then I get to the sideline. The ref comes over and he's like, you're going to want to kick that ball again, right? I was like, yeah. He was like, we'll get it to you after the game. I'm like, ah. Oh. Hey, fucking good call. Here, yeah, yeah, take the ball, dude. He's like, yeah, you idiot. Yeah, it was That's a good point. That's a good point. Hey, our equipment managers wouldn't have let me keep it anyways. They would have put that thing right back into the game. Zero, zero, six minutes. Hey, wait, wait. This is what we're staring down for the next fucking 83 minutes. Yeah. I did not put my bet in. I can still put it in. You can lie well, I bet it. It's probably actually better odds right now. Uh, the live line is England minus 155, so it did go up a little bit. Shit. So. Say what you said again. Me? Did it get worse? Yeah. By it was minus 10 cents. 135. Oh, it was 145 when you guys were talking about it. So. You know, I should have immediately upon making that deal with you, I should have wanted to know it was three. For some reason, I thought we'd have time. We did not. Tell you what, you give it 10 minutes and they don't score it, as long as it's going to get better. Well, they're definitely not going to do that in 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah, might as well give it 20, 30, 40. Slap. Wait till halftime. Might as well wait till maybe 70th minute. So yeah. It might be fucking just plus 100, plus 100. Yeah. Can you bet on like penalties? Can, uh, I'd like to put in a bet, hey, this is going to go to penalties. It's going to be 0-0. Zero, zero. <laughs> is the over-under on this a half? Two and a half. Oh, okay. Under. Under. Is that a live bet? Can I live bet that thing? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. We're already seven and a half minutes into this thing. There's no sight of a goal coming. No. Lads are buzzing. I mean, the Danes are parking the bus. Can we I get I mean, look at this. They're 10 something? back, dude. Uh, yeah, that's what Ukraine tried to do, too. Oh. Yeah, this is what every soccer game ends up being, except for in the Copa fucking cup down there. Yeah. No, Copa down there, they're rolling dice every single... That guy's taking it on a 60-yard run right now, if mm -hmm. he could. And then if he's tired, he's walking back. We'll let them get an opportunity as well. This, it, this is also calculated and strategic. It's the Europe's. It's the Europe's. Come on. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. uh -oh. Beautiful uh -oh. notch. No, the no, doings no. are flying. Uh, no. Walkers. Gumpy, will you tell me when you think I should put this bet in? Because it does affect your pocket as well. Yeah, yeah. Do you think now or no? I mean, I would now. Right now? Yeah. Okay. Harry Kine is a force today. <laughs> Down to 150. So, nice even number. Fucking hey, dude. By the way, thanks, Aaron, for the shout out. Oh yeah, that was awesome. That was awesome. I don't know if it, I don't think it was real, but no, it was. <laughs> there was no context to that. I just found out I do not have four thousand dollars in my account. Can we? I can yeah. control yeah. the <laughs> <ball>. <laughs> Sorry, go. We just need. I'll put forty on it. Yeah, 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 no, as long no. as England wins, I am good. All my right, friend. I'll go two thousand. Two thousand. I'm good, my friend. I left twenty five hundred. I cashed in big yesterday. Let's go on yeah, the. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the, the, match. the match. Match, yeah. Good move. And I was like, you know, I'm going to cash you out. Smart. Here we go. Live bet. Checking odds. Minus 150. Oh, shit. Oh, oh hold that no. bet. Hold that bet. Oh, well oh, done. Oh, the English That's are great too strong defending. for the Danes. Okay, we're already in. Let's go. Here we go. Come on, lad. Come right. on. Now we it's go. It's coming on. home. Imagine they score right there. <laughs> that would have been, been devastating. Because <laughs> it would have been, what, plus 150, yeah, plus probably 200? Pl probably plus 100. It also would have been 30 seconds ago, too. Yeah. Huh? Oh, yeah, because we're, oh, yeah, cause cause we're, we're behind. We're behind. Because your TV's behind. Oh, so you would have saw it on there then. Maybe I would have seen yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Well. You said the lads are buzzing? Who? What says that? They were buzzing. Everyone's buzzing. We're nine minutes into this thing. Nothing has happened. Yeah, sit tight. 
We got about another 82, 84 to go before uh, <laughs> yeah. getting the action. No, no, no. Oh. Then, yeah, well. Then 30 more on yeah, the back end right. because the Copa is the only team or the only tournament that says, nah, nah, this thing has been 90 minutes of boring. Let's, go Let's get right to it. Yeah. We got a goal. Wild, gonna talk shit. How come there's no golden goal anymore? Like, yes. I don't know. We were talking about that yesterday. I, I remember they changed it to silver goal, and then it just got very confusing. No, I do not remember. That was when I was not paying attention to soccer. Because like, when golden goal death. came in, it was the best. Yeah. Golden goal was legendary. They changed it to silver goal, where if you scored in the second half of extra time, I think you won, or it just got very confusing. Then it just went back to what it used to be. But golden goal was the best. I will not argue that. Bring it back. You want to take a trip down memory lane? Oh, yeah. Okay. When I turned my back on soccer and went to kick, mm -hmm. I had to completely disappear from the sport because I didn't want to potentially get lured back into it because mm -hmm. of how much I enjoyed it. Never watched it, but never got to play. I came back into that, what, like seven years later, you know? And uh, I knew nothing about it. The flopping was next oh, level. Yeah. I mean, the flopping was like every single second. All of the sleeves were in there. I was like, God damn. A lot, the soccer culture has changed, I think, a bit. But God damn, it feels like there's a lot of talent out there, huh? So Just good. no scoring. So even as how we do it, we make the goals bigger. They, they need to get the goals the same size as like uh, what's that Italian fighting game sport? We uh, Stasio. Yeah. Calcio. Uh, Calcio. 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 There it is. That goal is just the size of a block. Yes, the entire It's the entire, entire end. Yeah. Why don't you guys just make the goal the entire size of the six? Oh, three goalies? Oh, two. Not three. Two. Okay. Go on. Oh, lads. Ah! Oh, it's out of bounds. A terrible lads touch here by Mont. Slab head will put one in right Eric here. Eric Kane, the ball? Oh, yeah, we bet on him. Is that still a live bet? Can I bet on Eric Kane? Slab head's sure. going to put this in right here. Hey, Diggs, how about the hammer Don? From Aaron? Yeah, that's pretty cool. You think he was referencing Hammer Don? Oh, yeah. yeah. I think he was referencing the statement, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, think he, I think he was. My truth is that he was. someone was asking him, hey, where do you get all your gambling picks? Oh, off mic. Off mic, and then he comes uh, back Hammer. into mic. Oh, well, uh, I get him at... Hammer Don! He That's definitely, yeah, because before he definitely didn't tell uh, Bryson to put the Hammer Don. No, he didn't. No, well... He did say that, and then somebody <laughs> said, ha, ha, hammer down, what's that? And he said, well, I wow. actually get all my gambling advice from And then they turned his mic up. Boom. Mm -hmm. hammer, hammer down. down. Sterling. Sterling. Thank you, Sterling. TNT. Sterling. Oh. Glory for me. Oh, oh, hit the fucking thing. It's man. all right. Hey, he's going to get another opportunity. Maybe like go. another 45 minutes or so. He's going to get another chance to do what he just did in about 40, 45 minutes. Hey, 65 days till football, baby. Hey, here we yeah. go. We're right there. Here, here we go. go. Right there. Yes. You want to take some phone calls here and then hand it over to the Hammered Down Boys for a watch long because Gumpy is antsy and he's looking to his leg. <laughs> oh, yeah. That is a tough thing to be doing. Uh, let's answer these phone calls and get the fuck out of here. Braden in Indiana, what's going on, man? I can't hear him. I just realized. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, not much. How are you doing today? Hey, not too shabby, Braden. What part of Indiana are you in? Oh, we're up in Fort Wayne right now. It's a beautiful day. Fort Wayne. We had a show up there. That was the drunkest, rowdiest crowd we had ever seen at the time. Now, that did get surpassed at another place in Indiana, but that place was insane and awesome up there. I, I, I very much enjoy that place. I appreciate you calling. What do you want to talk about, Braden? Man, I just got to ask you, how does it feel to be a fan of the most hated team in hockey right now? Who? You, you know, the Lightning. Lightning. Go both. Why are they most hated to go both? Go both. And, and, and by the way, T's and P's to Tampa Bay today. There, there is a storms coming through there. I believe we we're going to fly down today to try to get to that game tonight. You know, yeah. to watch the boats take that thing go home. Um, why are you saying they're the most hated? Everybody loves them. They're about to just four one the Canadians the hell out of the the whole thing. I mean, this is a beautiful thing. Well, they knocked out America's team, the Islanders. Everybody wanted the Islanders. Nah. Nah, I don't think anybody. Yeah. Yeah. Bruins are America's team. Nobody over here. Bruins are America's team. Bruins are America's team. It's the Boston Bruins. Boom. I've never been to Boston. I promise you it wasn't them. You but I've been, to, I've been to Newport, Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's close enough. That ain't America's team. No, that ain't Boston. Huh? Newport ain't Boston. That's where you guys all go as kids, like Disney World. Nah, nah it's Cape Cod. Yeah, you go to the Cape. There's Who goes to Newport, then? You know, a lot of people from uh, Connecticut over where Bruce is from. And then there's also, you know, the people who live in, you know, northern Rhode Island. They'll, they'll run their schlub bums down to Newport, and that's what it turns into. You told me you went to Gloucester as a kid. I went to Glo yeah, Gloucester and Cape Cod. 
We didn't, Newport wasn't like, hey, I wasn't leaving Massachusetts for anything. Okay? <laughs> yeah. Ever. God. Not to mention Nantucket. I mean, look, Newport is fifth. Whoa. On a list Jeez. out of five. Wow. Hey, listen, we okay. have said nothing but positive Whoa. things about Newport wow. into this yeah, into, yeah, into that microphone, <laughs> but I, what you're saying out there is much different. I don't think I got it. Denmark Whoa. with a strike. Uh, Denmark's going to win. Danger. Uh, they look good. <laughs> they they look good really early. Good. Oh, oh, turnover. Did the goalie just roll the ball to the Danes? Oh, this guy stinks. Yeah, it's fine. on you. Hand up. Hand two fine. hands up, he says. I'm good. I'm good. This guy looks like he's 12. I'm good. Who's got the who's got the six foot eight twelve year old as a goalie he's throwing the ball to the Danes there? England That's, does. Hasn't let in a goal all tournament. He's unbelievable. Uh -oh. He just tried his That's best. A bad oh, man. This kid's a stud though. I like the accountability immediately. Here we go. That baby keeps. Hey, way to go, Keith. Good job, Keith. Good job, Pickford. Good job, I don't Keith. think he came from the Buffon school. No. No, no. no Gigi's school was never. Or the Martinez that. school down mm -hmm. there in Argentina. No. Is this guy going to be calling people, hey, look at me. Look at me. I, I got you, pussy. Oh, you're smiling, but you're nervous, aren't you? Uh, you nervous right now? Yeah. That's what, is, this, is Pickford going to do that, you think, or no? Is that uh, on a stop? He does got some shit shithousery to him. Oh, he's oh, cheeky. Shit shithousery. You cheeky crying. bastard. What are you doing? Sorry. Everybody's crying to goal here. Get hey, him out. Put a oh, knee up, oh, I love, I love I this boy. I don't like the look. Uh, no, I love this guy. There's a lot of humans in that six. Uh, uh, put in the mix oh, up. Pickford. Pickford with the big well right done, hand. lad. Oh, shit. Man. Diggs, are you ahead of us or? Slightly. Oh, God. Uh-oh. What happens? Oh, come on. Nothing. Oh, that's you getting foul. deja vu right now? <laughs> hey, I got deja vu this morning. What is it? Harry it's Kane. the best. It's it's life giving you a chance. It hits the reset button. Do something different this time. I actually did have deja vu during the show as well. well that's because you were all doped up like See, Ty. I'm not, not doped, doped good. up. Ty's Sounds never good. doped up. What happened well, was... Ty, sorry. You, you were in a dope state of mind like Ty. Ty was what? Ty was like one of those... Um, you know, helium balloons that you yeah. get where the string is too short, though, and it just goes all the way up to the ceiling. It just sits there until the fucking <laughs> yeah. air comes out. No, uh, that's what Ty was. We couldn't we couldn't even grab the string there for a bit. When AQ was on, I looked over, and he wasn't there because he was all the way up, up touching the roof. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, okay. see yourself up in the rafters. Hey, like Howard. I said, revisionist history is a beautiful thing, isn't it, gentlemen? You guys can have your fucking fun. You can yeah, go ahead, all right? No. Revisions. You were on Planet 50. Yeah. I was not. You, were, you, you and Mitt were fist bumping I on the moon. I was sitting here I patiently looked over. waiting. I looked over if he, if he had a question. <laughs> Ask Coach. Me too. <laughs> he waved me off. No, I did it. <laughs> I gave you one of this. Uh, yeah, I was giving yeah. you the fastball. It's almost uh, like you wanted no, me to throw the cage no, up. This is you could this do is this bullshit. fastball in his hand. This is revisionist history because you put the you put you definitely put the finger up yeah. for the fastball, but you wagged that thing like a tumbo. <laughs> no, yeah, no, 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 thanks, no thanks. I can't take it. All right now, please, Jesus. We're we gonna get, ask Coach. We're gonna ask him how the golf game was. <laughs> if he's better than Brady. <laughs> Uh, oh, yeah. Oh. oh, yeah. That would have been a great question, too, by the way. I'm sorry I misread you. I thought you were just. <laughs> no, I was good. I was ready to go. Oh, <laughs> no. Hodgeburg's done. He just oh, megged this dude, dude on England. Hey, too. Rice, what are we doing? Trying to kill somebody? Come on, Rice. Can't do that. Can't take people out. No. Hodgeburg deserves better. Look at this. Watch this. This guy megs him. Does he really make some? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, That's not a foul. Nutmeg. Dude. That was right before there. So you don't know where that nutmeg is? Yeah, no. dude. He threw his, threw his legs. It I happens just, all the time in Copa. It does. It's That's done. like their go-to in the Copa, yeah. by the way. They I think like That's why I like it so much. They like yeah. embarrassing people. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's great. Awesome. They're like the animal mixtape. Bit time. of flair. Yeah. They're going through the legs, and then they're kicking it out of bounds, saying, yeah, it's going to be hard for you to recover from that. Let's Darn. go ahead and restart mm -hmm. this thing like deja vu. Mm -hmm. Do it differently next time. Guy's got a good Viking face, huh? They do say deja vu. Your deja vu was, though, like, you said something that would have got you fired, and then deja vu was like, here, I'll give you another chance. Don't do it again. No, all the stuff that... Oh, I, I mean, had that this morning with that type of thing. Yeah. It was for uh, for SmackDown. Okay. I put together a pretty clever line, I thought. Mm -hmm. Tested it out on you guys, and then mm -hmm. deja vu happened immediately afterwards. What was the line? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what we're getting into. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> what a life we're living wow dude the Danes are trying to run through Sterling this is they're filthy dude Danes ain't messing around I this mean it's in game. their blood dude hey they will pillage the shit out what's of this that thing? setup gonna be like for Smackdown like in the arenas no the you one in, in Florida with you Rick Ross Miami, dude. oh you're talking about rolling loud yeah what is that I don't know am I gonna be able to oh, yeah. think about it if Rick uh, <laughs> comes out 
Imagine if he comes out, starts Ray, and With I'm doing ad libs. Hey, can I be your hype man, Rick? I feel like I got almost all your lyrics. Towel. We'll you have to done. wear every chain that you own. Oh, at I one time. Stack them. You. I would definitely have a towel on my head mm. and also a towel to spin. Yeah. Yeah. I would definitely have that. Handheld mic, we'd need to ice that out too by the time. Yeah. That's With not hard. Couple, couple yeah, I got a rings. dazzle kit at my house. Yeah. You yeah. never know when you're going to need Is it. Is WWE pitching that for me and Ricky Ross? Uh, he's on Sunday. Send him one. Be. Well, send him. Oh, yeah. No, Rick but Ross be there is all Friday. Weekend. No, he, he, he was, was Sunday. Sunday. He was Sunday. But yeah, but he'll be there. He lives there. Yeah, they'll be there all weekend, like all those guys. Yeah, he's I just going to be rolling so. lot, lot. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I think he's actually, you know. He stays in the 305. I know. Actually, I think he, in one song, he actually said he picked his house up and moved it out to Boca. With a helicopter, he made it sound like he... Uh, Close enough, still. He actually just picked his house up and moved it, which <laughs> I think he actually did, and that is awesome. That is unbelievable. I hope to be able to one day achieve such a feat. You should ask him how come, like, because he recently, you know, did some stuff with Drake. Like, hey, how come Drake don't make bangers no more? Yeah, and you know, why is that the new thing, not to make bangers? Mm -hmm. Like, hey, Ricky, say, some of us still want to go into a weight room and fucking destroy some stuff, you know? Some of us still want to... You know, pop, don't stop yeah. popping. You know, some of us still want to get going here. Can we think about the the party a little bit? A little yeah, bit. Like, hey, everything's love, song. romance. Yeah. I get it. I get it. I love it. I love love. I love love. It love feels love. like we've been watching this game for three hours, and it is in the twenty <laughs> seconds. Because you're in the clouds, dude. No, <laughs> it's between this and the match. Shit. In between this and the <laughs> match, we have invested nine hours, forty five minutes in the last. 12 hours yeah. to golf and soccer. Mm -hmm. Incredible. Look at us. We're a fucking sports show. You know what the match needs to do and other th the NFL draft needs to stop doing? Mm. Like, start on time. Like the NFL, like this. When you say you're going to start at 1 o'clock, you fucking kick hey, off at 1 o'clock. Hey, what time does this 1 o'clock meeting start? <laughs> that, that's classic yeah. show up late to meeting. Mm -hmm. what, hey, what time's this 3.30 meeting starting when somebody shows up at 3.40? Draft says... We'll come in whenever we want. Five forty-five start for the match when it was supposed to start at five. Which everybody was already like, "What are we doing?" Yeah. So late. Think about if they went eighteen too. Yeah, it that ended has on been sixteen. And on sixteen, if it went to eighteen, <laughs> I told you midnight. Yeah, yeah. it would have been midnight. Yeah, Pretty close. Yeah. I actually, I was trying to scout out, you know, because I had to run over to the pharmacy to get some, you know, super steroids mm -hmm. for what? Yeah, that rash thing with that thing. Like uh, that. Oh, it's yeah. still the thing with the thing. It still was, bothering you a bit? No, it wasn't. It was still there, though. I look, I'm like, what is this thing doing? Went to the dock, got a script, yeah. had to take seven pills last night. Well, now you got to go back and get nipple cream, too. Well, they, these things are already chafed. I, mm -hmm. I mean, so they give you the antler sauce? What's that, Bob? <laughs> they give you the antler sauce? Deer antler spray? Yeah. No, no, they gave me something for this... Uh, it's like a st What is that? A steroid? They give you steroids mm -hmm. right when you're battling. Some some prednisone? This has never happened Cortisone. before. Huh? Do you get cortisone? cortisone? Cortisone was the cream? Yeah. I got that a couple days ago, but I got like a prescription of something. Hell yeah. it was, I forget the name. It was long. It ended with own, though. Could have been prednisone. Is there a couple other sil syllables that just get cut out in the middle of that, like most medical terms? Uh, I'm not happens, sure. I mean, <laughs> there's definitely a different one, but prednisone, I know, is a popular steroid. Yeah. I, I've never done this before in my life. There's six pills out of there. They're tiny little baby pills, and they tasted like ass. Yeah. Seven pills. Of shit. They say she'll be good. Probably because you've been sucking on that bong, that dirty bong water. It's not, I don't suck on that bong. I, I don't smoke weed. <laughs> That's true. It's oh. good to see the heat's back. I did smoke on that bong, but now I think about it. Can we get a <laughs> fucking shot on goal? Yeah, Are I we know. kidding me? I was thinking we were going to stay until the first goal and then hand it over to the hammer down. I should have known better. This is soccer. <laughs> that ain't happening. How do no. you have a shot on that? What it's on the sheet. We cover everything? I, I think, don't you be trying, speaking <laughs> of, whether you're taking care of the kids or taking care of business. <laughs> You've got to take care of your body and keep those energy levels up, especially when you're trying to watch soccer. That's yeah. true. When you're trying to watch soccer and things like that, you have to try to keep your energy levels up. The new Roman Daily Multivitamin will help you do just that. Sometimes you can't rely on your diet alone to get all the nutrients your body needs to keep your engine purring. Oh, yeah. Ain't that right? Especially with that meat <clears throat> diet you're on right oh, now. Oh, yeah. you got to take these things to get the daily nutrients mm -hmm. that you're missing out on. Oh, need for the hair as well. Yeah, and uh, Roman's, Roman's been a great tag team partner for you as of late, Boston Connor, and they've yeah. been a great tag team partner for a lot of men out 
Denmark oh Delmas. Oh, my God. For a lot of men out there with their incredible products that are clinically trialed and tested and proven and available, I believe, at Walmart. Yeah. Okay. The easy to swallow pill, the daily vitamin, is available in monthly subscriptions for 35 bucks a month, or you can save with a quarterly subscription for $87. This is a really easy way to support physical activity, brain health, your immune system, and heart health. No prescription required. The Roman Daily is coated with a slick coating of natural peppermint oil, so there's no unpleasant aftertaste. Literally just talked about that with the shit I had to take last night. The worst. Uh, Remember, supplements are not a replacement for a healthy diet. Obviously, exercise and good sleep. You've still got to eat your greens. And get your steps in. Hell, hell, hell yeah. yeah. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. So start your day off right. With $15 off your first order of Roman Daily, to get started, head over to GetRoman.com slash Pat Show. That's G-E-T-R-O-M-A-N dot com slash P-A-T-S-H-O-W. That's GetRoman.com slash Pat Show and get $15 off your first order of Roman Daily. Dailies. Hell yeah. Shout out to them. Thank you, Roman. Thank you, Oh, no. Oh, oh no. no. Oh, I'm Ross. Awesome. He did not break, though. Well, no, he's more sturdy than hit you. <laughs> well, I think Bob Ross is going to be sturdy for the rest of time. Man. One of those fucking right. batteries. I would have liked, liked, liked to seen 18 with the lights on, though, that they were talking about. Well, they had probably lights on 18? Looked, probably yeah, the only yeah, hole. Phil said 18's got lights on because he was talking about... Because Tom Brady, you know, whenever he started talking about that 28-3 game, that was awesome. Yeah, yeah. so cool. Every time it's on, I went, is this really happening? He's watching. Even for me, he said in there. Even for me, which in most cases, I think most people would say to Tom Brady, like, oh, of course, this arrogant <laughs> asshole says yeah. even for me. But then you start thinking about the moments that Tom Brady's been a part of, and you're like, oh, so that it, the that one is the one for him. Yeah, over the cool. snow kicks, yeah. over the super, like, that is the game. We kind of got a chance to hear that. And that, that was probably really nice to hear in Atlanta. I oh, yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. I probably, were really I probably loved it. It was good to hear from New England, though, just because, you know, I've been so scared about this Peyton Manning. You only see him in a Denver Broncos uniform. Too much has happened with Brady and the Patriots where you know that you're going to still see those moments once he's, you know, retired and gone. Yeah, I mean, unless he wins, like, the two, yeah, two, two of the more. next three yeah. and, you know, breaks some you think, records. You think he's got two more? Goodbye, Tom. Did you see him yesterday? Yeah, he nice is. Week. Absolutely. Ab- he's eating avocado ice cream. Of yeah. course. He will forever, even probably when he's done playing. Phil Mickelson said that he actually looked at Tom Brady and drew inspiration in changing his diet and yeah. maybe lasting a little longer and doing the whole thing. Your body's your temple. Tom Brady said to stand. I think he'll be able to play until whenever the hell he wants to. He said 50 is a lot long, even for me, he said. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tom Brady is, is an alien out there. But we were talking about something there. Uh, him talking about the Atlanta game. The game. Yeah. What's that? Oh yeah, the lights on the eighteen. Lights on eighteen. Yeah, then that led to Tom saying, "A big foul just happened. This is not good. What's wow. happening in England?" Nah, it's, not, not. it's just not a foul. Gumpy. That's he not. Punched him, him in the, in the fucking face. face. Gump. Shoulder to shoulder, dude. No, he, Elbow. Yeah, after he punched him in the face. I mean, this this Viking ate it like he's AJ Hawk, obviously. Yeah. But that guy maybe has CTE already from that whole thing. Oh, you're saying he's diving, but Tom then said, whenever they were down three with four to go, he said, "Nobody would talk if they win." We're supposed to win. Nobody will talk about that. We're spo- we come back and win down three with four left. He said people are going to talk about it. like Tom. You saw Tom reframing it in his yeah. mind, basically. Now he wasn't able to go execute on it, which he normally does in football. But that was kind of a cool thing to hear. Well, he didn't have Robbie G out there. Oh, well, well, he actually made that reference before Gronkowski got on. He had a slice out of bounds to the right, and he said early, he said, uh, "See, normally that's where Rob Gronkowski would just catch it for me." And I like the reference. Nobody else really elaborated on it, and then he followed up on it again when Gronk was on, which was a beautiful call uh, from Gronk. Oh, wow. This is a closure free kick. Beautiful call by Gronk. No, that stunk. That was arguably the worst part of the show. Oh, I agree. I thought. Oh, I missed the Gronk Not Gronk's part. fault. I, I had well, no idea it was he Gronk's called fault. in. No, yeah. I don't think it was Gronk's fault. He was calling in at his nephew's baseball game, the first one he's been able to go to for a long time. He wasn't even watching. Okay, so he had no idea. So he's a bad uncle. No. no, well, I mean, he's busy. He's working. He's in the NFL. You hear every Hall of Fame speech begin with, "I was a bad dad." I'm sorry to my kids. I missed a lot of, I missed a lot of time with my wife. A lot of time with my kids. That's just the way it is. That's the game. To be great, you got to be able to commit yourself. So Gronk wasn't able to go to some baseball games. Who knows how old they are? This might be the first game. Who yeah. knows? Could Maybe be. the second game. Maybe it's in a different state. The Gronks are all over the place. The so first game he goes to, he's like, "Oh fuck this thing. I'm gonna call. I'm gonna go call." Uh, I think Chuck I think, Barkley and my buddies. I think TNT, yes. And baseball games are way too long. I assume at that age, agonizingly long. I'll go ahead and give a little call in here. But um, his question, 
or comment about Aaron Rodgers looking out of shape. Oh! Banger? Firecracker? <laughs> oh, boy. Uh-oh. Gump. Gump. Well, there we go. What was that, 15,000 or 10,000? 10. 10. Well, no, 15 to win 10. 15 for that first half? It was, uh-huh. uh... Now it's another 2,000? It was 14. This yeah. English 14. hype that you have been selling... Come on. You and Nigel in the entire Queen's country singing songs and getting drunk and blacked out, selling me down a river of... Oh, oh my God. Oh, my oh God. My oh, God. my God. Oh, no. Pickford. Pickford. That was filthy. Absolute filth over Eric Gaines. You got a wrong hand, that. What's he doing? He got oh, left hand. Oh. Diggs was a great goalie back in the day. That's how they teach you. Fucking, you reach longer with that one. It cost me a lot of money, but Gronk said to Tom that Aaron looks more retired than me right now or whatever. And Tom quickly said, no, 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 no. He looks... <laughs> and, yeah. and I think that was because Gronk hadn't seen him. And I think because of how we all have been potentially perceiving Aaron Rodgers' offseason... He looked yoked yesterday. Right, he really football. did. Like, Very it would good. be the most Aaron Rodgers thing of all time, by the way, to make people believe that you're, you know, out in Hawaii, not caring about anything. And he, if this is with the Packers, with nobody else, no OTAs, no nothing, and then show up in the greatest shape of all time and just dominate. That's mm-hmm. like that is what he does, right? I mean. With the golf, I have five and a half. I haven't been able to play. Show up, dominate, beat the pro. That's yeah. crush it. This thing, his. It looks like he is very diligent right now with his workout routine. Although we see him singing Taylor Swift and jumping in waterfalls, sure. and, you know, doing meditating, reading books, and everything Vacation. like that. He's underneath that powerlift squat rack. Uh-huh. Yeah, he is. Now, don't let that long hair hippie look for you. It seems like Aaron maybe is in better shape than yeah. he even was last year. Yeah, yeah more jaded, too. He's still got like. some stuff to prove, I think. Yeah, yeah, Gronk exactly. didn't know that because Gronk was watching baseball. He's being a good uncle, and he didn't see that. But I did like to hear Tom go, no, 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 no. Oh, Rob, yeah, because Tom, you know, is he said that as a joke, I'm sizing up my competition, but I assume there is a lot of those two <laughs> sneak into the potential <laughs> looking at each other like... Oh, yeah. That's a 44 or 45 potentially yeah. looks like Aaron's looking at. And then, you know, like there's a full. Those two uber competitive. So yeah, sizing each other just up. Just those two, like, yeah. you know what I mean? If those two combine forces and just are like watching. Because there's a story that came out that Peyton and Tom went down to Peyton's lake house in Tennessee or something way mm-hmm. back. This is while they were both playing and while everybody thought they hated each other. Yeah, 2000s. It was just them. Just them at the place. Work out in the morning, probably with that Duke quarterback coach who was Peyton's coach uh, or whatever. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Down at uh, the man, yeah, that work out in the morning, film, workout, dinner. They kind of had like a, a week together or whatever where they did that whole thing. And Tom came out and said on that NFL 100 show when he was sitting across the table from Bill Belichick, uh, which is kind of you know awesome to think about now. Hindsight, how they handled that professionally, publicly, they're talking, and Bill Belichick had to acknowledge his greatness, by the way, because he was on the NFL Top 100 team, and. Tom had to do the same because Bill was, I think, the NFL the head coach, yeah. the head coach of the team or whatever. Um, but Tom talks about how on that trip down there, Peyton taught him a guard pool play action that basically opened up Dallas Clark down the seam. And uh, the Patriots put that in immediately, and Rob Gronkowski scored 90 touchdowns. Yeah. yeah. So Aaron and Tom potentially doing a tight end you or O-line mastermind or pass rusher academy, those two meeting up together. Who the what else could potentially happen? Out of this? It's crazy that that even happened just because of how competitive we know. I mean, from what you said about Peyton and obviously Tom over the years, like how competitive they were, the fact that they would share crazy, right? little tidbits. Like, I wonder if Peyton, after he did it, you know, like in an AFC championship, saw the Patriots run that play and was like Dad, kicking himself. Dang, gummit. Yeah. Oh, fuck did I tell him Dad, that? I, and Clyde Christensen, by the way, is probably looking at their play. Turn. Lake House, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right, right. Uh, that was, Is that, that's, that's our play, right? That's what we, right? Tom Moore's like, you saw it all. I think the, academy, or the uh, fraternity up there of the elite quarterbacks is a 
should be hopefully for the good of the game a strong one because there's only a couple motherfuckers out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know what I mean. There's only a couple people out there. Well, and to the point about Aaron and Tom sharing, you know, insights or whatever, yeah. it just supports the fact that it will be Aaron's last year in Green Well, that's Bay. like yeah, Peyton and Tom became exactly. friends. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Tom learned what Peyton was able to do and was like, "Okay, I thought so. Yeah. All right, I'm fucking out of yeah. here. Yeah, I thought so." Got 58 touchdowns. Because Tom, together. I bet you, Tom. I have no idea. I don't know Tom at all. Okay, <laughs> that is this is this is coming from somebody who does not know this person at all. But imagine him telling Aaron like Peyton told me he was able to. Listen, yeah. they gave him the actual like you know the key to the building. Like he actually had the entire. No one could get in. Like until he, he got had to here. flip on and off. <laughs> yeah. He was allowed in. Yeah. Like that type of stuff. Like I didn't know it either when I was a new. I had no idea. And then Aaron looked for that to become a. This is what I would like to see happen for this to potentially keep going. And will Mark Murphy, who's maybe the loudest in the room sometimes, uh, you know, decide that or not? I have no idea. This would be a good year to just look around and see, okay, what team stinks but has a really good, like, tight end, wide receiver, running back combo here that... And Devontae Adams is going to be a free agent. Mm -hmm. So you might be able to bring... Gronkowski, Antonio Brown, potentially. Chris Godwin. Let's go ahead and craft this thing a little bit. Yeah. Hey. Fine by me, as long as he comes back and plays this year. Win it this year. Yeah, hey, right, that's hey. fight year that Bill and uh, Tom right. had. Mm-hmm. Win it this year. He's coming home. You think Pittsburgh? Yeah. I think Pittsburgh, by the way, would love Aaron Rodgers. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just with his – well, he's a California kid. Yeah. So that's the only thing. But I think we've gotten past that that he's not. Yeah, really. I mean, he's playing Green Bay for his entire career. He's not. And he's also – the quiet, subtle, smartass. Mm-hmm. Yesterday, I think, won over a lot of people. You know, because – the fucks and the shits, I think, are the most relatable mm-hmm. thing that anybody could have done out there. Absolutely. And he was just letting them fly. <laughs> Fucking three wood, dude. <laughs> and the, the TNT person's like, is that who's oh, Jesus, shit? Who was that? Aaron again, God. <laughs> I mean, I don't think it'll happen, but like, if Trey Lance isn't good, you don't think there, you think there's any chance that he'll... I think that's very, very quick. Cool. Go right to 49ers, yeah. What, they would have Jimmy G, Trey Lance? Well, Jimmy, Jimmy's last year's... Yeah, Jimmy's... Probably yeah, he's gone. got one year, twenty-two million. Or yeah. whatever. and then if Trey, if Trey's, you know, not exactly what Shanahan thought he was, then maybe. But what about Jordan Love? What about Jordan Love? You would say they what trade what Trey Lance, him? and it'll be Trey Lance and Jordan Love in the same quarterback room, or what do you think they would do there? The what the Packers would ask for for Rodgers? Yeah. Yeah, I guess yeah, it probably would be. It'd have to be Trey Lance, right? Maybe maybe the first as yeah, well. Yeah, if Trey Lance wins it all, there's no way. They, yeah. They, yeah, no way. And they don't have any first-round picks in the future to give away. Even if they traded a bunch of picks and he was the number three overall pick, overall pick they're going to give Trey Lance more than one year. Even if you put it's Rodgers. It's Aaron Rodgers, though. That is the thing. But they don't have any picks to give up for him. Correct. They would have to give up Trey Lance. You can give a Bosa, Trey Lance, and something else. I don't <laughs> yeah, know how no you way. would even. Bro, I, don't what, I don't know what Green Bay would agree to. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm not saying San Fran would ever give yeah, a Bosa. Yeah, they need, like, Fred Warner in return or something like that. Get that out. Mark Murphy plays Which. poker. <laughs> It might be worth Good it. Good Kings plays poker. Oh, yeah. Is this Harry Kane? Get in. Ah! Oh! oh Stalling! This goalie's standing on his head! Disciple of bad, Thor man. himself. All right, this watch along continues at <laughs> youtube.com forward slash hammer. Don. I have, what day is it? Wednesday? Oh, shit. I have something eight minutes ago. That'll happen. God damn it. All right, <laughs> youtube.com forward slash hammer down. We appreciate you all so much. Big show tomorrow. Uh, we'll be popping in and out of here. Good luck on our bet. Uh, can't wait to chat with you all tomorrow. You're the greatest. See you tomorrow. Thanks to all of our guests, Schrager, AQ, all the phone calls. You're the absolute greatest. Let's hope it's potentially coming home. The boost hits in England doesn't fuck this up. We'll see you tomorrow. You're the greatest. Yeah! his back fight in these boys one one the over might hit two two and a half got a holy shit everything soccer watch you on youtube.com see ya